let me feel your love again what is going on papa fam welcome back to the stream today we've got a big one guys that was a strange thing that just happened it didn't confirm that i was live so we're gonna go with this <laughs> assuming we're good what is going on guys welcome back to the channel reddit 2.0 dropping all kinds of tech on you today gonna be next.js gonna be react graphql postgres we've got typescript we've got dynamic routing we've got graphql schemas we've got steps and we've got all this new tech that you have never ever 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 seen on this channel before so if that's exciting smash that thumbs up button get excited because i'm about to introduce you to one of my biggest builds on this channel yet reddit 2.0 that pre-workout is about to slap right now let's get it guys bam look at this reddit 2.0 it is actually i'm not joking when i say i'm so proud i am so so proud of this build it's ridiculous honestly like, check this out right we're gonna go through a little tutorial right now of what you can do firstly we have amazing sign in sign out functionality which disables a lot of the features. So let's go ahead and sign in. We can sign in with our Reddit account. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my Reddit, which we've never done on this channel before, powered by Nextauth. That's gonna go ahead, spin up our login. Bam, I'm now logged in. We've got this nice generated avatar. I can go ahead and create a post, okay? Now, I just wanna quickly explain. This is all happening through a SQL database, whereby we're communicating with that database through GraphQL. And we're not just using GraphQL by itself today. We're using amazing tech stack by the guys over at Steps. And I'm gonna introduce you to it. It's now one of my favorites because of how powerful it is. You're gonna see today. Let's go ahead and create a post. Let's say, what's up? Papa fam, let's go ahead and say, how's everyone doing? How's every how's everyone doing? And let's do a subreddit. Let's go ahead and add it to the Papa fam. Let's go ahead. I've already got a Papa fam subreddit. Let's go ahead and add that in. Papa fam. Oops. Papa fam. And let's go ahead and maybe say I want an image as well. Let's go ahead and use this image again. I'm going to use this image right here. Create the post. Bam. Just like that, what's up, Papa fam? I can go ahead and upvote. We can see our, we've got our amazing list of communities over here. Guys, if you've never used Reddit before, the way it works is simple, right? We can go ahead and already at 200 likes, let's go, guys. You can go ahead, click into a post. So you can go ahead and comment, leave comments, that kind of awesome stuff. You can even click into the subreddit itself and you can scroll down the subreddit. So let's go ahead and have a look at some of the subreddits that I've already built. Let's go ahead and check out Step Zen. Bam, guys. We've got the Step Zen subreddit. I can click into it. Let's see if there's any comments. Oh, nice. We've even got some comments going on. I want to type a comment. Step Zen is incredible. And you're going to see why today. Let's go ahead and comment. Bam. Nice, beautiful notifications. Awesome. Jump straight down here. We can go over head, head over to our subreddit. You can even see the number of comments gets reflected. And we can go ahead and upvote and downvote a post. So if I want to upvote, downvote, you can do that. All of this is powered through a GraphQL API. We've got steps empowering everything. If you've never used GraphQL, get ready because today's the day where you learn how to write your own queries, your own mutations, all of that incredible stuff, okay? Now guys, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a run through of today's build, break down the tech, break down everything that's going on. And I wanna clear something up. Today, we are using Next.js. React.js is obviously the library underneath this. And we're gonna be Layer, layering it up with TypeScript. So you're going to learn all of this today. So if that's anything that sounds near exciting, then I want you to do me one favor. Just destroy that like button, hit the subscribe, because it will help this channel get to as many aspiring developers as possible. And the Papa Fam is growing at such an awesome rate. Let me know where you guys are watching from. This is so cool. I can see you guys. The energy today is absolutely beautiful. Ramesh says, champion, champion. Yan Funi Gigi says, Sunny's a boss of the web. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Check this out. 
we can run queries from our back end and what's been really incredible about all of this is we've got these amazing ways that we can go ahead and pull in information only the stuff that we require now let's talk about today's sponsor which has made this entire video possible the guys over at stepsend now stepsend is essentially graphql as a as a service in some essence right now the problem that i've found in the past when i'm using graphql it's a pain to set up but with stepsend it is so fast so simple and you can honestly go ahead and connect it to any data source. I mean, anything, whether it's REST APIs, whether it's a Postgres database, whether it's a NoSQL database, whether it's MongoDB, whether it's Superbase, whether it's PlanetScale. I know you guys pop off about this in the comments, but this is how powerful it really is. You can start for free. There's actually a link. The first link in the description is the one that I want you to use when we're signing up today, but it's honestly no joke. It's one line of code to build out your, your endpoint. And I'm going to show you how we can do all of that. Now I'm going to explain some of the points in today's video we are going to be layering this with superbase superbase is a sql postgres sql database so we've never done that so you guys are going to learn about relational databases how to create a relational database and then we're going to go ahead and connect it to step zen or import it rather to step zen and pull in and create our own graphql endpoint with ease now, the crazy thing that I love about all of this, right, is typically when we're building apps, you've got REST APIs. Now, what we end up having is this N plus one problem where I might need data from several APIs, right? And then what that results in, my front end has to call out several different APIs. I have to wait for each one. It's a bit annoying, right? So what we can do is we can use something like StepZen to go ahead and actually make this entire process easy. And we can do this in a way that is extremely declarative, right? I'm gonna go ahead and break all of this down. They've got an amazing little subset of features such as materialize, all these kind of cool things that I'm gonna show ahead, go ahead and show you. And the best part is guys, when we use StepZem, it immediately goes ahead and actually deploys to the cloud. Now I can see somebody said, sadly Simpson is not a free tech. Well, it actually is free guys. So I'm here to tell you that it actually has a very generous free monthly plan so you get up to 300,000 monthly requests if that's not enough for you testing I don't know what is you get 10 available backends out of the box so you have more than enough in the free tech stack as well as Superbase they have an awesome free tech stack as well so there's nothing stopping you from going ahead and crushing with today's build the endpoint that gets deployed super secure caching out of the box supported it's available and added to all your data sources so honestly we've got so much to play with here but rather than sort of you know showing you guys any more of this I'm going to go ahead and actually break it down get you guys into it and we're going to basically see how to do this incredible stuff over here right i'm going to go ahead and teach you how to connect a super base relational database to a graphql api and what i really do love about this right is graphical is an amazing amazing thing that goes ahead and gets set up when we use step zen and they've extended it so you can actually go ahead and if you click export you get code snippets that are ready to go ahead and plug and play and we are going to be using the apollo client to go ahead and connect our front end to our graphql interface so much so much to look forward to guys honestly really really awesome and it helps to know that the team is incredible i've been working with them guys over there for a while we've got roy dirks incredible team we've got the co-founders anant shridhar and helen incredible incredible te team so honestly when i say these guys are in to grow something big i'm not talking crap this is actually a really awesome project which is why i'm bringing it to you guys so i'm going to go ahead and continue the demo of our project right so i've gone ahead and shown you how we can go ahead and create a post we can create a comment so i've shown you so we can say hey there hit enter we can hit a comment We've got nice beautiful hot toast notifications comments pop in we can navigate to subreddits navigate to posts all of this is done with dynamic routing and the best part about all of this is it's perfectly responsive so as you can see we go ahead and we can scale down beautiful everything works the way that we expect it this is using tailwind css and it's going to be something which i think you guys are going to really benefit from the long term if you want to go ahead and learn and push forward as a front-end developer the best part is this logic right here is really something that you're going to appreciate and enjoy once we get down to it really really fun tech stack today something we've never done on this channel it challenged me it's going to challenge you guys and i hope to god that you guys 
podcast can benefit from today's session. So without further ado, we nailed it with this one. I'm just saying it out there right now before we start. This is a sick clone. I'm, I'm putting it out there. This is one of my best clones. I am proud of it. And uh, it's literally like up there with one of the best. Faizan says, wow, this tech stack is so cool. Alex says, Sunny, we are ready for you. We've got Bangladesh in the house. We've got UK, US in the house. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Amazing, amazing stuff. Right. With that said, I think it's time to go ahead and jump into today's video. Right. So as I mentioned before, Next.js is powering all of this. We've got GraphQL behind it, Postgres as a, ba as a backend database, Tailwind CSS to make it perfectly responsive, dynamic routing, GraphQL schema. I'm going to teach you how to go ahead and write your first one. It's a full stack build. So don't get it twisted. This is not some front end just only build. This is a full stack build. You can go ahead and actually use this, the concepts that we learned here today to go ahead and actually build your own apps, build your own custom kind of forums that kind of stuff and this is an educational tutorial i'm not <laughs> intending to rip off reddit this is purely to teach you how to build something cool like reddit love love reddit right we're actually on reddit right now which is pretty cool okay so without further ado let's jump in and if you are enjoying any of this content and you want to go ahead and push your career as a full stack developer make sure you go ahead and check us out at papareact.com forward slash course we have zero to full stack hero our flagship course over 700 members are now in there we've actually got a new awesome video that we've gone ahead and put up on the front page so go ahead join us you're going to learn all of this amazing tech from the ground up whether you're a beginner whether you're experienced whether you just want to go ahead and improve whether you want to be a part of an awesome community this is the place to do it so make sure you go ahead and do it and if you do join use podcast 10 there you go 10 percent off little shameless plug there guys so i'm going to go ahead and get things started off today what i want you to do is open up your terminal right so we're going to go ahead and kick start off the project today so please give us a strong live we trust you guys i got you i got you this is going to be so much fun all right let's dive into this flow state right so and i'm telling you guys i coded for about 14 hours yesterday straight to get you guys this is how hyped up i am about the tech stack in this one i literally got emotional to jay i was telling him i was like dude when I cracked this one and I got the tech working, I was so proud. I was like, this is so damn cool what we're doing. And I cannot wait to show the Papa fam. So this is, this is going to be a fun one today. All right. So we're going to start off by using this command here. MPX create next app dash E with Tailwind CSS. This is going to start up our, pro, uh, like our starter project with Next.js. And it's going to do it so that way we have Tailwind set up out of the box. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, open up my terminal. Now I always recommend, go ahead, give me feedback. If the stream's good, give me all that kind of stuff. Jay saying we are all Gucci, perfect stuff, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say documents, builds. I like to keep things organized, which is why I do this. But you guys can feel free to put it wherever the hell you want right now as for my project i'm going to go ahead and change this to become let's go ahead and say youtube i'm going to say reddit 2.0 let's just say two right that's fine hit enter and this will go ahead and spin up the beginning of our starter project right the template that's going to go ahead and get everything running from the ground up so let's go ahead give that a second be a little bit patient now in the meantime i do want to run you through what tailwind css is some of you might be new to the sort of front end world so in this case, Tailwind CSS is a bunch of utility class names. As you use it, you can see it interacts with the front end and it changes our design. The best part about this is it is incredible for making responsive websites. No joke, there is an absolutely nothing I'd rather use when designing my websites besides Tailwind CSS. Facts. I've done production gigs. I've done loads of stuff with this right now. And you can build anything with Tailwind CSS. Really, really awesome stuff. And I do think it's worth saying that today's video where we are teaching you SQL, SQL is one of the biggest used databases or types of databases in the bloody world. So you guys are learning something big today. And I do, I'm planning on doing nothing but bringing more SQL content to the channel. Okay. There we go. We've got our project set up. We're going to do CD YouTube dash Reddit too. And I'm going to go ahead and do code dot. And this is going to spin up my VS code. Okay. So we're going to go ahead full screen this. We can close out the old one. Now, what I would like you to do here is set yourself up in a way that you have your coding set up in a very neat, organized fashion. It's not worth it when you're doing this. Everything's messy all over the place. You can't even think straight, right? I really want you guys to be focused. I want you guys to enjoy what you're doing. 
So we're going to go ahead and click on pages index. Now this is your starting point. In Next.js, we have a page routing system whereby each page resembles a page on your website. So for example, in pages forward slash index, this is the home page. If I had a search.tsx, that would be the search page and so forth. Whoa, Yasin, thank you so much. Yo, Sunny, love your work. Been following you for some time. I love the way you teach. Quick question, struggling with tutorial, imposter syndrome. Any advice, bro? Love from Zurich, Switzerland. Firstly, thank you for the amazing donation. And yes, keep building out tutorials keep like you're saying you're stuck in tutorial hall. master the fundamentals join a community when you join a community you're not stuck in a place alone that's where it becomes way better I and mean, that's where you have so much more fun you don't get stuck behind that thing but nail the fundamentals is my advice to you and you do that through repetition you do that through several builds that kind of thing trust me it's a, it's proven i've got so many students through this and join us guys honestly if you want to go ahead and keep keep doing it and yeah, you know what to do Wow, Pascalia, we got loads of OGs in the house. This is cool. What? Jay Ham, what is that? NT $150 by Caleb. Dude, how is that $150? What? Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you. That's huge, man. That's huge. Damn. All right, let's go. Let's get the NG up. All right, so what we're going to do is run our app. In Next.js, we start our app by saying yarn run dev. The donations are flying in, guys. I'm going to go ahead and actually send the routing for the, the audio into my computer. I don't know why it's coming out of there. That's strange. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Um, that's all right. Doesn't matter. All right. With that said, yarn run dev. We're going to go ahead and spin up our app on localhost 3000. Now, I've actually got it running already on 3000, so it's going to do 3001. But in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this one. I've actually deployed this one, so I'm going to show you guys properly so you don't get confused like last time. I'm going to go ahead and run it again. And what I want to do is I've actually got this running elsewhere, so I want to see if I can actually pull this up for you guys. And then that way you can see yourself what I'm doing. So let's see versal-reddit. I'm going to go to my vessel in the meantime. I'll find it. All right. Okay, let's go. So we've got this up and running. We're going to go ahead and open up localhost 3000. And what I want you to do now is go ahead. And you can see this is what I've got running here. So this is 3001. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't close my previous one. I closed the wrong thing. There we go. All right. Close it out. There we go. Yarn run dev. Now it will work. Okay. And I've got my clone. This is the working one. There we go. All right, sick. So if you want to actually look at it, you can go to reddit-clone-navy.versal.app. There is actually a deployed one this um, morning, right? So we've got this over there. So you guys can go ahead and feel free. I'm going to keep it over here for reference. Now, this is the app that we've actually got running, okay? There we go. So this is where you're going to be, where you get your starting point up and ready. So we're going to go ahead, firstly, get rid of main everything here that you see on your right okay so get rid of that get rid of the footer and i'm going to type in h1 saying hello world okay now you should be able to see hello world this is a good starting point this is where you want to be to go ahead and get things off the ground okay now look at this guys we've got honestly the amount of viewers tuning in right now is incredible over 400 across platforms amazing energy thank you so much for tuning in firstly smash your thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already i appreciate every single one of you guys coming right this is incredible Right, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first thing I want to do is get rid of these default sort of centering rules from Tailwind. I want it to be a bare bones project. The next thing I want to do is you can go ahead and customize the head. In this case, if I was to go ahead and say something like Reddit 2.0 clone, it would go ahead and change this and get rid of the Favia icon. Now you can see we've got Reddit 2.0 clone at the top of the screen. Okay, now check this out. Now we're going to go ahead and start things off. So. The third, first thing I want to do is actually build out this component right here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring out my trusty pen. And as you can see, we're going to build out the header component. Now, as I said, everything in this build is responsive. So this header component is going to be our first sort of taste of the responsive life, right? So I'm going to go ahead and actually introduce you to how to create your first component. So first thing I want you to do before we get started in today's build is make sure you've got the relevant extensions installed. Make sure you've got this right here, ES7 React Redux snippets. I also want you guys to get the GraphQL snippets. So this one right here. And I want you to go ahead and get, I use Prettier, it's pretty cool. 
Uh, there's one more Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Make sure you get these installed. It's always going to help you out when you're coding out. It makes your whole developer experience a lot nicer, a lot better. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our first component. So first thing I want you to do, head over to package JSON, create a new folder at that level. We're going to call this one components, right? You're probably wondering, how have I got these icons? I actually use this nice little icon pack over here going way off topic right now but it's over here because i want you guys to customize your setups make it look cool it's a it's an icon pack it's there somewhere right inside the components i'm going to do header.tsx as you can see we have typescript out of the box typescript like a jsx component that's why it's tsx rfce is those snippets that i just told you about so this goes ahead and sets up a functional component we can say i am the header okay this will go ahead and get everything plucked out for us. So at this point, what I want to do is <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and look at the likes flying in, guys. We are literally at almost 400 likes. Destroy that like button if you're enjoying the content right now, right? This is amazing, dude. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add in the index. Here. So add in the header. So I'm going to say header with forward slash. There we go. And as you can see, when it, <clears throat> we need to import it. So I like to go ahead to the end, control space bar component header so pick up these little tricks trust me over time it'll save you a lot now you can see i am the header is rendering out from this component awesome stuff so what we can now do start building out the header component right so first thing i want to do is uh, let's observe we've got this left section which is the image so i don't know if you've seen already but there is a way to successfully render and or efficiently render let's say next.js images inside next.js now this is using the next.js image component if you want to go ahead and get a refresher I just dropped a video on that yesterday because I'm dropping content daily or uh, nearly daily. Uh, so make sure you go ahead and check out the link afterwards. I'm going to put it up on the screen somewhere around here, but otherwise someone can feel free to go ahead and do it. Gempack says, go, let's, let's go. This dude made me love coding. I love that dude. Thank you so much. All right. So at this point, we're going to go into our header and we're going to firstly get started off with the image component, right? So I'm going to have a div firstly, which is going to encapsulate it. And then I'm going to have the image component. Okay, so as you can see, I've had, had an option here to import from next image. So I'm going to use it. TypeScript is pretty good. It tells me that I'm missing the source property. So in this case, I'm going to add the source property. The source in this case, I've gone ahead and shortened the URL for you guys. And it's actually links.popperreact forward slash F. Q Y hitting save. You can see we get this error. Now this is firstly because there's two ways to render out image components in terms of sizing and layout. In this case, we're going to use a layout fill. If you want to know more about this, you can go ahead, check out that tutorial that I just dropped. All right. But when you use layout fill, it's going to go ahead and actually fill the entire screen. That's the problem. So we have to make the encapsulating container something called relative. Okay. And we're going to fix that in a second. Now, the next natural error that you're going to get is whenever you use the image component, you have to whitelist the domain name where the image is coming from. So it's very easy to do. You go over to next.config.js. You go ahead and you type in images. You type in, I think it's domains. Yep. Yeah, and you've got an array and you plug in links.paparreact.com. Now, anytime you change environment files or configuration files, you need to restart the server. So we're going to cut it with control C, yarn run dev to restart. Okay, I think we're going at an amazing energy right now. This is awesome stuff, guys. I think you guys are enjoying this because the viewers are going up and up and up. And we've got more likes coming in. About to smash 400 likes. Let's go. Right. So at this point, if I refresh, we should start seeing some form of image on the screen. Right. So going back to my header, the reason why we're not seeing it right now is we need to set the sizing of this header. So we need to go ahead and say H10 and width of 20, we're going to do. And now you can see I get my image. So as you can see, it's stretched out. Okay. That's because a height of 10 and width of 20 is not ideal for the sizing constraints. So always make sure that you don't have this issue though. We can go ahead and say object fit contain. Right. So somebody says, what do you need to whitelist? These domains, you have to whitelist it. So that way you're saying to Next.js that you're allowed to go ahead and optimize images which come from that site. If you don't do it, Next.js won't let you use the image component. Right. The benefits of this is that you actually get a way more compressed, really more faster to deliver a picture. Right. So it's way more better for your page loading and that kind of stuff. So let's kind of run through this now. So we've got the image looking pretty solid. Hey, look at the chat, man. Honestly, this is so cool. So I, was, I shared the story about something, even my non-program friends, crazy stuff. Thank you so much, dude. Okay, let's enjoy today's session. Guys, almost at 400 likes. Bam, literally smash the thumbs up. See if we can get there first. All right, 
at this point we've got that looking pretty decent next to it i'm gonna have this icon right here now look how i've done this right when it gets to a smaller screen it snaps away then we get rid of the text eventually so i'm going to show you how we can go ahead and break that down and get it looking pretty nice uh, the first thing is i want this to basically when i set the layout constraint of the top bar here i want to make sure that this never shrinks right i don't want the logo to ever shrink so i'm saying flex shrink zero when i hover my cursor over it i want it to be a pointer as well so there we are, therefore we get this nice beautiful behavior like this right so everything looking pretty nice so far okay now we're going to go ahead and add in another div underneath here and this is where we're going to go ahead and have the icons so in this case in today's build we're going to be using hero icons now if you haven't used hero icons they're an incredible library to, and i really do recommend bam we just smashed 400 likes as well let's keep going 500 if you're enjoying this you know what to do destroy the like button all right we're going to go ahead hit documentation now the thing i love about hero icons is it works out of the box with tailwind it's actually built by the guys over at tailwind so we can use tailwind utility class rules to style them so ho hovering this open what i like to do is split my terminal and i like to say yarn add hero icons react okay this is going to go ahead and add in the hero icons now the first thing i recommend to do to kickstart your intellisense is to go ahead and put in two variants one is solid one is outline and i'll explain why i do this little trick in a second right so if i was going to say something like i don't know it could be star icon or whatever something like that the reason why i do this is it kind of forces vs code intellisense to now pick up on this right so now if i'm going to use this if i go down to my div it's going to start knowing if i want the home icon for example now i can see i get my solid and an outline variant if you don't do that little trick before it doesn't actually pick it up right so that's just something i've come to learn now if you do want to search through the icons for example that home icon you type in home and you can see we've got the outline variant here the solid variant here so this is how i find my uh my icons in the first place so we're going to go ahead pop in a home icon like so and i'm actually going to be using the um solid variant for the home icon i then have the p tag which says home and i have a chevron down down okay so let's go ahead and do this chevron down icon and the chevron down is actually going to be a solid as well right so solid so i do tend to vary sometimes i'll tend to kind of do some what sometimes some the other guys oh my god over 400 viewers across platforms you guys are so awesome thank you so much this is incredible Right, I think we're all smooth. Jay, let me know. I think we're great so far. But what I'm now going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead, head over to my div. And I'm going to go ahead and see, whoa, Hellboy just got a job. Nice. Attacking new one for Red Native. Hey, let's go. S screenshot that, dude. That's awesome stuff. All right. So for the styling here, what I'm now going to do is you can see it comes out massive, right? So it comes out more. One second more. So we've got massive sort of uh, icons over here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that up. So class name here, I'm going to go ahead and say height of five, width of five. And now you can see that that becomes a much smaller, more easier to deal with icon. I'm going to do the same thing for the Chevron. Okay, so I'm going to say class name is height of five, width of five. Okay, you're probably wondering that does not look nice. Well, that's because we haven't applied any styling to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, uh, which flex naturally puts things into a row. I'm now going to go ahead and say items should be on the central axis. That goes ahead and center, that centers things on the Y axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and say margin on the X axis of seven to push it away from things, right? So the first thing is, is right now these aren't on the same line. That's because if I don't define what is, what's happening with siblings. So in the case of these two devs, what's happening is they become block elements. Okay. So I need to go ahead and make sure that this is flex. Now they go in a row. Okay, the next thing I want to do is force this to be a background of white and you're going to see why in a bit, right? Padding on the X axis of four, padding on the Y axis of two and a shadow small. Okay, so this gives us this nice little kind of look and feel that we're going to eventually come to really, really like. Right. So one thing I want you to notice, any Tailwind CSS rules that I use are mobile first. This means that any rules that I write, for example, if I go ahead and have any rule like here, they're all going to apply to mobiles. And then if I go ahead and add a breakpoint such as large and say at the large screen, it should be a background red of 500 only on the large screen. Will it go ahead and take effect? Right, so I want you to bear that in mind as we start coding things a bit and making them a bit more responsive. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to stick this header to the top. So you see how it sticks to the top every time? The way we do that is I go ahead and I simply add in sticky 
top zero. Sticky top zero looks great. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say Z50. That means that even when it's scrolling over elements on the page, it's always gonna be at the top layer of visibility wise. Oh my God, the concurrent viewers is mind blowing right now. This is crazy. Guys, almost at 500 likes. You guys are awesome. This is mad. I'm gonna keep delivering the content if you guys keep turning up like this. So do not worry, wow. All right. At this point, we've got everything looking pretty nice. Now, what I do want to do is I want to make it so that when we actually get onto a larger screen or an extra large screen, I want the min width of my home component over here to actually be something like 300 pixels. So in this case, I can use the just-in-time compiler in Tailwind CSS, the latest version. And what this will do is it will actually go ahead and actually allow me to use that space at exactly 300 pixels. And then the home, what I can do here, is go ahead and style this out. So class name. And what I can do is I can say flex one. This means it will use up the majority of the space that it has left over, right? So trust me, it will all click into play when things start moving around, right? So it will work out very nice in a sec, right? We're gonna give this a margin left of two. We're gonna say that on a phone, I want the text to be hidden, right? So I want this to be hidden on a phone, but only on a large screen do I wanna inline it, okay? So now, if I see this, you see only on the large screen does it base. So on a, on a phone, it's hidden. So just like this on a phone, it's hidden. As we get bigger, bam, the text comes back. As we get bigger, the max width comes in, All right? So small screen, as we get bigger, the text comes in. As we get bigger, the max width comes in. And flex one means that this is using up the most space that it can, okay? looking swift and good sahandi says love your videos dude learned a lot hey that's what i'm talking about nice stuff man this is amazing thank you guys we're almost at 500 likes let's go nice all right so we've done that section now what i'm gonna have is the search field right so the search box so at this point this search reddit i'm going to show you how you can create a custom search field like this fairly easy as well so we're going to firstly make it a form we don't tend to use form actions anymore. So now what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and use a search icon and build things out underneath it. So search icon and do I want the, I'm gonna go ahead and go for the solid search icon, okay? So this solid search icon, and then I'm gonna go ahead and say that this should be a height and width of six. So height of six, width of six. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pop in text gray 400. There we go. As you can see, we've got a nice little icon in here. Sick. What who says, not gonna lie, sick teacher. I appreciate you did, thank you so much. We've got this and we're gonna have an input next to it, right? So the input is gonna have a placeholder which just has some like nice bit of text in there. It's gonna say search Reddit, right? Sick, there you go. Search Reddit pops in. And then the final thing is we're gonna have a hidden button. Now this is a little trick. If you didn't know it, get to know it. It's a very handy little hack, right? So basically I've got a hidden button here. This button is going to be type submit. And basically, if you want to go ahead and in the future implement the functionality of this, you can go ahead and do that. And I can make it like, and basically when I hit, if I hit like type and hit enter, see how it submit the form. But even though there's no button. So that's kind of how you get that functionality. VM says, bro, this is sick tutorial learning so much. Thank you so much, dude. About to hit 500 likes. Let's go, Papa fam. Hey. <laughs> form, we're going to go ahead and do class name. At this point, Kodak. Kodak says, oh, thank you. Try 20, I don't know, try, what is that? T-R-Y uh, currency, but thank you. I appreciate everything. That's huge, man. We're gonna go ahead and say flex, flex one. I want this to use up the majority of space. As you can see, when things aren't aligned like this, it looks ugly, right? So I love to use items center to go ahead, pop things back into space. And then we can go ahead and say space between the X components of two pushes things off, run the corners out. But first thing I'm gonna say border. Okay, I want a border. I want the border to be gray at 200, and I'm gonna say rounded um, small. Okay, rounded small. And as you can see here, very subtle, right? If I actually gave it like rounded large, you can see you get a much more rounded corner, but I like to have it sometimes subtle. Okay, then we're gonna say background, let's go say background gray of 100 okay looking good padding on the x-axis of three padding on the y-axis of one sup look at this <laughs> nyko says hey bro what's up that's why i just read it and i was like it just slipped out my mouth all right so at this point we've got search reddit now we've got two problems here firstly that input field is not using up its full space so let's fix that flex one it bam it's now using up the full space second thing the background is not transparent it's white make that fixed the final issue outline that's ugly we don't want that right so go here type in outline and none 
and just like that boom it's gone oops no, you don't want a bookmark <laughs> uh, just like that you have a custom search field and as you can see flex one makes it use up the majority of the space and it's beautifully responsive okay so making swift progress guys very very good we've got this down the next thing i want you to do is we're actually going to go ahead and add in these beautiful icons that you see over here so what i'm going to do to save a bit of time is i'm going to go ahead and do all the imports at once all right so i'm going to go ahead and actually pop in all my outline and solid imports so you guys can feel free to copy this if you want we've got bell icon chat icon globe icon and a bunch of others from the outline and then a few others from our solid we don't need this star icon as well okay looking pretty nice all right, what's the difference between Flex 1 and Grow? Um, to be fair, it's relatively the same if you're using it in this fashion, right? Flex Grow is going to use up the majority of space. Flex 1 is just going to say use up the rest of it as well. So pretty much the same thing. Hey, 500 likes and our second water break. This is sick. Right, let's keep going. Nice. I love the energy today. Wow. Honestly, you guys are like, it's consistent. I can feel the focus. The amount of people just like, I can see like, there's like 400 people here just like zoning in. Okay, Div. Now let's go ahead and pop in these icons. Now, we've got a situation here where I'm basically going to need a bunch of icons. Now, the way I would like it is if I could do something like this, right? So Sparkles icon, I've got the globe icon, I've got the, you know, video camera icon, uh, a bunch of others right now obviously what i could do is hold option do this special click thing where you click through and you get multi cursors and now i can basically type in one spot now i could style all of this up but ideally what i want to do is basically just say icon and then i want to have this translate to my own custom style okay so the end goal would be something like this i'd have all my icons i'd have a horizontal row which is going to resemble this little line right so i want a kind of little line in the middle that little line is going to have something like you know a height of 10 to make it look the way you saw it it's going to have a border and the border is going to be gray of 100 okay now as you can see it's barely over there right see how everything's crunched up so we're going to fix that in a second firstly i'm going to make this class name flex and i'm going to go ahead and say um yeah flex right now and as you can see nothing appears okay well this is because we haven't actually this is not a real utility class so i'm going to show you how to create a custom utility class if we head over to our styles globals.css in here you can actually go ahead and create your own custom css utility classes that for use in tailwind the way you do it is you go to the layer components right in this case and you can go ahead and create an own custom class that we can then pretty much assign to anything that we want so in this case i'm going to say at icon basically and all you need to do is say apply that's like the magic keyword that allows you to write your tailwind here so here i'm going to apply a bunch of styles in and these styles are going to correlate to what we see over on the side right so i'm going to say each icon should have a height of nine a width of six it should be on a large screen i'm going to change the width to nine instead i want the cursor to be pointed when i hover over it i want the corners to be rounded small a large on screens and above i want padding of one and when i hover over it only on a large screen do i want to have a background of gray 100 okay now as you can see just like that the styles have been applied okay already looks really really clean okay so at this point now i can use my custom class names wherever i want and you can do this trick all the time hey look at that mailing delgado what's up she goes hello papa fam much love she's actually a papa fam member for three months if you want to be a papa fam member and you get literally glowing when you write anything in the chat hit the little join button and join the papa fam special tier i'd love to see you inside that's awesome all right check this out all right let's see so we've got this looking pretty decent at the moment and what i want to do now is go ahead and make all these icons gray so technically an icon is text so in this case i can say text gray 500 nice we changed it space between these components of two items should be on the central axis and i want to go ahead and say margin x of five all right so space and as you can see this is a problem right on a big screen it's fine on a small screen we don't have enough space right so what i want to do is basically i want to make this hidden but only appear on a large screen so inline flex it only after we hit the large screen okay now this means it's hidden on small devices but it's there on the bigger screens so if i go into a big screen i can see it otherwise it's not there and now what do you think we're going to replace it with right we're going to basically replace it with a burger menu okay now i'm not going to implement a burger menu but you guys can feel free to but i'm going to leave you at that point so you can do it yourself right so we've got the div 
for the burger menu, we call this the menu icon, oops, with our capital I, self-closing component. We'll go ahead and say class name. And this class name is going to have a margin left of, oh no, it's going to be an icon as well, sorry. Okay, awesome stuff. See how it looks nice? This div, we're going to go ahead and give a class name margin left of five. So it gets a bit of spacing, it can breathe. And then if you do want to add anything, I'm going to prepare you for it. So if you want to have your, anything next to it, you can go ahead and add in flex item center, blah, blah, blah. And on a large screen, I'm going to hide it. Okay, looks pretty damn good at this point, right? So if we hit the large screen, watch how it hides and the others show. So that's how you can have these really nice kind of responsive components, which just pop in, pop out as we need to, right? Uh, I can't read the name, but somebody says, this guy is awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed if you enjoy the content and I appreciate you being here. We're going to keep doing nothing but dropping value on this channel, right? Oh, this is a banger. All right, let's go. All right. <laughs> So we've got the, the last thing that I want to go ahead and include is this sign in, right? Now, if you're signed in, it's going to be one value. If you're not signed in, it's going to be another. So we're going to first design this one. So we're going to have basically a sign in state. And then I'm going to go ahead and do uh, implement the authentication afterwards. Then when we log in, we can go ahead and do it the other way. Okay. So at this point, what I want you to do is add a div. <clears throat> and we're here we're going to have, let's just say, sign in, sign out button, right? So this is basically going to be where this is going to be <laughs> inside of here. I'm going to have a little image of a kind of, uh, and again, feel free to make this an image icon, right? With Next.js components, right? If you don't see me doing it for everything, just know it's because of time. That's it, right? Really isn't anything else. You could feel free to use the image icon here, but you can go ahead and just apply in the style. If you want to do it, let's do it right now. Let's do a height of five. Let's do a width of five. There you go done right easy as that and we've got it over there it's tiny right at the moment um <clears throat> but what we can do yeah so i'm actually going to be sticking with the image for today but you can feel free to implement it however the hell you want right, i'm going to do height five with the five with the five to be fair all right you know i'm going to stay true to what i said all right i'm not going to cheat you guys like that let's put it in there let's do layout fill layout fill my parent component around it will be a div to look after it make this relative and then I'll apply my styles. So you see, you can always work with this thing, right? It's better. That's way more efficient, optimized. Okay. With that said, I want to make sure that this thing never shrinks, right? So I'm going to do flex shrink zero, flex shrink zero. And that means that we always have that little beautiful icon. Okay. The next thing I want to do guys is actually go ahead and say, um, inside of that opening div, I want to go ahead and actually put in a, what have I got here? I want to say that it should be a flex box only on the large screen. So I want to hide it on a small screen, but as we get to a bigger screen, so imagine we hit this screen, then I want to start styling it out, right? So what I'm going to do is when it gets to this bigger screen, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say it should be a large and it should be flex box when it comes onto a large screen. So, and then you should see it. We should say items that should be in the center at that point. We're going to go ahead and say space between the X components. When I add another one of two water, Border gray of 100, padding of two to give it a little bit of breathing room. And I want to curse up pointer when you hover over it. Okay. That looks kind of cool already. All right. We're kind of getting there. The next thing I need to do is next to this image tag, I'm going to have outside my surrounding div, I'm going to have a P tag, which says sign in. Okay. And as you can see, we are getting to the point that you guys can see elsewhere. Class name here, I'm going to say text should be gray with a value of 400. Okay. Okay. Right, nice. Somebody says you forgot object fit contain. Yeah, in this case, I kept it as a square, but if you really want to apply it, you can feel free to do it. Thank you for that. You can feel free to keep object fit contain. Uh, the original images was a square, so five by five didn't really distort it, but yeah, it's a good point, right? Thank you, Caleb. Right, so in this point, look at that, looks kind of cool, right? So, what I then want to do, guys, is we've got this looking the same over here as well. Right. When I click this, it actually takes me to my login page over here, which is powered by next auth. Now we're actually going to go ahead and implement that in a second. But right now you can see, we actually have got our first component fully functional, looking amazing, right? That's really clean. I love the look of it. It looks really, really slick. Okay. So with that said, now I'm going to go ahead and actually implement. I say we should do the authentication. That way we can authenticate a user. We can build out the rest of the app. So what we're going to do now is actually go ahead and use something called, oops, where did that go? Let's bring that back. Oop. All right. Let's go ahead and actually introduce something called a next auth. 
okay? So next auth, amazing library for going ahead and doing your authentication inside of Next.js. So at this point, almost at 600 likes. Let's go guys, amazing energy. We're gonna go ahead and import this in, right? So how the hell do we get this working? Well, firstly, I want you to install this dependency. Now I'm using Yarn. If you're unsure about what you're using, Command J, pull up your terminal. Command B to open this up. Have a look. If you've got a Yarn lock file, you're using Yarn. If you've got a package lock, you're using NPM. It really doesn't matter. There's no great, if you're using this, it's better or any of that kind of crap, right? Go ahead, install next auth dash react into your project. Next thing I want you to do, to get your authentication set up, the way it works is inside of Next.js, uh, we've got this annoying issue, what is this? Uh, reserving, da da da. Okay, let's have a look, that's strange. Let's do yarn add, next auth react. Interesting, okay. Let's try that again. Let me go ahead and open up a new terminal right here. Yarn, oh sorry, okay. What I'm actually doing here is you should be adding next auth, yarn add, Next auth, you don't need to add forward slash react, right? Okay, introduction. We've already done this, that's fine. Okay, sweet. Yeah, it actually automatically, I'm trying to access their repo, which is why it's freaking out, okay? Um, Ignat says, this dude's underrated. Thank you, I mean, appreciate it, man. I'm not gonna bring new content no matter what, so we're here to stay. Okay, at this point, we have the an endpoint to handle our authentication. So the way you get this working is in Next.js, in pages, forward slash API, this is actually a real functioning API. If you do not believe me, go to your local host and literally type in forward slash API, forward slash hello. And you will see there is a functioning endpoint at the end of it. Okay, so the beauty is with Next.js, you have a server that is running. So naturally you can have your server code or your endpoints on that server. Hence why we have this forward slash API folder. So at this point, now what I want you to do is we have to carefully create an endpoint where it's forward slash API forward slash auth. And notice it's inside of this. So make sure you're clicked onto API, create a folder called auth. And inside of here, we create a file. Now for this file, you have to name it in a special way. It's going to be square brackets dot dot next auth dot js inside of there, right? So we're going to go ahead and create that file. It needs this because this is where Next.js is going to look to go ahead and try and find the thing that we're after. Okay, so let's see what's going on now. So what I want you to do at this point is you can go ahead and use this as your reference. But instead, what we're doing is we're swapping out the GitHub provider for a different provider. And I've actually gone ahead and found it over here. And this is where I basically found what to do, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do this in a simple, quick co like coding way, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, pull up mine right now. So instead, what you wanna do is go ahead and use the following. So notice I've swapped out the provider for Reddit. And then we've got this, right? So it's basically, this is where you put in or connect your providers. You can add in several. You can literally support Google login as well as Apple login, as well as all the others. You just have to, it's an array. So you can literally add in one after another here. Okay. The only thing we need to do is pass in a client ID and a client secret. So notice here we've got process.environment. So in order to have environment variables in our file, I want you to go ahead and create a dot env.local file. What this is, is it's a private environment file. Notice how it's grayed out. This means that it does not get pushed to your GitHub repo, which is what we want. We want it to be super secret. So in this case, I want to add a Reddit client ID and a Reddit client secret over here, okay? Now, how do you go ahead and set up a Reddit client ID and a Reddit client secret? Well, you have to use something called, uh, go ahead and create up something called a Reddit app, okay? So the way you do this is you go ahead and head over to reddit.com forward slash, let's just type in. So Reddit, you could just type in dev API, right? That's fine. Go ahead and say this and you should be able to go ahead. And if you navigate through, I'm kind of showing you in case you get stuck, right? If you go to preferences in the top corner, you'll see you've got Reddit preferences um, and then you can go ahead and where is it? It's somewhere around here. It's actually, I mean, I know the, I'll give you the URL for it. It's actually going to be HTTPS www.reddit, oops, this one here reddit.com forward slash prefs forward slash apps. And here you can actually go ahead and create your own app. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide mine firstly, but what you will find is that you'll get to this point. So you'll see, you can actually go ahead and create an app. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and already created an app for us. So at first, this is my client ID. Now, if I click edit, I'm going to go ahead and show what's on the screen. Now, first, I'm going to hide my secret. So I'm going to go ahead and just carefully hide my secret here. So that way I can actually show you guys and we don't get spammed and the whole build just goes to crap. Okay, so what you should see at this point is the following. Okay, so bam. All right, you'll see this. If you go ahead and create another app, you go and you just need to go ahead and put in a redirect URL. So in the beginning, what I want you to do is put in HTTP forward slash localhost 3000 API auth callback Reddit. This is like the reserved URL for when we're logging in with our Reddit. Okay, the next thing I want you to do, OK box, that's going to be your username. You've got your secret over here. You need to copy that secret and we're going to put that inside of our environment file. The next thing I want you to do is at the top here, you've got your ID. Right, so this ID is important for connecting your clients, your front end app to your back end. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy my ID, copy my client, and I'm going to go ahead and hide the screen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this away. And when you need to, when you come to deploy, you also need to change your URL endpoint. Okay, so now I'm going to show you where to put your client ID. So in this case, I've got my client ID here, like so. Okay, looking pretty nice at this point. And then I've got my client secret. Now I'm going to go ahead, paste my client secret, close the file and hit save. Okay. And then I'm going to close it. So that way my client secret doesn't get leaked because these are private credentials. So I've copied it in. I've hit save. I'm going to close my file. Now, because I've changed my environment file, remember what I said earlier, you need to go ahead and restart your server. So control C, yarn run dev to restart the server. As you can see now, it says loading environment from the environment files. So in this case, it's loaded up our new environment files and our Next.js should be pulling like so. Okay, so in this case, now it should work. So the next step we need to do is wrap our entire app. So if you go to underscore app.tsx located here, what we need to do is wrap our entire app in a special provider. This allows us to use the session or hooks from our next auth library inside of our app. So the way you do that is you simply go ahead, do a very quick import session provider, and we're going to wrap our app with it. So what I like to do is put parentheses around this, go ahead to my component, drop this down like so, and I pass in a, this is called a higher order component pattern. Okay. Now all you need to do here is pass in a session. Now the session we get from destructuring the props. So in this case, we can do this to make sure we don't break anything that is already there and that's already working. So now I pass in my session and this basically has powered up our app and allows us to use all of the core cool next auth hooks and stuff throughout the app, right? So all of our components are now powered up with our sessions. Okay, hitting save, let's go ahead and see. All right. Um, as Daniel says, even if we don't know the secret key, we don't know programming. That's not the spirit. You want to make sure you learn. Okay, that's, that's it. Guys, we're literally six likes away from 600 likes. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much. Keep up this energy. All right, let's go. Bam. Oh man, this is crazy. All right, so now we've got this. Make sure your app is still running. So to me, it looks fine. Everything's good so far. We've got Gany Demira, what's up? All right, so at this point, we can start actually implementing that login functionality. So if I go to my sign in over on the top left, so remember in my header, I'm gonna go ahead and actually make it so that if I click on my uh, div, I can actually go ahead and actually implement a sign in. And we're literally gonna do the sign in part right now. Like no joke, it's gonna happen that fast, okay? So at this point, I go to my div, which is surrounding the image, and I say on click. Okay, I'm gonna do an inline arrow function. Oops, oh, actually you could just do a direct call. So if I start typing in sign in, control spacebar, you can see I can import from next auth react. This will literally go ahead and based on our configuration, if you get this error right here, you simply need to do an arrow function like so to match the signature, okay? Hitting save allows us to kind of go through that bit. So now if I go ahead and hit sign in, Based on the configuration that we passed in, it goes ahead and actually initializes a sign-in process. As you can see, bam, it goes ahead and I'm already logged into my Reddit. So it's actually gonna ahead and say, hey, we'd like to connect your Reddit account. I click allow. At this point, it will redirect me back to my application. And as you can see, we are now signed in, except our UI is not updating that. But that is literally how easy it is to get your authentication up and running, okay? So at this point, Amanda says, Sonny, don't trust us. <laughs> I know, dude, I learned in the past not to trust everyone with the keys. Okay, so at this point, we need to pull in the session. Now, what is the session? When you log in, you get something called a session cookie. This basically keeps track of if you're logged in, basically proves that you are who you say you are and that you are logged in. It's a way that you don't have to keep re-authenticating. So the way that we go ahead and get access to this is we go ahead and say const data, and we can go ahead and rename this to session. So this is known as destructuring. And we use something called the user session hook. 
okay so now i've basically this is the object that we're accessing but i'm renaming it to become session so that's a nice little syntax trick if you didn't know now you know okay so at this point vanya says good morning from canada i miss a bit but i love your tutorials thank you so much smash the thumbs up doesn't matter if you're tuning in late we just hit 600 likes that's what i'm talking about papa fam all right so at this point now what i can do is i can go ahead and put a, something called a ternary operator and i can say okay if there is a session, then I want to render some logout logic. Otherwise, I'll render the login logic, right? So in this case, I'm going to have my log uh, sign in stuff over here. But if I don't have it, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this, put this over here instead, right? So that way we've got my div here. Um, this is freaking out why. It says cannot find name div. Um, interesting. Let's hit save. Okay, that's fine. It's just a little slow thing. And we're going to change this to sign out. From next door to react we import this and here i'm just going to go ahead and say sign out okay now i'm going to change a few ui things i'm not going to keep it exactly the same but i'm going to show you how we can go ahead and do that okay so at this point you can see kind of looks okay right looks pretty decent but let's just see if that worked so now i can see sign out if i click it it should sign me out awesome stuff if i click sign in i have my sign in with reddit i can sign in and then when i come back to the page it should say sign out there we go okay we have sessions successfully implemented boom it's that simple awesome stuff smash the thumbs up button if you're learning something at a very incredible pace right now we have so many viewers i'm so grateful for you guys honestly it means the world to me and we're literally starting and scratching the surface of this build All right so literally very very good energy to hear today All right so at this point we've got this looking nice now i'm going to go ahead and customize the ui for when we have this up on the screen so the sign up what i want to do is i'm going to have that image which we already have looking pretty decent and then instead of just a regular boring sign out i'm actually going to have uh the user's information here instead so what i want to do is have a div right so we can actually keep this here i'm going to put a div i'm going to pull my p tag into it we have another p tag and this one is going to access the user's name so remember i logged in with my name right so what i'm doing here is i'm making sure that if we're protecting ourselves this is called optional chaining so if there was ever a case where you know session was undefined or user was undefined it won't throw an error it'll just handle it gracefully right i want to make sure if my username is too long it's going to truncate this just means it adds dot 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 at the end of it rather than sort of spamming off to the the neverland right and then basically on uh, reddit we have something called karma so i'm going to go ahead and just put in karma right it's kind of a cool little ui hacky thing it doesn't really do anything you can make it do something if you want to but it's pretty cool vinay says i love your energy a tower an hour it's just stamina dude you build it up it's all good here i'm going to go ahead and say flex one text should be extra small hit save bam look at that looks really clean already so i've got my username that i've logged into this is my uh, username in reddit go ahead say say what's up i didn't know it was like that until recently but there you go um and that's looking pretty cool right now next to this i want to have a little chevron so let's have chevron down icon and i'm simply going to start this up with a height of five i don't want it to shrink so flex shrink becomes zero and i want this to be a gray icon as well all right so flex gray of 400 will do the trick just nicely bam just like that i have everything looking golden now if i want to go ahead and sign out boom and then i got my sign in sign in with reddit allow just like that we have full user authentication connecting to the reddit api and that makes sense to have a nice water break so i think we're doing amazing stuff right now i love to game says this is pre-recorded or live there's your answer smashing it guys literally 400 viewers across these platforms right now 700 likes inbound very closely alex says best investment was a pop rat membership now i have over fifty thousand year salary for all the things i learned last week had the agreement jay screenshot alex right now that is incredible dude this is so so sick okay so at this point let's keep moving forward okay so we've got this looking great now what i want to do here is i want to essentially go ahead and move into the next step which is building out the ui okay so if i head over to my app now there's something that i want to go ahead and address now if you notice i'm gonna have my uh header throughout my app when it doesn't matter what page i'm on i'm gonna have this throughout the app okay so what i want to do here is save myself a bit of hassle so what i can do is i can go to underscore app.tsx i'm going to put a little bit of presentational logic down here so when we have the component what i can actually do here guys is i can go ahead and put a div put my component inside the div put the header component over oops header component over at this level this will mean it will come up with every single page so make sure it's something you want to do firstly yeah i'm going to set the height to be a set height of screen the reason why i do this is because that way i'm going to have this kind of nice little 
parallax effect where you kind of scroll down everything sticks to the page so we're setting a height to the actual screen then we're gonna have overflow rules so we'll say overflow on the y-axis of scroll so overflow y scroll and then i'm gonna have background we're gonna change the color to the sort of reddit color which is 200. now you can see i've got two headers why why because if i go to my index page now i don't actually need to put the header in there so what I've done here is I've said that every single page should have the header. Okay. So every single page has the header. Instead, now I can just focus on if I put H1 hello, you will now see hello. Yeah. You will now see it just pops into the next bit, but every single page will have the header. So it's basically baked into the document itself. Okay. So really, really nice sort of way of doing it. And it means that throughout your app, it doesn't matter where I am, you can basically always be sure that you've got access to that header. All right, beautiful stuff. Okay, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and build out the feed. Okay, or actually, really, we could build out the post box. All right, so I'm calling this element right here the post box. And this is basically what we're going to be using to post into the databases. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set up our database. So that way we can go ahead and get everything configured. We can set up step zen and we can go ahead and do everything that we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and create two sort of, uh, I'll open up two. Um, screens right now so i can see everything that i need to see what i want to do is i firstly want to sign in okay so you can sign in with your github on superbase we need to set up our postgres database before we can go ahead and create a schema with the steps in so that our front end can then use to go ahead and contact our back end with right so at this point i'm going to sign in with my github okay so signing in with my github i already have one project in here which is the reddit clone prep this is the one that i'm doing right now to show you guys the build so this is literally the fully functional one that you guys are seeing over here this has the data in there what i want to do now is i want to create a new project okay i'm going to go ahead and add it into my own organization and you get two free projects with superbase so here i'm going to go ahead and actually add in the following i'm going to say something like the project name should be let's just say reddit dash clone dash youtube okay and then here you need to add in a strong password so at this point i highly recommend you put a password that you're going to remember in okay so in this case i'm going to go ahead and put in a password um and let's go ahead and do this right now okay so i've put in a password i'm just going to type that in again because i was talking okay so i've got a password here you can go ahead and set up a region set up a free tier whatever you want to do i'm going to click on create new project okay this will go ahead and set up everything that we need right papicha says wow this project is intense that's how we do it right we always set ourselves these uncomfortable goals that's how we want to progress okay now what you'll see is that they're going ahead and setting up a project now superbase is really awesome guys i really do like it it's a very like pretty good it's kind of like a firebase alternative right that's how they kind of market themselves and i, I agree with that it's kind of like the firebase alternative now what i want to do here is i'm going to teach you how to go ahead and create your own tables inside of a sql database okay so we're going to have four tables in total we're going to have a post a subreddit a vote and a comment table and this is going to be known as a relational database the first thing i want you guys to very like take into caution right when we're learning this right i'm going to give a quick little brief introduction into what a relational database is so imagine we have uh, our first table here and our first table is basically a post okay so this first table is going to have several different um like columns inside of it right so let me just draw this down with a line i'm not going to spend too long on this but i want to give you guys a nice little breakdown into what the hell's going on okay so in this case imagine our first table the first column is going to be id okay now inside of a um inside of a one second inside of a sql table you need to have one column known as a primary key now the reason why we need this primary key is basically we need to go ahead and have um some way to identify each record from another record okay so this is just kind of a quick hacky example right so imagine we have the username we have the text blah 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 so each one here is going to be one two three for example in the rows now this field is known as a primary key okay so a primary key and the rule with a primary key is that you can only have that one primary key it has to be unique it cannot be something which already exists okay so imagine i fill up this table i've got text username body whatever we have for each post now let's imagine i have a comment okay 
Let's imagine I have the same kind of principle here. So let me go ahead and see if I can do my little trick. I think there's a nice little trick I can do here where I basically com I copy this out. There we go. Where is it? Oh, how did I do that? Yeah, there we go. Bam. Nice. All right. So I've got my little nice kind of comment table over here as well. Let's go ahead and grab this. Grab my line. Oh, this is smooth. All right. So again, this will have its own uh, primary key. So every table has to have a primary key. Okay, so this is the rule in SQL databases. So everything has to have a primary key. Now, what we need to understand is that over on this table, we again, we have the same principle, right? We have a username of the person who made the comment. You can even have that link to another person. I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna keep it very simple today as well though, right? We're gonna have the text of the comment itself. And then we need a relationship between these two tables. This is where SQL databases are relational, right? So they're basically structured in a way that you have relationships relationships between tables so here what we have is essentially we can call this one like for example post underscore id okay so at this point where we've got the post id let's imagine i made a comment i made a record here right so this one could still be one because it's a, it's a unique value in a different table we've got sunny we've got you know hey this is an awesome post and then we've got the post imagine i was referencing this column over here okay now, in order to create a relationship, we basically just write a three here. And what I've naturally done here is I've actually gone ahead and created a relationship between this row and this row in this table. So basically we're saying that this is a comment for this post row. So this is known as a foreign key. Right? And when we're setting things up, we just have to tell the database that this is a foreign key. Once you set up these relationships, what you essentially can then do is have very clever logic, such as joins, that kind of stuff, which means that I can basically pull all the posts and I can basically connect all the comments. So if I say, get me the post with number three and also pass me the comments alongside it, you can do a nice little structured query that goes ahead and gets you all of that. But I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to show you how you actually can go ahead and describe a schema in GraphQL using step Zen. And then you can literally just say, I want the comment, I want this field, I want this field, I want this field, and it will just get you the information. It's amazingly powerful, and I'm gonna show you just how to do it. So primary key, foreign keys, relationships, this is SQL. Okay, hope that made sense. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and structure up our databases. So I'm gonna go ahead and firstly create out the post table. Now inside of the post table, I'm gonna have the following table records, right? So let's go ahead and create a new table. In this one, I'm gonna go ahead and say post. Okay, now you can enable row level security. This is basically ensuring that you have secure rules inside of your app. I would recommend you do this for production. We're not gonna do it right now because we're pretty much focusing on the, the speed of this build. We've got a lot to do, right? So we're gonna have created app by default, which is timestamp, and it's gonna have a default value of now. The ID is the primary value in this case, which is why we have primary over here, okay? The next few fields that we're gonna have is we're gonna have a subreddit ID. Right, so this is going to be linked to a subreddit, but we're going to create that one afterwards. We're going to have a title of a post. We're going to have a body of the post. We're going to have an image in the post, and we're also going to have a username. Okay, so username we're going to give a value of varkar. And yes, you can have a separate table for users, have a relationship. We're going to keep it relatively simple today, though. Right, and then we've got text for this one, text for this one, and for title, I'm going to go ahead and say text as well. Okay, and then we've got this. So this looks pretty nice so far. Okay, now what I want to do here is make sure that this goes through. Okay, so let's actually create this table. Awesome stuff. And then what I'm going to do is create a subreddit table. Then I'm going to come back and add in an ID because remember, each post should belong to a subreddit. The reason being is remember, this post, for example, belongs to the Papa Fam subreddit. All right, so that way when we load up the subreddit, you can see all the posts which are associated to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and structure our database in that way. So this is the post table. Okay, we are now creating the post table. So wait until this is done. Nice stuff, we've got this done. I'm gonna create another table here and call this one subreddit, okay? So for this table, I'm gonna go ahead and do something very similar, right? ID is gonna be primary, awesome stuff. But in this case, we're gonna have the topic of the subreddit. This is gonna have the value of text, awesome stuff and pretty much keeping it very straightforward. That's pretty nice to have it, okay? So we're creating our, our subreddit. Now we're gonna go back to our post and I'm gonna do our first foreign key. 
All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create a foreign key and show you how we can have a relationship between two tables. OK, so imagine now inside of a post, we're going to add another uh, field here. So if I go ahead and edit the table, I'm going to go ahead and add one more column. And this column is going to be called subreddit ID. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and call this one the subreddit ID, subreddit underscore ID. And I click this little chain icon. This says it's a foreign key. Now you can go ahead and read it out. But what they're saying is maintains referential integrity. Now, what does this mean? It means if I was to have, for example, let's say I had 15 comments associated to a post and they had the relationships between them. I can't just go ahead and delete that post. What I have first have to do is delete the 15 comments, then I can delete the post. This is called referential integrity. It prevents you from accidentally deleting data which is in use elsewhere. Okay, so lots of cool stuff that we're going to learn about today. Okay, now there's so many people saying, why didn't you use Hazura? This, that, guys, this is not a, t a discussion about like technology and stuff today. Subreddit ID, we're going to go down here. I'm going to go to subreddit. But you'll see why, because Step Zen is damn powerful when it works well with Superbase. Right, so I'm going to go ahead, select a column from a subreddit to reference. And this is basically where we say the pro this is going to have the connection to the ID. So basically, when you have a foreign key, you have to connect to the primary key of another table. This is why all the values have to be unique. OK, guys, we're literally so close to 700 likes. Keep smashing it. Now you can see we've got this link. So if I click save, bam, just like that, we have a connection done. It will go ahead and do <coughs> what it needs to do. I'm going to go ahead and create two more tables after this. The first one is going to be the comment table. So you can see, bam, we've got that table. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new table. And this one's going to be called the comment table. But this is going to be for when we actually go ahead and add comments into our application. So this one's going to have created that. It's going to have post ID. And you could bet, you can guarantee you know what this one's going to be. This is going to be a foreign key to the post table ID field. Okay, and notice how it picks out the type because it knows it's connected to it. This is going to have the text of the comment, which is going to be a value text. And it's also going to have the username which is of value Varkar. Okay, so we're sticking to Varkar here. Okay, nice. Um, a lot of people say, I don't understand why I use a third party for database. You can just host your SQL database yourself. Honestly, all I'm going to say to you is wait until you get hacked, right? Wait until you get hacked. Wait until you hit a million users. It's not as simple and straightforward as that. You need to make sure you go ahead and have scalable approaches to doing this stuff. Yes, you can host it yourself, but watch and see how your speed gets impacted, right? There's reason why they have edge servers. There's reason why the CDN networks exist all this kind of stuff, right? So we're creating out our comment table like this. Awesome stuff. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. Okay. Now, almost to 700 likes. Let's go. Oh my God. The retention today is insane. 400 viewers across platforms. I love you guys. All right. We're going to go ahead and actually click on. So uh, the final one is going to be vote. So once this is done, there we go. Final table is called vote okay so what i'm going to do here is create a table and i'm going to find the fields here so we've got create that we've got post id i'm going to have a link to post id there we go um, oh mauritius says thanks and i got my current job because of this channel to any beginner that is watching this just put in the effort i pray you get your first job this year from kenya boom that's another person from kenya that is awesome jay save that dude screenshot that that is incredible thank you for sharing that with me post i'm going to go ahead and link this to the id there we go nice stuff and then I'm going to go in and we're going to have another thing here called upvote. So if you vote, right, basically we're going to have a, a, a field called upvote and it's going to be true if I vote it upwards. So imagine we vote it up, it's going to be true. Oh, I need to sign in to vote. Oh yeah, that's, that, that's a feature as well. All right, it's not a bug, it's actually a feature. All right, so if I sign in, it's going to be true if it's upvote, post if it's downvote, okay? So I'm going to represent that in our database with a upvote, okay? This is going to be a Boolean value. Okay, so we've got this looking nice. And then we've got username, which is Avaka. And yes, if you want to improve this, you can have a link to your database or connect next door to your database, retain the information for all your users, and then have a primary key, foreign key relationship with your users like that and pull your information in. You could do that, right? So Abdullah, yes, you're correct. You can do that. Uh, today, we're just doing username. Okay, I know it's just a balance between time and what we can do. Okay. Awesome stuff. We've got this post ID linked over there. Nice stuff, creating the table. Nice, our database is set up, right? We've got all our tables, four tables, comment, post, subreddit, vote, with all the relationships between them. So naturally, what you would typically have to do at this point is go ahead, learn how to create a GraphQL endpoint, or you'd be using SQL, you know, some, some JavaScript library to pull it in. 
I'm going to make your life so easy by introducing Step Zen into it, okay? Just trust me when I say this is game changer stuff, all right? So we're going to jump into Step Zen. I'm going to go ahead and click my Step Zen over here. And what I want you to do now is you're going to actually get a key on the screen, right? So you're going to get a key. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and hide the key a little bit, okay? So at this point, we've got our key over here. Right, so you're gonna have an admin key, you're gonna have a API key. So what I want you to do is you can copy your API key, copy your admin key, all this kind of stuff. But these are your credentials, right? So you wanna make sure you copy this and then you need to go ahead and authenticate yourself. There is a documentation that you can do that. It's very simple to do it, okay? So um, the next thing is we need to go ahead and create a endpoint, right? So what I'm actually gonna do here is open up the docs, docs for steps and I'll show you how easy it is to do this. So let's go ahead and say docs, steps in. And I like to show you because it's very easy that this is pretty much how I was pretty much learning it, all right? So you can see connect the rest service, overview, all this good stuff. So if we go to quick start right here, install and set up, right? Firstly, you create your, your account. The next thing you need to do is npm install dash g step zen. This is because we need to install the step zen CLI tools. Okay, so your CLI tools are basically going to be uh, how you can use Step Zen inside of your terminal. So inside of your VS Code terminal, and we're going to need to do that because we're going to need to run our Step Zen inside of here. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is Step Zen login. And remember, guys, what it said it's it, what I showed you previously. You're going to have an account name and an admin key. You need to use your credentials, the ones that you previously saw. Copy that and use it when you get prompted when you do the steps and login. I've already done this step, so I don't need to do it. We just hit 700 likes. Amazing. Wow. This is crazy today. All right. So we've got all of this done. So once you've done that, you're at the point where I'm at. Okay. So now what you can do, command B, what I want you to do to keep things simple, go to your package JSON level. I like to stay at the top level, create a folder called step Zen. Okay, inside of Step Zen. So what I need to do now is Command B, go to my terminal. Notice I'm on the top level here. I'm going to say CD Step Zen. So now I'm inside of that Step Zen folder. What I'm going to do here is say Step Zen init. Right. This will initialize my Step Zen project inside of my application. Okay. So this will go ahead and get things started up for me. Right. While it's doing that, so in this case, you can see it says, what would you like your endpoint to be called? In this case, they give you a pretty quirky name, API forward slash modest salamander. If I hit enter, it's gone ahead and created a step, a step, a step Zen workplace in this place right here. So if I go ahead, look inside of Step Zen, we've got a config and this is our, gonna be our API endpoint, okay? So bear with me, this is pretty cool, okay? So at this point, now this is where the juicy stuff comes in. Now you're probably wondering, oh man, I'm going to have to do all this kind of crazy stuff to get my, you know, my database schema in, all that kind of stuff. Well, no, all you have to do, guys, all you have to do is step Zen import PostgreSQL. That's it. That's it. And provide a couple of credentials. Bam, you are in. Okay, so at this point, you didn't even have to do the, the init. It would have actually done that for you, right? But I'm just, I showed you in two steps. Okay, so let's go over here now. Now, what I want you to do is before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and show you a prerequisite step. So let's go back to Superbase. Let's go to our settings. I'm going to go to my API. And at this point, what I want you to do is go over to authentication and we're going to scroll down and we're going to go over to, where is it gone? Um, no, it's not here, sorry. I need my database. There we go right database here right so this is where we have our special credentials so basically what i want to do here is i'm going to pop this up on the screen and i'm going to go ahead and pop up my terminal as well okay so there we go um i'll tell you what we'll do we'll just do it as i as i need it i'll show it okay so i need to hide this quickly Turn hiding on i don't know why it does that <clears throat> okay so i'm going to go ahead and do the steps and import postgres sql okay so awesome stuff let's go ahead and do this downloads the sort of starter pack from or start whatever it is doing it's downloading that from steps and um the basic script i guess and then what's your host this is where it gets super easy right you literally copy your host in bam that's the host. What is your database name? In our case, Postgres is the database name and the username. So I can say Postgres, username is Postgres and the password. Remember that special password that we did earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and type mine in right now. So this is that password that we just did. Hit enter. What is your database schema? I'm going to leave it as blank for now. Hit enter. 
Okay, so we're going to use the default. Then it goes ahead and generates the schemas. It says successfully imported one schema from Zepsen. Zepsen. Now I kid you not, guys. This is actually mind blowing how good this does a job, right? So just watch what it did right now. Right, just look at just look at this. This is actually crazy, right? What it does. So I, I got so excited when I was building this, right? So look inside here, Postgres. What he did is it created a special GraphQL file, right? And you can have a look at all of these things. Well, basically, what it's done is it's generated GraphQL types. Now, be careful. GraphQL types are different to TypeScript types. They are different to TypeScript types. Yes, you can have some tool which goes ahead and converts them, but we're not going to do that today. Right, but just know that they are different, right? So in this case, it's gone ahead and introspected our database. So what does this mean? Like, what is all these fancy words? Well, basically, it's read the database. It's gone inside the database, and it's literally gone ahead and took all of our fields and drawn out a perfect schema for it. Okay, so here we have the schema, the different kind of post Reddit and all this kind of stuff. And now, when you create GraphQL, right? When you use GraphQL, you actually have to go ahead and create something called queries or mutations. So there are two types of things that you can do in GraphQL. I'm going to keep it very simple and in, in, in layman's terms. A query is when you want to pull information from your data source. So in this case, it could be from the Postgres that we just imported. So we made that step very easy. But the beautiful thing about GraphQL is you can pull from your database as well as a rest api as well as some mongodb database and then return that in all one request it's incredible yes you can do that but what we're going to do now is use their special handy things inside of steps and so they've got this handy little uh kind of let's call it syntax called db query and this actually goes ahead and makes a quick connection to our postgres database and it can access it so we've got a couple of queries that were built out for us so all the queries are down here so i'm going to show you an example of these in just a second and then we've got these example mutations mutations are when we want to for example insert information or delete information from our database so really really powerful stuff okay johnson whoa he goes i got a full-time job that pays over four thousand eight hundred pounds a month which is czar 95k as a front end developer thanks to all the next guest builds we have made it is real guys boom that is damn incredible guys destroy the like button for our friend johnson jay screenshot that that is amazing man wow that's crazy dude congrats right so first thing i want you to do here is we have our step zen up and running so while you're inside that folder type in step zen start here's the magic here is where it just everything is is honestly to me game changer when you're using graphql because i'm not joking i found graphql to be a pain point in the past with step zen they've just done it right if i click step zen start watch what happens here okay it says deploying API modest salamander to steps in. Now you've got two things that are happening here. One, they literally just deployed it to a real, a real cloud-based endpoint. I can use that in my production and I can use my key to go ahead and connect to it. That is literally a thing that now works. Okay. And we also have a local host version, which is running while I have this steps and start running. It's just incredible if you ask me, right? So if I click this now, you can see it opens up a, a this is called graphical. Whenever you do use, uh, use GraphQL, you're gonna run into graphical, okay? So let's see this. Um, <coughs> Pat Peter says sound effects on you. I think we're good on the sound. Jay, clear me up if we're good on the sound. I think we're good though. Oh, somebody, I think you meant like that. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, let's have a look. So at this point, if I click Explorer, you can see we've got all these example queries, right? Now you're probably wondering, where are the mutations? If you want to see your mutations, simply type in mutation. You can give it any name at that point and then hit control space bar and you'll see your insert post. And then it comes up with your mutations. It's a little trick I learned. If you do query, it'll come up with your queries and so forth, right? So a nice little trick, kind of good stuff. Okay. So at this point, if I click on get post list and I click on like, for example, all I'm doing here is I just say, basically, when we use something like REST to go ahead and fetch information from a database, the problem is sometimes we do something called overfetching. Overfetching is a big problem. It's basically where I request a bunch of information from a database. It gives me back 50 fields. I don't even need 50 fields. I just need like, for example, the username and the text. 
I could need just two thoughts, but it gives me 50 back. This is making a waste on your API. It's a waste on your bandwidth. It means that the load time slower, all this kind of stuff gets affected by it. So we can eradicate that with GraphQL because the way we set it up is we just request which fields we want and it will only send those back in the request, which means it's very lightweight in what we need to do. It's also very declarative, right? It's very, very nice when you actually get used to using it. So. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, let's just take everything. Um, let's imagine I wanted all of it. I click on execute and you can see we get this empty data back. Now, that's correct because we have no posts. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to create a subreddit. Okay. So I'm going to set the stage for us, right? So I'm going to create a subreddit first. Uh, let me go ahead and just refresh. My kind of screen's bugged out a little bit. Let's go ahead, create a subreddit. Let's check this out. Okay. Boom. Let's do this. All right. Wait for that to load up. Got to be a little bit patient, right? And then we've got a subreddit. So I'm going to click insert row. And what I'm going to do here is, I'm not sure why this is happening. I think it's um, to do with my computer. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, I'm going to click on topic. Let's just go ahead and say next JS. And I'm going to go ahead and create this topic. Okay. So why is this bugging out for? Okay. That's being weird. I'm not even zoomed in. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and just move this around for a second. I'll actually create a new, let's do that. Let's see if that worked. Okay, if not, what I'll do is I'll create a mutation. I'll show you how to mutate one into it, right? That's fine. We're not gonna let anything stop us here. So go ahead, create insert row. There we go. I don't know why that happened, but strange. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert row topic next JS. Okay, click save. And this will go ahead and automatically generate an ID. The ID for this subreddit is one. So bear that in mind, okay? Let's create a new post. And then our dummy post is going to have a title. Um, is Next.js worth learning? You guys answer this in the comments right now. Is Next.js worth learning? The body of the thing is say, I'm thinking of learning it, right? So imagine we had this little example post, right? I'm thinking of learning it. Image here. We're not going to have an image. We're going to just leave it blank for now. A username. Let's go ahead and imagine Elon Musk wrote this. And then subreddit ID one. If I click view data, it will literally connect to my example subreddit. And you can see I actually made a connection to that next JS topic. Done. This is in there. Okay. Now, if I go back to my steps end and I go ahead and run the same query now, you can see, boom, I get the actual post. There's a real connection. Let's imagine I don't need any of these fields except for the title and username of the posts. You can now see I have a fully functional next year, um, GraphQL schema from our friends over at Stepsend. The best part about this, guys, is if I want to use this inside my React app, I click export, bam, I literally have the code to do it. It's that crazy good. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and do a combination of efforts, right? We're going to go ahead and firstly consume this endpoint from our, um, our client using something called Apollo, right? So Apollo client allows us to consume a GraphQL endpoint from our front end. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use something called Apollo client. Uh, next, Jess, and I'm going to show you how we can actually go ahead and install it. It's very simple to do, right? So you go ahead and you can go ahead and actually go to your Let's go ahead and let's clean this up a little bit as well. I have so much crap everywhere, right? So I'm going to close this off. Um, I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to make sure that we have a nice space to work in, right? I'm going to pull this over here. I didn't actually move it. Okay. And we don't need our next auth anymore. I'm going to pull this over here. Okay. Awesome. Right. What I do tend to recommend is actually have your local host on the same page so you can kind of use it as you need to. Okay, looking pretty good. Charon Preet saying, thank you for the donation. Hello, Sunny Paz, you got a React job. Thanks to you. Hey, let's go, man. Thank you so much for sharing, dude. Appreciate that. All right, All right let's check this out. Dark Unscripted says, Steps in is useful, but I kind of like writing queries as well. It's fine. You can write queries as well. There's no problem. We're actually going to write a few queries, but trust me, it's going to make your life so much easier. That's my point. All right, Try, just use it. Uh, there's, there's a reason why. You'll see why it's honestly amazingly fast to move forward with this. Okay, so at this point, uh, make sure when you sign up to Step Zen, first link in the description. Guys, we're almost at 800 likes. Destroy that thumbs up button. We're doing amazing right now. Jay, I think we're doing damn well for time as well. This is really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and, um, where am I at? Sorry, I'm completely blank for a second. Um, oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set up my 
app.tsx, right? So what I need to do is create something called Apollo client. So I'm going to go to my package JSON level, create a folder called Apollo dash client. Oops. Dot JS. Okay. Now inside of Apollo client, I'm going to go ahead. Now, first I need to install the Apollo client, right? So what I'd recommend is going over to that tutorial, right? So you'll see it over here. There's loads of tutorials out there, but basically they're going to tell you to do the same thing. You need to install the Apollo client as well as GraphQL. Okay. So we need to install both in order to get this running. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go over to my project. Oops. God damn it. What have I done? Um, no. Nope. VS code, I've hidden it. There we go. All right. <laughs> so at this point, I'm going to go ahead, command B. And here, what I like to do is I have my step Zen, my app running here, my step Zen server running here. And then I have a spare server over here, right? The spare terminal, sorry. So yarn. And make sure you don't add it in this folder, cd dot dot. All right. Thank you so much, Vetri. He goes, hello, Sunny. Big fan of yours. Keep doing it. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate the lovely donation. Amazing stuff. All right. We're going to say yarn add. Apollo client and GraphQL. This will install the two required packages into our app. Now we can basically use an example such as this, right? But I'm going to go ahead and customize this one, right? So what this is, this is basically how we set up. Okay. Firstly, we need the URI. Now this is not the URI. This is URI of something else. Now we can do two things here. Okay. We can either use our local host version over here, or we can actually go ahead and use our deployed version over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to use this one because if we use the local host, there's no uh, API key that we need to go ahead and connect to it. But if you want to use your actual production one, I'll show you how we do it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and press copy. So I'm going to copy this one over here and I'm going to put it here. Now you can definitely make that a uh, uh, an environment variable as well. Okay. So we can go ahead and do that. Then I'm going to go ahead and add something called headers. Okay. Now inside of headers, we're going to have something called authorization. Okay, so authorization, authorization, and this header is going to have back ticks and it's going to basically say API key. And if you're wondering, how the hell does he know this? Because this is the sample request they give. Okay, now if you did do those steps earlier and you can simply run the command steps in who am I dash dash API key and it will give you your API key. Also, remember in the beginning, we actually got it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it here and I'm going to hide my screen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run it. And what this did is it gave me my API key. Okay, so I'm going to kind of show you this in a way that it will help you guys out. So you guys can actually see this little hack here. So I want you guys to see how I did that. So that way you don't get stuck. I'm going to blur it out. There we go. Nice. Okay, so check this out. Run that command steps in who am I dash dash API key and it will go ahead and print out your key. Copy that key and we're going to be using that key inside of our environment file. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hide, hide my page now. Hope you like my little tricks to go ahead and get around this crap. All right, so there we go. Come on, okay, there we go. Now we're back. <laughs> All right, so nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and add a comma here. Oops, add a comma here. And basically say API key space. And this is going to be process dot environment next underscore public underscore step zen key. All right now there are two things here one you can basically obviously not make this public um and then that way what i would recommend is you do have api endpoints that you then interface through to keep the, the key secret uh, but if you don't do that then make sure in production you actually enable rls and that will prevent people from making malicious changes to your your thing but right now this is a tutorial we're trying to move fast so that's why i'm doing this okay so let's go ahead and hit save now i need to add this key in so i'm going to go to my environment file and before i reveal my super secret keys i'm going to go ahead and do the following okay so i'm going to show you how i want you to do it All right so i'm going to delete my key for a second and i want you to go ahead and basically do this so Inside of your environment file, I want you to add a next public steps and key, paste that value that you just had in the terminal. And basically you should have your secret here as well. I'm going to add both values, close this out. All right. So I've shown you how to do this. Luke Menton, what is up, dude? Good to see you, man. That is awesome, man. It's so nice to see OG pop fan members in the house. Okay. So I've added in my keys. I've closed out my, uh, my file. Okay. Now what I need to do is you guys guessed it. Once we change our environment file, I'm going to go ahead, cut my server and run yarn run dev. Okay. And don't ignore this. No secret. We'll fix that as well very soon. 
Okay, so we do need to add a secret when we're doing authentication, that kind of good stuff. Okay, so at this point, we're looking pretty, pretty good. Okay, everything is looking pretty nice. In fact, I do want to address that right now before I forget. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my environment local file and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a quick little trick on something. Okay, so before I go ahead and add those two values in, I want to do something like this, right? I basically want to have this inside of my app, right? I want to have a next door secret and this can be anything secret. It's basically like a way to encrypt your, your cookies, that kind of stuff when you're sort of, you know, you're handling authentication and your next auth URL should be the URL that you're locally developing on. Then when you develop, you need to swap that URL in Vercel for the one that they give you. So typical to our normal deployment steps, that's how you would do it, okay? So somebody said, can you increase the uh, font size? Hope that's good. I'm not going to increase it too much. Increase the resolution on your side because otherwise it gets kind of crazy for me coding. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and put these values back, hit save and close this file. Okay. So hopefully this is good, good for you guys progress wise. Let's go ahead and hit save, bam, close this out. Now we have all our environment variables set. We run yarn run dev and just like that, we shouldn't have any more errors in our console. Okay, looking good, man. Looking good. All right, we've got our local OGs in the house. This is amazing stuff. Jay, I think we're looking solid. We have 400 people across platforms, 800 likes coming in clutch. Ah, oh, this is nice. This is what we wanted. This is very nice. Okay. Let's carry on. So at this point, I need to connect my Apollo client to the front end. The way I do that is I go ahead, head over to my app.tsx. And then what I want to do is basically go ahead and wrap the entire app in an Apollo provider. Okay, so Apollo provider, again, a higher order pattern, a higher order component pattern, awesome stuff. And then for the provider, I need to do the, I need to basically get my client right now. If I go over to my Apollo client, you can see here I'm exporting default client. That means I can actually go ahead and import the client like so. I can go ahead and say client from this is a default import. So you can name it whatever the hell we want. Go up a level in file tree, head to Apollo client, and I need to pass in my client like so. Hit save. Looking good, right? This is looking very nice so far, guys. Okay. So we have our app pretty much where we want it to be right now. Let's go ahead and hit refresh. Nothing is broken. So now we've got the chance to go ahead and connect to our back end from the front end. Okay. Um, so at this point, what I want to do is start building out the rest of the app. All right, so we're back to the UI stuff, right? So we've got steps in set up. We've got all this kind of stuff working really well. So now we're going to go ahead and start building out the front end and all the sort of endpoints that we need to go ahead and do to basically build out the ability to post comments, that all of that kind of good stuff. We're going to go hardcore into that right now. Nisaj said, hey there, appreciate your work, dude. Keep it up. Thank you so much, dude. Almost 800 likes. Keep smashing that like button, right? The retention is incredible. Okay, let's go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and actually mix up the sounds. I've got some new tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and see how they're doing. Okay, Ooh. let's get into a, a flow state now. This is where we go to our front end vibes, right? So in index, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and firstly create something called a post box component. Then I'm going to have a div underneath. And inside this div, I'm basically going to have a feed. Okay. I'm going to have a feed and I'm going to have some other cool stuff like the subreddit rows that you guys saw previously. Example is of this right here. Where is it gone? Um, da, 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 da. Where's my app? Here. Right. So where we go to my homepage, for example, this subreddit feed and the feed. But right now we're going to build this component over here. This one over here. Subreddit row. Now, if I sign in, oh, I can't actually sign in on this dummy version, but basically you're going to see that we have these nice drop downs. And when I click this little button, it will pop out with the image and so forth. So I'm going to show you how to build an awesome looking uh, poster thing over here. Right. So let's go ahead and do this. All right. Let's check this out. So we're going to go ahead and build a component, new component called postbox.tsx. RFC the E. I'm about to swear for a second. I was like, RFC that. <laughs> do that. Um, so in this case, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so we can actually code. Um, but yeah, feel free to, to increase the resolution on your side and they'll help you guys out. All right. So first thing is inside the post box, I'm going to need my logged in user state. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that right now so we can prepare ourselves. So we're going to get the session. We're going to get equals use a session. Oops. We're going to use the use session hook. Boom. There we go. Okay. Awesome stuff. Now what we're going to do is, oh, 800 likes. Let's go, guys. Amazing stuff. This is so cool. 
right so we've got this set of post box over here i'm gonna go ahead and actually import in my post box so we can start seeing it post box like so bam there we go and as you can see the post box is being rendered in now okay so this post box right now has lots of moving parts to it okay i'm not gonna lie to you it's moving parts firstly the surrounding div is going to be a form we're going to have an element of being able to type in hit enter here okay the first thing i want to do is have a div okay inside of that div i'm basically building this up right so we've got an avatar this is going to be a custom component in the avatar and basically we're using a nice library called dice bears which basically you can just pass in a string to it and it will go ahead and create a custom uh avatar based on whatever text you gave it so that's how i've got these random quirky avatar icons okay so for this div i'm going to basically have my avatar here that i'm going to create in a second then i'm going to have my input and guys little surprise for you right not only are we using react hot toast in today's build we are going to be using react hook form as well i did forget to mention that we are using react hook form so if that's a nice surprise destroy the like button i'm going to teach you how to do that as well okay so we're going to be implementing that as well so right now i'm going to have a placeholder for this one which just says right now let's keep it very simple let's just say create a post create a post by uh, entering a title there we go and what i'm actually going to do right here is i'm actually going to level this up straight away i'm going to make it so that if you're signed in let's go ahead and leave the other i'm going to say basically if you do not have a if you have a session then you can sign you can add a post otherwise i'm basically going to go ahead and say no nah, you need to sign into post sign into post and then with that i'm going to disable it right so i'm going to say disabled if there is no session and what's cool about Tailwind CSS is you can style based off of that, right? So you can now go ahead and say something along the lines of, um, let's go ahead and say, um, actually, we don't need to even say anything. I'm just going to disable that box. I'm going to say BG gray 50. Um, so there you go. We'll start applying this out. Padding of two, padding of two, padding left of five, and then outline none. So when I hit into it, it doesn't have that nice little outline. So as you can see, sign in to post. So I need to sign in at this point. Let's quickly sign into my app. Okay, looking awesome stuff right now. Uh, let's go ahead and log in. And you should be able to see that it no longer says sign into post, but it allow, instead it allows me to say create a post by entering. There we go. So it's no longer disabled. Okay, so at this point, um, we're now going to go ahead and add in rounded corners. So I'm going to say rounded MD. And then I'm going to go ahead and say flex one, because basically this is going to be inside of a container that I want to go ahead and take up the majority of the room for. Okay, so this div is going to be a flex box. It's going to go ahead and have items on the central axes, and I'm going to have space between them once they're added in F3. Okay, so as you can see now, it goes ahead and uses the majority of the space. Okay, it does have rounded corners. It's just very hard to see that, but it's right there. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to create this little cool avatar component, right? So we can start benefiting from it. So creating the avatar component is pretty simple to be fair. TSX, my bad. RFCE, I like these kind of jazz tunes, they're pretty cool, right? So the avatar component. Now, this right here is basically gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull in our session. So I'm gonna use our session information like I did before. But what we're gonna do here is we're simply gonna render out an image. So we're literally returning an image here. Now, yes, you can once again, make this into an image component, okay? So in fact, we could do that right now as well. We can go ahead and make it a div. Let's do that. Let's keep, stay true to our word, right? Not div. Let's go ahead and say image. And I'm gonna show you how to whitelist it as well, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and say the source in this case. Now, I want you to go ahead and check out um, avatars.dicebears.com. They're really cool, right? They are really cool. If you go to avatars.dicebears.com, you will see that you can basically select from a random thing. And if you pass in a different seed, you see how it creates a random character, right? So we're using this API to basically pull our images because I couldn't be asked to do any like manual stuff. So I basically have this cool seed. But if you pass in the same seed, it's going to basically go ahead and provide the same image. So I'm using a variant called open peeps. So what we do is we say source equals, oops, uh, JSX. And we're going to go ahead and basically pass in this right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass in this URL. And at the end of the URL, I need to pass in the following, right? So I'm gonna say, it should be the session.user.name, right? So this is gonna be basically the seed for it. So session.user.name, or if that doesn't exist, I want it to be the same seed every time. So the same image comes up. I'm just gonna say placeholder, 
right? Something like that. Now it's freaking out because we don't have an image, right? A layout for it. So I'm going to say this should be relative. You guessed it. I'm going to go ahead and say layout fill. Layout equals fill. There we go. And this is still freaking out. It's because it does not have a support. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, image can be used as a component. Okay. Um, what have I messed up here? Source. Uh, alt image. Da, da, da. We are returning. There we go. We're going to say H1. Hello. What have I done here? Oh, wait. Okay. My bad. I need to import it. There we go. <laughs> See, sometimes it happens to the best of us, right? Even I write little random hellos. Okay, awesome. So at this point, let's go ahead and say, Rich says this chat, lol. I know it's super distracting, dude. Um, but yeah, we're going to have this image pop out here. Then what I'm going to say is it's going to have the following. It's going to say, oops, no, I'm going to say height of 10, width of 10, rounded full. Okay, border gray, 300. Background should be white. Okay, nice. Okay, now at this point, what I want to do is you can see that this is a smart kind of avatar component, right? It's going to basically know if I'm logged in and it will basically render out the UI as needed. So at this point, I can go ahead and try it out. So I can pull in my avatar and let's see if it worked, right? Oh, okay. It says you have not whitelisted avatardicebears.com inside of your Next.js. We need to do that. Let's go to Next.js config, next, next config, add it to the list of whitelisted urls hit save close our server rerun our server command j hide it go back to our code hit save and refresh all right there we go okay so at this point the image is not appearing so strange let's see why that is right so heading over back to avatar let's see what i'm doing wrong here so we've got oh yeah there we go so it's actually dot svg at the end of it Okay, there we go. Hey, that's actually my seed, right? That's how you know it worked because that's the same one I had before. Okay, so looking pretty cool. Okay, that's basically going to be dependent on if I, you know, whatever I pass in. Now, I do want to go ahead and extend this, right? So we are using TypeScript. The props typically come through a component here. So with TypeScript, we have to define what props are in the form of a type. So in this case, I'm going to define what the props are like so. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to condition leave. So we might pass in a string. I'm also going to say that we might pass in a large. So it's optional. And this is basically a Boolean. Now, I'm going to show you what we'll do. If you pass in a string, I'm going to prefer to use that seed instead of the session username. OK, something like that. I do need to destructure, destructure our object here like so. Awesome stuff. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say for the following, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, if it's large, right? So basically my class name here, I'm going to change this to backticks, change this to backticks. And I'm going to basically add a space here and do the following. I want to say, okay, if, oops, uh, dollar sign, right? I'm going to say, if it's large, only then should you apply these styles as well. Height of 20, width of 20. Cool. Now I've got a fully reusable avatar component that I can go ahead and customize. If I pass in large, bam, it gets bigger, right? Really cool, right? I think that looks kind of nice. Right. So at this point, I've also got a little thing here. Can you see how my image is kind of overhanging? So to fix that, what you can do, guys, is right now the image is going to be inside of here. So what you could do is something like overflow hidden. And there you go. If it overflows, it's going to basically crop it out. That's how you fix it. OK, so now we've got this. If I pass in a seed of like, say, sunny, there you go. A different random seed will come through. So that's apparently sunny. <laughs> okay. But there you go. Okay. So very nice. We've got this little kind of avatar component that I can continue to use throughout our app now. This entire build is going to be really, really uh, focused on reusability of components, like the actual good principles that you should be following a lot of the time. Unscript says, is energy is amazing. Legit. The only reason I can follow your stream instead of wandering off. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you. And I so thank you so much for your support. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Over here. <clears throat> Over here. Now, let's go ahead and style out this form. First thing I want to do is I'm going to say it's a sticky because we want this kind of cool looking effect where it sticks. Now, remember I, I made the header sticky to zero. So what I do here is I basically extend the height of it. I say stick to, uh, to 16 instead of zero. So it will kind of come down a bit. Z50, I want it to be on top of everything else. I want the borders to be rounded, but first thing I'm going to say the background should be white. Okay, so you can see what's happening here, right? Border rounded. And I'm going to go ahead and say, sorry, uh, I'm going to give it a border, rounded MD. And I'm going to go ahead and say the border should be a gray value of 300 pow, just like that. Look at that. Looking pretty sweet, right? And then I'm going to give it a padding of two. So in this case, padding of two, bam. Looking sick. Okay. Looking sick. 
right that's pretty nice at this point okay so very very good now i do want to go ahead and actually add in so at this point i have my everything looking kind of nice um i'm gonna probably have some spacing off of that in a second but we'll address that in a bit so underneath my avatar underneath i'm gonna have a photograph icon and a link icon so I'm going to import these at the top firstly so photograph icon and link icon from the outline variant let's go down under my input and we're going to go ahead and pop these in right now so this music is pretty sick for coding right so photograph icon oh okay that was a fail photograph icon there we go and then i'm gonna have my link icon like so all right so link icon as well the photograph icon i'm gonna say is a class name uh, and this one class name and let's go ahead and do this and we'll say height of six but i'm actually going to be doing some cool stuff here so i'm going to probably have some uh, back ticks here because later on i'm going to be doing something cool there height of six here text gray of 300 and in this one i'm going to go ahead and say height of six text uh, oops right out the box height of six text gray of 300 <coughs> There we go looking pretty sweet pretty sweet um i'm gonna say cursor should also be a pointer All right cursor should be a pointer bam and we have it like so i'm gonna make this button clickable so you can actually add a picture when you're doing this kind of stuff edison smith what is up boy he goes much love from uganda hashtag papa fam that's what i'm talking about guys almost at 900 likes smash that like button i love the energy today it is actually incredible you guys are awesome All right All right so uh we've got this these two things here so now what i'm gonna do guys is i'm actually gonna go ahead and incorporate the um react hook form okay so i'm basically gonna go ahead and implement react hook form into this build now so react hook form if we head over to it right now you'll see simple react form validation it's amazing let's put it that way it's very good all right we need to install it into our project so i'm gonna go ahead pull it up in my app command j and uh command j bam all right now over here I'm going to go ahead and say yarn add react hook form all right that's up and running now so i now need to use it inside of my app so i'm going to import it from we've got this nice little use form this use form is basically a helper which allows us to get the things that we need to go ahead and connect to our form so basically i got this from the documentation on the website but basically you can pull in a bunch of things like register set value handle submit watch form state blah 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 all this kind of stuff all we need to do as a prerequisite is basically say what type of data is going to be inside that form and eventually what i'm going to have is the post title which is a type string post body which is a type string post image which is a type string and a subreddit which is a string okay so this is the information which i'm going to have in the form now at this point i'm going to go over to my input and basically the way that i connect my input to this special form is i go ahead and put jsx dot 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 register and i simply pass in a string so in this case i can go ahead and say like post title whatever i need to do and i can also pass in like if it's required or not whatever not so in this case this is the post title this is a required field so i can pass in a required true and basically this will provide a nice little bit of validation for me okay so we have this bit in play right now and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna have this really nice feature whereby if the user starts typing in here i basically want it to then pop out with the extra fields only if they start typing so i'm going to show you how to do that right so underneath this div right here i'm going to go have some jsx and what i'm going to say felipe says dude you're amazing watching from brazil here what is up dude good to see you in the house here i'm going to go ahead and use something called the watch right so this is a really cool little thing that you can do uh, and basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to double shebang it which means basically i'm flipping the value into a boolean so that way i can use it as a ternary operator so i'm going to go ahead and say um watch um the post title and then basically i'm saying tell me if this is a, a, a like a, if it's true truthy or falsely and basically convert this value to a boolean that's called double shebang and then i go ahead and it's just funny word shebang all right so <laughs> um you got a banner in it all right so this case you got a uh, post title so div chuck it in there now what you'll see if i type in boom watch this right as i type in oh oh nice only when i type in does it pop up basically it's saying if there's a value there only then should you be able to basically render the next bit okay so we've got the first div i'm gonna go ahead and have the like a few different sort of boxes here the first one i'm gonna have is the body right so the body box 
This one's going to basically have a div. This div is going to go ahead and have the following, right? So guys, says, Papa Hustling, let's go. All right, we've got a P tag. This is going to say body. This reminds me of Silicon Valley. If you've seen the series, I definitely recommend you watch it. If you haven't, you're missing out. You need to see it. It's like a coding show. Placeholder should be text. I'm going to say optional. It's basically going to be like an optional thing, right? So you, you don't have to have that text, but I'm going to basically say, you know, kind of cool, right? So you can just basically put up title if you want. And then for this input, I'm going to register it. So remember how we did it? We said dot, 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 register. And then I basically pass in the title here. So in this case, post body. Now TypeScript comes in clutch when you're doing a lot of coding back to back. It really does speed up the process. Here I say margin of two, flex of one, because this is going to be inside of a flex. Background should be blue, 50. Padding of two, outline of none. Bam. Now if I type in hello, you can start to see that this is going to come like pop in, right? So at this point, we need to sort of style up the class name around it. Flex, items, center. I want that body to be next to it. Padding X of two. Okay. Then this one, I'm going to go ahead and say that it should be a min width of at least 90 pixels. Because it's just in time compiler, we can do tricks like that. And I love that. Right? Awesome stuff. Okay. So this is pretty cool um now we've got the div outside so for this div i'm going to say flex flex column and padding on the y-axis of two okay awesome stuff so we've got the body over here um and this one's basically going to say body colon okay and then underneath the body i'm going to basically have the subreddit as well right so here i'm going to basically go ahead and have a p tag which will say something like subreddit to be fair it's kind of the exact same as this so what i could really do is basically pop this out again and just change it to subreddit register it as subreddit and now it's registered under that and the placeholder we just need to change to say ie react js for example now you can see we've got the body, we've got the subreddit. And if I go ahead and hide it, so as you type in, then it pops up with this beautiful looking additional, right? Bit. Okay, looking nice. Okay, then the final one is I basically want to have, if I click this button, I want to keep a piece of state, which will basically go ahead and enable a fire, an extra step to come in. Uh, <laughs> Mockman says, what the hell is this wizardry? I love that. Right, I'm going to basically have it. So if you click this, it will go ahead and actually have another one pop in. So in order to do that, whenever you need to keep track of something, you need state. I'm going to call that state image box open, image box open. And the syntax that you should be doing is set whatever the name is, image box open. And then we use a use state hook. Okay. Now this is going to be a Boolean value. So I'm going to cast it to a Boolean. That is TypeScript. You don't even have to do that because it will infer it, but I'm just showing you that you can. So this will infer that it's Boolean based on the first value you gave it. But if you want to infer it, you can do that. Make it extra sure. Okay. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, if I clicked on that photograph icon okay so on click what i'm going to do inline arrow function this is going to say set the image box open to whatever the opposite value is okay so image box open now what this does is it technically will basically go ahead and like have a value here now i need to show the user if they click remember i said i was going to do some cool stuff here this is why i do it all right so at this point i go ahead and say uh, dollar sign and i'll go ahead and say image box open if it's open then i want to change the text of the color so that image should become blue and i want it to be a blue 300. bam now check this out look how oh nice okay now let's actually make that functional so if i type in test now when this is open i basically want to conditionally render an extra field over that lucas says say hi to brazil what's up brazil hey this is really nice all right so check this out so da -da -da. All right, so going underneath over here, so I've got my div. I'm gonna have another final one. Now this final one is gonna be the same thing, but it's only gonna be basically baked in if the image box is open. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy this one, and this is gonna be the final value. Now I'm gonna register it to the image. Uh, let's go ahead and just, if I forgot, see post image, there you go. TypeScript coming in clutch. And this is gonna be image URL, okay? And the placeholder is in this case is gonna be optional. Uh, optional dot 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 hit save now you can see look at this guys if i have an image aha hey look at that look at that nice okay so this is actually working pretty cool now now the only thing that we haven't handled here is what if there's validation errors and also how do you handle the submit okay so i'll show you how to do that firstly we're going to have underneath all of this goodness i'm going to have the so underneath this 
I'm going to have the errors being displayed. Now, remember, we get an errors object from the form state. So I will show you how to actually tap into that here. So the errors are going to go here. Okay, so errors go here. I don't know why it came out like that. I'm going to basically go ahead and say the following. I'm going to say object.keys. Basically, what I'm doing is, is, is actually, a, I'm basically checking the length, right? So this comes back with a like a an object with certain fields inside of it, which say basically if you had this field had an error or not and so forth. So what I'm going to check is if any of them came back. So if any of them, like any error came back, then I'm going to start rendering the errors underneath, right? It's a very simple sort of principle. Underneath, I'm going to have a div. And basically what you do here is you go ahead and you access it the following way. You basically say if errors dot post title so notice how if i do errors dot it comes up with the automatic type definition dot type is required all right so if there's basically an error where the type is required that's basically why it's there then we can say a post title is required and we'll do the same thing for a subreddit because we remember we made those things required right here we actually made it here with the reddit post body i don't think i actually did that did i no i didn't do it right i think subreddit okay so subreddit should be required um required is true and yeah the others can be optional that's fine all right so we've got a post title is required and i also wanted to have a subreddit is required so underneath here bam okay looking good and at this point i also want to style this out so at this same class name we're going to say space y of two and i'm going to say padding of two and the text should be read to symbolize that it's kind of an error right you should be able to know that that's an error okay all right so um, use this channel recommends he goes I speak French but it's, it's an English channel yeah you can do it we've got subtitles as well All right so in this case I'm going to do the same trick with the post title that I did earlier so if the user's typed in at all only then will it show the post button right so post title we do the double shebang trick and then we go ahead put up our, our parentheses I'm going to pop in a button and this is going to say create post okay bam there it comes in I'm going to go ahead and style this so this is going to go ahead and say width of full we're going to say rounded full, um, BG blue to 400, padding of two, and the text should be white. Just like that, it becomes a beautiful button, All right? And the final icing on the cake here is because remember, we're surrounded inside of a form, we can actually make this type submit, and that basically will force our form to submit as we do it, okay? So there we go. Papicha says, I don't speak much English too, something explains nice nicely simple words. There you go, awesome stuff. Joseph, shout out from Nigeria. What is that, man? Awesome. Okay, this is looking really good, guys. We've got a very nice sort of staple here. Um, I like this, right? It looks pretty, pretty good. So what I now want to do is actually handle the submit. So in this case, handle submit. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function called um, on submit. Okay, so const on submit equals, and this is going to be a dead function for now. Um, but what it will do is eventually this will have the asynchronous, so it's going to be an asynchronous function, but it will basically have the form data that was submitted. Now, how do we get that? Okay. Well, what you do here is you basically go ahead and um, I wrap in my handle submit here. Sorry, so I made a mistake. So this should be handle submit. And then here I get my async form data. There we go. And then I basically have my code block and then I have my parentheses. There we go. And then here you can console log the form data if you want. Okay. Now the on submit, we basically attach to the form on submit. So if I go over to my form and I say on submit equals on submit, hit save. Now full screen, uh, open up your inspector, go over here and type in just anything. It could be literally so high uh, subreddit next JS boom image. Hit, post, hit enter and I get this. I boom test next JS. So you can see the subreddit next JS post title test boom is body. Uh, boom is image. Sorry. There we go. And high was post body. Awesome. That's exactly what I did. All right. So at this point, it's looking nice, right? We have our image. Now this is way too big firstly. So we need to kind of correct this out, All right? So I'm going to go back to my app.tsx and I'm going to make a little quick change over here. I believe it's over here. No, it's not here. It's index. So if I go over to my index right now, I'm going to apply a quick little bit of styling to the surrounding div because I don't like how this looks. I'm going to say max width on a big screen of 5XL. So it's going to be a max width constraint. I do want to do a margin Y of seven to push it away from the top and a margin X of auto. Now what you will notice is it automatically constrains it to the following parameters, right? So that will automatically looks a lot nicer. If I stop typing in, we get this kind of awesome looking max width. MX auto means it centers itself nicely okay 
so looking looking good all right at this point we've got this looking i think we're doing really well all right we've got the post box up here yeah okay now this one will prepare ourselves later on i just take text for now we are going to have that eventually okay so we've got the post box cool so now if i start typing in i get this okay so going back over to post box all right so where we've got create post awesome stuff guys 900 likes let's go man oh my god the energy is, is so sick so so sick okay jay we're all smooth right this is all good all right it's gucci all right so at this point we got post title so what i want to do now is i want to go ahead and have it so that when i create this post i basically now i'm going to have the first bit of logic which is going to cause a mutation in my database so basically what i want is when i cre create post i should be able to actually through graphql that we've created with step zen initiate a mutation which basically means that i'm going to go ahead pass some information to my graphql uh, as in the form of a request graphql request and this will basically go ahead and modify the database to go ahead and insert the t the the post column okay so check this out papa smooth <laughs> there we go smash the sound effect man i don't actually have the sound effect here uh, but i will i will hook it up next time thank you that little da -da -da. okay so in this case this is looking good oh yeah by the way let me show you guys if i don't include the subreddit and i try and look at this oh and if i don't do this like if i do enter and i type in oh hello and I try and enter, a subreddit is required. Oh, nice. And look what it also does. It also focuses me on the field that's, that's not there. So really, really nice additional step. Okay. This is test. There we go. Look at that. It's just so, it's clean. It is really clean. All right. So at this point, what we are now going to do is I'm going to have a water break because my mouth is getting super dry. I can hear it. Somebody said, can you, Cosmo said, can you add Max Smith character count? Of course you can. Yes. This is a fired up session, Monique Shay. What is up? OG in the house. All right. So at this point, we've got the function, post box, all this good stuff. So I'm now what I want to do is I basically need to use a mutation to add a subreddit. So the way that we do this, let's kind of get used to this flow of things, right? We go to our step Zen GraphQL, we check the mutation. Okay. So firstly, we have a mutation for inserting a post. Now I'm going to test this out on the graph queue, uh, the steps and endpoint. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can replicate it on our front end. Okay. So basically I'm going to go to my local host, my steps and local host. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is, okay, what happened here? What is that? Not load, da, da, da. Okay. Let's, let's go ahead and do a cut it steps and start. Let's load it up again. Da, 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 da. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, don't know what happened there. Just do that. Just restart if it ever happens to you. Okay, so at this point, we need a mutation. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can do mutation. So mutation, let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger. Mutation A equals, and if I do control space bar, insert post, you can see that basically I don't actually need all of these things, but it says I need them all, right? So sometimes you need to modify a schema. So firstly, all I need to do really is pass in the username title, subreddit ID, the image created at, I don't need to pass in and body. Okay. So what we need to do, Alex says, yeah, we need, we do need to know, um, need to do that next uh, sort of meetup. Someone says, give some low energy. Cool, man. Got you back. All right. So at this point, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and actually modify the mutation. So I don't need created app. So I'm going to go ahead and just confirm these as well as I do it. So sub Reddit, let's go to my steps and Postgres. Okay. So I might insert post, All right? We've got a long way to go. So keep it, keep the energy good. Oh, thank you so much. We've got a donation um, for $7.77. He goes jackpot, lucky sevens. Thank you so much for the free content. Zaka Koda. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you so much. All right. So at this point, that's awesome, dude. Thank you. So at this point, we've got insert post. So I don't need the created app. Okay. So I don't actually need that. And what we're doing is we're saying it's going to return a post. Now, as you can see, this is a DB query. So this is basically provided by the guys over at steps. And all we're saying is it's going to go into the post. And it's going to be an insert command. So basically we pass these values in, it will insert it into the table and it will return a post to us. Well, the awesome thing about GraphQL is you basically just have to say what you want to ret get returned back. So you do need to get a value back, but I'm going to show you how we can actually essentially do this. 
right? So firstly, if I go ahead and save that file, notice how it just immediately redeploys. So this is something I really do love about StepZen, right? So as we're going ahead and doing this, it goes ahead and just, it's very fast to go ahead and develop with. So if I refresh now, we've got our updated, um, let's go ahead and do our a mutation. Uh, a doesn't really matter there, insert post. And as you can see now, it's, it doesn't ask me for created app, okay? So let's go ahead and try this out, guys. Let's go ahead and say, if I wanna add a body of example text, so let's say my example body, image, we're gonna leave blank. Uh, subreddit ID, imagine we had an, a subreddit ID of one, cause we actually added that one. Uh, title is gonna be something like, is React, is Next.js awesome? And then let's go to username. Let's just say Elon Musk for now. Okay. Now, notice how it's a red arrow here because it says you need to go ahead and return a subset of fields. So here you need to specify what you want back. So in this case, I'm just going to take everything to just to demonstrate. I do the mutation. Now, as you can see, it returns back something called insert post, which is the name of the mutation. And inside of it, what it actually does is it returns back the, the, the item that we just inserted. But remember, I can specify even that to that degree what I want back. So I don't even need everything that I actually need back. I can only, I can actually pick and choose what I want back. So this works. Okay. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a front end, um, basically a nice little folder structure that we can go ahead and keep a nice and neat mutations and queries folder. So what I want you to do is package JSON, create a folder called GraphQL. Inside of GraphQL, I want you to create two files. One is going to be called queries.ts. The other one is going to be called mutations.ts. Okay. Inside of queries, what I want you to do is if you're doing a query, by the way, you can actually export, but it doesn't show you for mutations at this point in time. It does show you roughly, but it's not actually doing it in the correct form. So I'll show you how to do this and you guys can go ahead and, and sort of do it however you want. Right. So the first thing I want to do is actually go ahead and make a get all post. Right. So I uh, no, sorry, the mutation. Right. So we're going to do our mutation firstly. So first one is going to be add all. Okay. So what we actually need to do here is we need to say export const, uh, we need to give it a name. So we're gonna say add post equals. Now I need to use something called GQL. And this comes from Apollo client GraphQL. We do backticks at this point. This is why I'd recommend having that GraphQL extension so you get syntax highlighting here. So what we do is we say mutation. It really doesn't that matter the name here. So we can just say my mutation, right? It really doesn't matter. And here we pass in some arguments, okay? So remember, these are not TypeScript arguments. These are basically gonna be GraphQL uh, arguments okay or essentially like in the form of GraphQL hence why we've got in this backtick structure so we're saying we're passing a body image subreddit title and username and the exclamation mark basically is saying that this is a required field it's not nullable right so the capital S capital ID pay attention to those then what we do is we're basically going to go ahead and execute one of those queries that we basically had here so in this case insert post so what I can do is I can say insert post and basically what we do now is we make a mapping to the fields that we pass in to the values that we basically are calling the mutation with. So imagine if I called it with these values, then it will go ahead and execute the GraphQL query matching those values that we passed in with the image, with the subreddit ID and so forth. Okay. So, oh, somebody said I'm in the queries file. Thank you so much, dude. This should be in mutations. That's a, that's a good catch. All right, thank you. Uh, Louise, Jean, Caleb, that's awesome, dude. All right, James Tuttle, what's up, dude? Um, so insert post. Now, remember I said it will fire off an, an, uh, an error if you don't return something back. So in this case, I am gonna return all the fields back, okay? So I'm gonna return back the body, the created that image ID and all that kind of stuff. And we are exploring it so we can use it elsewhere. So with this said now, we can call this mutation from our front end using a special hook called use mutation. So heading back over to our post box, right? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can do your first mutation call, okay? So what we do is we actually go ahead and you can check out the documents online, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we do it. We can basically go ahead and call the syntax like, so we say use mutation and we pass in that add post and we imported it from our mutations file. Now, what this does is it gives you back a bunch of things, right? The first one is it gives you a function to actually execute from. So I'm going to call this function add post. And the second one is it can give you a bunch of other useful things that you can go ahead and reference from, but I don't need those right now. Okay. So the first thing I just need is add post. Okay. So at this point, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to basically go ahead and uh, eventually call this add post function. Now, we have a bit of a hiccup here. Now, the reason why we have a hiccup is when I submit a insert post, I need to basically check to see if the subreddit that you typed in was already existing or not. So what we're going to do now is we're going to implement the following logic. I'm going to basically make a get request first, which is going to go ahead and see is the subreddit that Sunny typed in, for example, Next.js already in the tables. If it's not already created, I'm going to go ahead and create it, get back the ID. Otherwise, I'm just going to get the ID and use that ID inside of the add post statement. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now. Okay. So inside the on submit, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a massive try catch. Okay. So basically a try catch is just basically a way to bubble up errors. You could do whatever you want safely at this point. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and do this and inside my try. Okay. What I'm going to now do is we're going to go ahead and uh, do the following. So I need to basically go ahead and firstly create a, another get query and we're going to call this one get post list by topic. Okay. So going back to my Postgres, I need to go ahead and check what I have. So in this case, I don't, I have things like, you know, examples where I can get the subreddit list and all this kind of stuff. But I'm going to show you how to write a custom query where we can add our own SQL. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create our own custom subreddit list by topic uh, argument. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I use the examples that they give me. I'll just kind of copy this one, paste it down here. Okay. And this is an example of a query. So I'm going to go ahead and say get subreddit list by topic. And what this will do is it will take an argument, right? We're writing in GraphQL here. So it's a little bit of a different syntax. We say topic colon, we provide the GraphQL type. It's a string. It's not nullable. All right. So at this point, now we're going to return an array of subreddits because it may find more than one for some reason. Okay. So at this point, what I now need to do is change from table to actually query. Okay. And what you do here is you can pass in the following syntax. It's basically three exclamation marks. So three exclamation marks followed by three exclamation marks. And inside of it, you pretty much use a SQL query. So if you haven't used SQL before, you could go ahead and actually practice it inside of your Superbase uh, portal here. So inside of Superbase, you can go to SQL editor and we're going to be using SQL query language, right? So structured query language to write queries basically. And the first thing I want to do here is I basically want to run a new query, which is basically saying select all the fields from, and if you haven't done SQL, basically subscribe to the channel. I will teach that in the future, uh, or you can check out loads of tutorials on YouTube, but it's fairly straightforward once you get the hang of it. So select it all from the subreddit table. Okay. And then what if I can do is I can hit enter, right? And this will go ahead and fetch all the fields from the subreddit table. So you can see select all from subreddit. So this gives me all the fields back from that field, uh, that place. Then what I could do is I could say something like this from, I'm um, sorry, where the topic, for example, is equal to a value. So in this case, if I do next.js, watch how it gives me back Next.js. So Next.js does not exist. Oh, sorry, I've made a mistake. I need to do, uh, thank you, Rohan Day Shaka, uh, made a world of copy selling. Oh, thank you so much, I will do that. Gwen says, what is up everyone? What's up, Gwen OG in the house? All right, here I'm gonna do topic equals Next.js, okay? Let's go ahead and do this. The column and Next.js does not exist. Um, let me just see why I've made a mistake. I need to go ahead and change it to, da -da -da. oh, sorry, I'm using the wrong, there you go. Single quotes. All right, let's go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Nice. And there. So you can basically do it that way or that way. All right, so now single quotes where next yes. So you can see that that's actually fine. But what if I tried to find like React, for example, it will come back with as uh, saying no rows returned. Okay. So you see how we can query a database like this, right? So in this case, I'm going to take this similar approach, uh, except what I'm going to do here is basically go ahead and change it slightly. I'm going to say select all from subreddit. Where, and I'm using this to protect because later on we're going to have like more complicated use cases where you're basically going to need to specify which table each field's coming from. So I want you to get used to it. Select all from the subreddit table where the topic equals the first argument. That's basically what that means. The first argument. So the topic that we pass in. So at this point, we have now created our subreddit list query. Okay. So you can now go ahead and test this. So as I mentioned before, it's going to come up straight away in your steps end. So it's going to redeploy. It'll be here. So I can go ahead and say query a 
and then you can go ahead and find it here. So get subreddit list by topic. Go ahead, feel free to check it out. If I went ahead and typed in Next.js now, and I went ahead and said, I want to get back the ID topic created at, hit event, hit go for it. And it's found it that, that it literally did it, it ran it, right? And say if I didn't want the created at ID back, I just wanted the topic, boom, it just gives me back the topic. Right, so amazing, amazingly powerful stuff, right? So you see how we're literally getting the best of both worlds. We're getting SQL, we're getting GraphQL, all in one beautiful combination, okay? So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and actually create our uh, corresponding query, okay? So the corresponding query is basically the pattern I'm gonna be following through with this kind of approach, right? So what I want you to do here is I want you to do the import statement at the top of the file. And to save ourselves a bit of time, I've written out the query like so. So export cons get subreddit by topic, similar to what we did before, except now it's query, not mutation. The name doesn't matter here, my query is fine. We pass in an argument, the string, it's a value which is required, hence non-nullable. And then we basically call that, uh, that um, query that we basically called earlier, passing in the topic that we give here as an argument. And I'm basically getting back all the fields from what we requested, okay? So at this point, let's go ahead and go back to our post box. Now, what I want to do here is go ahead and essentially use an opposite thing called use. Um, actually, let's see how I can do it here. Let me see what I did. I think I used the use query. Let's go ahead and check what I did. So what I did here was I actually went ahead and made a direct query. Okay. So I, yeah, I did that. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is do a direct query. So I'm going to firstly import my client from the Apollo client. So I'm going to go ahead and do a direct import from client, uh, Apollo client. And what I'm going to do now is basically query, query for the subreddit topic, subreddit topic, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to go ahead and say the following. I'm going to say const, um, actually first thing you make a call, I'm going to say await client dot query. And what you do is you pass in an object. And the first thing is the query itself. The query that I want to pass in is get subreddit by topic, which I import from the external file that we just created, okay? Second thing is variables. I pass in this. Now there is a use query hook, but I don't want to use it for one reason. I'll show you that afterwards. We will use it in other files so. though. Now what I do is I pass in the topic, okay? So the topic here would be form data. So basically whatever the user typed in the form, dot subreddit, okay? So at this point it will query to see if the subreddit that they entered exists, okay? Now, what this does is, guys, is it will return an object, okay? So this will return an object. Now, what I can do is I can destructure the object straight away. It returns an object with data inside of it. Inside of that data is basically gonna have the example of the name that we called. So in this case, whatever the query is, it will come up with that. And inside of this, you will have the results, okay? So what we can now do safely is outside of this uh so outside here i can now go ahead and say const does the subreddit exist subreddit exists and i'm basically going to make a boolean based off of this okay so check this out get subreddit this by topic thank you granny goes i'm happy sunny's doing a bit of back and stuff i'm doing a bit of back and stuff they say length equals greater than zero okay so in this case now what i can do is that if it was found right then what we're basically going to be saying is subreddit is found with this topic right so if it was found with this topic then it's basically this is going to be true okay so what i can now do here is i can say okay if the subreddit doesn't exist then i need to basically go ahead and create the subreddit okay dot 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 else we can use the existing subreddit use existing subreddit okay so basically you see what's going on here, right? This is the logic that we were playing with, okay? So we've got use the existing logic, create some sub, uh, subreddit, there we go, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is create the subreddit. So at this point, we basically had that add, we had an add post example. I'm gonna do the same thing for adding a subreddit, okay? So the adding a subreddit, we did it for add post. We need to do the same thing for the uh, add subreddit. So going back to our Postgres, what I'm going to do now is where we've got insert post, I'm going to use the same approach here for sub inserting a subreddit, right? So we're going to use that special DB query. Very, very simple approach, okay? All you need to do here is essentially the same syntax here. So it's insert subreddit, but we're passing in a topic, 
right? That's all I want to do is pass in a topic because basically that's all we require when we actually insert this row, right? So this is going to insert into the subreddit field and it's going to return back an object of type subreddit. Okay, so now we have this ready. What's the natural next step? We have to go to our mutations, add a corresponding add subreddit. Okay, so in this case, you can see the pattern I'm doing. This is to keep your consistency. This is basically going to make sure that your files don't get crazy or messy. It's going to keep everything normal. So add subreddit GQL is a mutation. Okay, it's going to go ahead and pass in the topic, take a topic of string. And this value has to match the string value that we have over here. So in this case, subreddit is topic of string awesome stuff okay and then it's going to basically be inserting subreddit so we're basically going to go ahead and call that one that we just created over here pass it in and then we're basically stating that i want back these fields okay so now heading over back to postbox we can do the same thing i can go ahead and say add subreddit right and we can go ahead and say equals use mutation equals use mutation and i pass in add subreddit like so okay now add subreddit here um, is basically going to be our magic source here, right? So this is how I basically execute that um, that function from our front end. Okay, so in this case, what I can do now is I can go ahead and say, um, in fact, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make it really kind of nice. Right? I'm going to say console log subreddit is new, creating a new subreddit. So I'm going to even log it out in the console. Okay, so so you guys are going to see what's going on. So if it's the first time, for example, React, we basically just pass in variables, except the query in this case is already created because it's attached to this use mutation that we passed in here. Okay, so variables is all we need to pass in. And here, all we need to do is pass in topic. Um, here we can go ahead and say topic is going to be the form data dot subreddit. Okay, so that's what we're going to be passing in. Guys, incredible stuff. We're nearly at 1000 likes. Let's go. Amazing energy, right? So amazing energy, right? Add the subreddit. We've got the variables added in. So the next thing I'm going to do is after this, I'm going to say console.log. And basically, I'm going to, I'm basically going to say creating the post. Okay, is the next step, right? Now we need to prepare ourselves for a little bit of a, a situation that could arise. Right. What I'm going to do is if the form post image didn't actually have, for example, if it had undefined, that can throw an error. So what we're going to do is if it was undefined, we're actually just going to cast it to an empty string instead. So that way we're protected when we're pushing it into our database. It's just kind of a known bug, but we're going to, that's what we're going to do to eradicate this. Okay. Now we're going to call our add post function. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to say await. Uh, and then all I can, basically what I can do here is I can go ahead and do the following so what i'm actually going to do is remember that that subreddit we just created right the whole purpose of this was to basically get a subreddit id that we can then add a post with right so in this case data is going to come back from this and remember whatever the query or mutation was called that's where it's going to be wrapped inside of so in this case it's going to be add subreddit or no, sorry um what am I talking about? It's going to be the data is going to come back. The data is going to be called uh, insert subreddit because that's what we basically had called here. So insert subreddit. So we basically go ahead and call it insert subreddit. But I'm going to rename it to new subreddit because that's what we're basically pulling in. So that's a bit of a, a bit of a mashup, right? But I think it's I think it's pretty good. Um, Jay, are we pretty good on the stream? I think we are. All right. So at this point, new subreddit. What we're now going to do, um, what we're now going to do is we're going to go ahead and say with this new subreddit, we're going to create a, add a, a new post. Okay. So I'm going to say add post. Um, Jay, need uh, updates. Okay. So we're going to say add post equals. Um, this is going to go ahead and say, we're going to pass in the variables now. All right. So the variables for the post, remember what we did earlier, we prepared ourselves for this, right? So the body here is going to be form data dot post body. The second one is going to be the image. And remember we passed the image up here. So in that case, if it was default or blank, we can fix it. The subreddit ID, this is the important one, All right? So what we're doing here, the subreddit ID, if it wasn't created before, we would have just created it. So we're going to use that new ID that we just got back from the database to basically be our variable. So basically what we're doing is if you created a new post for a subreddit, which didn't exist, it will literally create it, return the ID, and then you can use the ID. Okay. So the next thing title is form data dot post title or some stuff. Okay. 
now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say the username is the final sort of match it like last bit we're going to say session dot user dot name that's nice Jay. i need proper updates there we go um session user name and we're going to hit save okay now this post is going to also return uh some data right so you can see the pattern here right so we're going to go ahead and say it returns some data and again what was the name of the call that we had here it was called insert post insert post but instead i'm going to rename that to be called the new post that came back okay so at this point after all this kind of logic is said and done what you can do here is you can say console log new post right and i'm going to go ahead and say something like new post added and that's going to be in the console obviously if you push this to production make sure you don't actually push these values you know what i mean you want it to be very clean okay now what we can do is remember guys that we actually said already was the subreddit already found remember this bit over here when we did the initial one right so what we can now do guys is if the second situation came around for example if i already tried to if i tried to post in the subreddit which already existed now i can go ahead and post directly into that subreddit so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead and say using existing subreddit if it was already found and i'm just going to log it out so you can see for yourself and here i'm going to say const image equals uh, form data again we're protecting ourselves against the image a very similar approach here you could even refactor this if you wanted okay here we're going to go ahead and say await add post okay and then we're going to go ahead and pass in the variables now in this case slight difference and i want you i want to show you if you can see the difference here right so everything else is relatively similar okay so i'm oh, sorry i didn't put that in right it's going to be variables oops variables and then we pop it in right so in this case everything is similar except for the subreddit id this one we actually fetched so it would have come back as the first uh answer in the array and then that would have given us the id back okay so in this situation we can actually go ahead and use that as our value okay and then what we could do if we really want to is we can go ahead and actually get this back so we can actually go ahead and destructure it so we can say const um like so we can get the data out of it what was it called it was insert post you can see the, the sort of pattern right new post comes back and then you can go ahead and say new post was added okay so you can see two different routes that we've got here all wrapped in a try catch it's pretty cool how it works okay amazing amazing stuff right so after all of that is said and done we go outside the else block right so this is basically after the post has been added hey we made it over here right so basically what you can do now is you can reset all the fields in the form they do this by giving you this set value right so all you need to do is very simple to use this all you need to do is say set value oops uh, set value and you basically call the name so in this case post body and you pass in the value right so i'm going to do this a few times for post image post title da, 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 all that kind of stuff and what i want to do guys is i want to actually i'm going to do all of this in one go and if it works i want to make this the big winner for the 1000 likes right so i'm going to go ahead and quickly implement react hot toast which is a notification library and i'm going to basically make it that when it's submitting we have feedback so react hot toast awesome library all right, we're going to go ahead and import this right now. Uh, make me a toast. These awesome things, right? So let's go ahead and actually add it into our app. So yarn add React Hot Toast. Let's go ahead and pop that in. Jay saw out the chat. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and pop in like so. Oops. Um, yarn add. Oops. Oh my God. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> um, why am I not copying lately? Let's do this back here. Yarn add React Hot Toast. Yarn add React Hot Toast. And then I'm going to go ahead and basically you just need to put this toaster in at the highest point in your app. So what you need to do is go over to your app.tsx and over here, I want you to simply put in the toaster. It doesn't really matter where you put it here. It's just at the highest level. Okay. The toaster goes in. Now you can start putting things inside of your app. Okay. So at this point, what I want you to do is I'm going to show you a really cool way of having a toaster, which is essentially going to go ahead and react to the promises that are being made. So here, what I'm going to say is const notification equals toast and notice how i imported it from a react hot toast uh, dot loading this is a special type and we're gonna say creating new post dot 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 okay so this is the first thing the second thing i can do now is go down and once i've finished with all of this work right so once it's actually some finally posted i can say toast dot success 
right? Toast on success. And then here we're going to go ahead and say new post created. Right, and this will have a nice little tick associated with it. But what you can do is you can actually dismiss the old ones. We can actually replace it or swap it out by passing in the ID of the notification. Now, remember, if any error did happen, what we could do is go ahead and say toast.error. And I can say, whoops, something went wrong. And that allows me to look into it, to debug it, figure out what the issue is. And essentially, you pass in the same notification. Now, let's see if all of our logic worked we did a hell of a lot of work there guys and let's see if it actually plays off all right so are you guys ready i think i'm ready for this right we're gonna go ahead and say um is next js or is let's go ahead and say is oops whoa okay what's that okay i've got some weird thing going on here um is react js awesome all right body i think it is right subreddit react js we don't have a subreddit for this at the moment right image let's leave blank for initially i'm going to create the post creating new post okay subreddit is new it creates a new subreddit creates a new post with that associated subreddit so let's see what it did so i think it is this is the post new post was added returned back with an id of three with a subreddit of two boom let's go it worked that is sick oh my god it worked that is amazing dude First time all of that just went through. And let's actually check right now, okay? So let's go ahead and see if we actually added this in. So I'm going back to my thing, React.js. Let's go ahead and make the statement. Boom, it created it for us in the back end. That's amazing, man. And it worked first time, that is so clean, okay? So all of that happened, right? Now, if I do the same thing, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm actually gonna use an existing subreddit now. So is the post I made for React there question mark um we can say i hope so dot 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 and let's do react js create post all right let's see it using existing subreddit boom created the new subreddit idea for subreddit of two see what it did it used the it basically the first time we did it it created the subreddit then it went ahead and the second time it used the existing subreddit so all of this happening full stack development in front of you guys this is incredible how this is playing out I, i'm really enjoying this guys let me know if you're enjoying this as well we are doing awesome work right here okay so at this point what i want to do is i have no idea where the hell this come from that's just weird okay <laughs> um at this point i don't have that on mine it's weird first time i've seen that okay so and look at that a thousand likes perfect timing what is going on i'm gonna go ahead and just put our song on for a second because that's a thousand likes in the house guys oh that is so cool man all right so at this point i'm gonna go ahead you can see i got a permanent smile on my face this build's going awesome all right let's go ahead and see if i pull in all my posts let's go ahead and make a query bam look at this guys is my react look oh my god it's there is the post i made for react there is react awesome Da, da, da. all right see how it's there everything's there there we go amazing stuff right <laughs> see is react awesome is the post i made for react there i hope so literally what i just made before all right and you see how it's using my username this time okay so awesome stuff guys now what we're gonna do is actually use this information pull it into our front end and actually get the feed done and built okay and we're gonna move full speed now because now you guys have seen the flow you've seen pretty much how we do the mutation how we do the query how we do all that stuff so now we can go full speed get the feed done get the widgets done get the comments done get the dynamic routing done all that good stuff and we're already a thousand likes what that's what i'm talking about that's why i'm literally sat there for 14 hours i knew this was going to be a banger let's go all right you can tell i'm hyped i get hyped with new tech and this one blew my mind i was so happy when i was using it i literally said yeah, I, was like, I got emotional when i found out how it worked because it's that cool all right people call it sad i call it amazing i thought it was amazing how this thing worked right so we're going to go ahead and absolutely destroy this one we're going to keep taking it to a new height what amazing content this is insane thank you so much dude let's go ahead and make it even better right so we've got the post box done now the best bit i love about this is the post box is its own little neat component it's just tucked away so now we can just focus on the next bit and then the post box will do its thing wherever like irrelevant of what we, what we do elsewhere so this is what's good about low coupled code right we're going to create feed. oh alexis welcome to the papa fam special tier thank you for supporting us we appreciate you 
feed.tsx new file rfce best live stream ever let's go all right feed goes here let's go ahead and save let's go ahead and import oh this song gets me hyped up all right so at this point we're going to go ahead and pull up the feed on the screen so i'm going to go ahead and pull it over here like so feed goes here okay awesome so i'm now going to go ahead and close this out so we can go ahead and focus and we're going to build out the feed so um heading back over to index what i'm now going to do the feed is basically a very important part of all of this because it's basically how we're going to get all of our posts in right and i'm going to be using the same feed throughout so if you notice how even on my deployed application where is it gone over here right so even when i'm in any thread or post or whatever it's using the same feed component right we're just passing in a special thing that allows it to differentiate what feed to show all right so i'm going to basically be showing you how we can do all of this off of the same component that is insane okay all right <laughs> jay goes we want to see you next month oh yeah so people want to see jay i've got vlogs coming dude it's going to be a lot of fun on this channel all right so the feed is the next thing so what we're going to do now guys is we need to basically make a get all posts mutation or query sorry so get all posts is basically going to be pulling in from so let's go ahead and do i think we've already got this one down let's go to queries we need to go ahead and create a query for this we're going to be calling it get all posts this is basically going to be using the get post list function that was already actually created for us so if we go to get post list here you can see it's actually already there right so it's actually a perfect thing a use of step zen's db query looks really great we've got some good uh good help here from the guys so i can go over to my queries and i can go ahead and simply pop in the following i can say export const get posts back ticks and then in here i can say query my query and then i can basically go ahead and just pass in get post list so get post uh, get post list which is the query itself and it doesn't take anything here um and what we can do here is we can basically go ahead and request all the information that we want now i'm going to show you it gets even better i swear to god right because right now all i'm going to be doing in is basically requesting the uh information such as the body the text the post stuff but i'm going to show you how even if you requested things like comments you can use that materializer to just go ahead and let it do all the magic work and you it's, it's incredible i'm going to show you it's, it's literally so cool all right i'm going to go ahead and get the body i'm going to go ahead and get the created that image id and so forth let's go ahead and get this boom and then let's go ahead and get the title username all that kind of good stuff as well so these are all the post things okay we are going to eventually be upgrading this to get the votes the subreddit and the comments and so forth okay in fact screw it let's do it right now let's do it right now we're on such a roll let's keep going right so at this point we're going to go ahead and uh, do something pretty cool here so what we can do inside of step zen is we can use make use of something called the materializer okay so what i now want to do is i'm going to create a query which will essentially go ahead and do that clever join logic that i talked about before so imagine if i want to get all of the subreddits that belong to a post or if i want to get the subreddit information that belongs to a post how do i do that well essentially all you do here is you go to your post your type and you basically extend it right so basically i'm going to go ahead and say this we're going to have a subreddit field right and this is basically going to be an array of subreddits because basically we're going to assume that you could have been possibly somehow in uh, i mean really that should be a single but it's fine right we can do that for this one right we're gonna say at materializer so we're going to use a special thing called a materializer right at materializer and what do you do here is you pass in the following so we need to basically make a form of query which will basically go ahead and query for something like get subreddit list by the id okay so in this case we have subreddit id here so i could use this id to make a special kind of query uh, in in a sql to go ahead and fetch the information that i'm after so let's go ahead and make a query like that okay so i'm going to go ahead and show you right here so if we go down to type query i'm going to go ahead and make a new query and let's call it something like this get subreddit list by id this will take an id as an argument and basically it's going to return a list of subreddits because what we're saying is select all from subreddit where the id matches the one that i passed in so basically you're querying based on all the subreddits based on the id okay so now what i can do is this if i hit save i can show you how this works so let's go over to step zen let's go ahead and check out the queries 
And let's see, get subreddit, um, where is it? Get subreddit, um, where is it gone? Come on, Q. Uh, local schema has an error, expected, found an error, da da da. Okay, so where have I made an error? Um, it's gonna be in line 24. Oh yeah, here, so, oops, materializer. Let's actually comment this out for now. Um, we don't need that just yet. We can go ahead and first test out our endpoint and then we can go ahead and do it. And once you see the example once, you'll really realize how powerful this is, okay? So refresh, now you can see get subreddit list by ID. Okay, so imagine if I pass in that subreddit list to ID two and I pass in like the following, right? And you can do, you can combine queries, you can do loads of cool stuff, right? So if I do this, you see how it passed back the React.js and I think one was Next.js. There we go, okay? So this literally works. So we've made a query which essentially goes ahead and can fetch based on the ID that I pass in. So this is the genius part. What we're now doing is we just need to basically draw out the schema to say, this is how you fetch the information that you're after, okay? So the way that I do that now is I essentially say, um, what is happening here? Where's my battery slowly dying? That's interesting. Okay, um, <laughs> so in this case, we can go ahead and say, um, what did I do there? Um, ignore that. Okay. So what we can do here is I can go ahead and say um, subreddit materializer. And what you do is you pass in the query. So in this case, I say query should be the query, which is called get subreddit list by ID, right? Um, by ID. And then the second thing you do is you obviously that subreddit list by ID took an argument. So what you can do here is you pass in arguments. Okay, and then we pass in an array here and you can basically go ahead and just pass in all the arguments. Now, the first thing you have to do is pass in the name of the field that you're trying to replace. So in this case, the subreddit list by ID had a field ID. So what you do here is the name of that field is ID and the value which we're gonna swap it for. So the field that we're, we're basically passing in as that value is the subreddit ID here. Now, think about this guys, think about this properly, okay? What happens here to make this all work together in a really nice way is we essentially go ahead and basically have it so that, let me go ahead and check something. Uh, Jay, sort that out, please. Yeah, um, let's go ahead and hit save. Now, I wanna show you guys how powerful this really is. So I have not done anything else. I really have not done anything else special here. All I have done is told it how to go ahead and make a query if I ever need that information. So now, if I go to any of these, for example, get post list, right? So let's go ahead and refresh. If I go to my get post list, right? Now you can see if I can go ahead and request all the sort of, you know, the things that we had before. Okay, cool. I get all my, my list back. Now, if I click on subreddit, I can actually go ahead and get things like the topic, the ID and stuff as well. Bam, and look what it literally did. It now knows how to go ahead and query and fetch that inner information. That is insane. That is literally so powerful. So we can do this all day long, right? We can do it for votes, we can do it for comments, we can do it for everything. And it literally just works. Like it, it's inc it's so powerful, I swear to God. Like it takes, it might take a minute for that to sink in as to what's going on, but it really is game changer stuff, right? Like I cannot stress enough how powerful that actually is to be able to do that out of the box. Let me know if you guys are thinking that that's like good. And everyone is zoned in. Um, a little update, Jay, is good. Um, but let's go ahead and see comments, um, subreddit. Okay, awesome. So what I'm now going to do, guys, is I'm going to extend it to include the votes and the comments, and then we're going to continue on with the front end portion of the build, okay? So here I'm going to say votes. I'm going to go ahead and say this will return an array of vote, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and do the following. So let's go ahead and see this. One second. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to do votes. And then I'm going to do app materializer. And we're going to do the same thing here as well, okay? So firstly, I'm going to block this out. I'm going to do the same thing for votes. I'm going to do the same thing for comments. So I'm going to basically make these queries now so it's out of the way. We can get ahead with it. The first one I'm going to do is get votes by post ID. And it's going to be a very similar function as to what we did earlier, right? Remember, we had all these relationships that we set out to define earlier. So the, the next one I'm going to do is get votes by post ID, okay? So we've got a relationship there where the foreign key is attached. So we're gonna say get votes by post ID. We pass in the post ID and all we're doing is select all from vote table where the post ID equals whatever we passed in. Order it by the most recent posts, okay? So this is literally how we're gonna do this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this example here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and copy and this returns an array of vote. Okay, cool stuff. Go up to the top now, go to our votes. And now again, we do the same principle guys. We have a materializer. We pass in the query. We now go ahead and say, get votes by post ID. We pass in the arguments. In this case, it's an array. And the first thing we have to do is pass in the name of the field. And in this case, it was post underscore ID, I believe. Yep, post underscore ID. So in this case, don't get that wrong. The second thing is whatever field you're going to use here for yours. So in this case, the post ID is actually our regular ID field. Okay, so done. Hit save. Let's go ahead and check that. And if we have votes attached to it, it will literally just work like that. It's so powerful. I swear to God, it is actually amazing. That, that, that materializer i'm so impressed by that materializer i can't even stress enough right so we've got the votes and i'm, and I'm going to do the next one as well the comments so comments is going to be replaced with the comment and we're going to have an at materializer and this one is going to be the same thing and basically we're just drawing out a schema here so the query is going to be we're actually going to create get comment by post id so i'm going to go ahead and create a comment by post id a query down here so let's just go under here let's just pop it anywhere let's pop it here you can delete the ones that they automatically created for you it's completely up to you this is going to basically take a post id select all from the comment table where the post id the foreign key that we made earlier is the post id here now what we do is we go up to our materializer we simply go ahead pop in the get post we pass in the arguments this is where we make that connection we now go ahead and say the name of the field is actually going to be post id so post underscore id and the field that we replace it with again in our situation post id is just id awesome stuff now we have everything set in stone and we're ready to kind of progress right so now what we can do is we can actually make a def like a request here to any of this and it will just work it's so it's actually incredible how you can do that right so now if i was to even refresh here you can actually see that we've got comments and if i was to go ahead and pull these in right now we don't have a comment but we can even kind of fake this and prove it right but for example here inside of uh, our post here where we have for example let's go ahead and get the information back let's go ahead and get like a bunch of information back um so for example for post number one right is next.js worth learning i'm going to go ahead and force a comment in there so we can actually use it to test later on so let's go over to our table editor go into our comment i'm going to create a comment i'm going to force a comment into uh, post number one okay so insert row oh god it's doing this weird thing again all right so super base fix that please that's so annoying um i'm going to go ahead and pop that in over here let's do this again i love this song all right everyone zoned in this is crazy. I've never seen like the focus. We still got like 300 people across platforms and everyone is like glued in, All right? So at this point, I got the comment. Oops, okay. Comment. Hey, Din Parahu, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate the donation. So here, post ID number one. I'm gonna go and say, this is a comment. Username, Elon Musk, okay? ID will automatically be generated. Hit save. Now. This is actually already connected to a uh, thing. So it's actually, let's see, is Next.js worth learning? So it's actually connected. Now I'm going to show you the, I was about to swear that, the amazing magic behind the materializer. So I draw, I basically define the schema and now it will, it knows how to go ahead and fetch that information if I ever request it. So if I do this, bam, look at that. It literally returned back. That's the post. It's got the subreddit is next Jeff worth learning. If you see here, this is a comment is linked to the post is next Jeff worth learning. That is crazy. And now you can just go ham and build this stuff out. So now we've got all of this work in, I'm now going to go ahead and just go crazy and build out the whole UI, right? So honestly, game changer. It, it's mind blowing. It's so powerful. Their materializer, kudos to the steps and team for doing that. It, it really was impressive when I saw it. Okay um yeah it's huge huge all right so at this point now we're going to go to our feed and we need to go ahead and make a, a get our queries sorry queries and we're going to go ahead and do the get all posts now remember i said this was the get all post before right so i'm going to show you the actual get all post that we can that we can now request for right so if you just kind of pause the screen for a second i'm going to make a bunch of requests additionally right actually no i can go ahead and just pop them in at the end so it's clearer i'm going to get the comments i'm going to get the subreddits and I'm also gonna get the votes, okay? So you can see now what I'm doing is, 
the materializer will kick in as soon as I pull these in. And obviously, I'm pulling in everything here. If you don't want to do that, for example, in the GraphQL fashion, you could eventually go ahead and make this a more granular approach and basically reduce the number of things that you pull in. In this case, it doesn't really matter. We're just kind of doing it for the demonstrational purposes. But now you can see that we can do that, okay? Smash the like button. Literally almost at 1,100 likes. I cannot believe it. Keep this energy up, guys. Incredible, incredible stuff. So for the feed, let's go ahead and move forward. So the feed, we're going to go ahead and say... <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and say um, const. Oh, so basically, I need to basically fetch from the query. So I, we're going to have some stuff that's going to get returned from use query. Uh, here, I'm going to say get all posts. Get all posts. Awesome stuff. And this is going to return back data. Okay. It also returns back error, which you can use for debugging. If, if for whatever reason, it actually goes ahead and uh, has an issue, whatever, right? So I told you I was coding for 14 hours yesterday. I'm not joking. I built this. <laughs> a lot of this was built yesterday, right? It's actually nuts. Um, but this is how excited I am by it. That's what I want you guys to know. Okay. <clears throat> so at this point, we're going to go ahead and say return. Um, and here, I'm going to go ahead and do the following. So I want to essentially go ahead and say that the here we're going to have data okay so i'm going to basically okay so firstly what i want to do is i want to force type definitions in right so it's about time we started introducing type definitions i want to do something similar to this where i can basically do data dot um it would have come back in the form of the query so it would have been something like this and this would have returned back an array of type post now we don't have any type definitions yet in our code so obviously we created a all we've got all these type definitions here in the form of GraphQL. So what I'm going to do is build relevant similar ones. So if I go to package.json, I'm going to create a new file called typings.d.ts. This is called a typings definition file. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is basically I've already structured it out. I've already done the work for you guys. So basically we've got a type for comments. Okay. We have a type for vote. Right. We have a type for post. And we have a type for subreddit. So in this case, we've got the types and these are TypeScript definitions. They're just closely masking that of the ones that we have in GraphQL. Yeah. So in this case, we've got comments, vote, subreddit, post. And as you can see at the end of it, we've got the posts are just like this is essentially near, near enough mapped to how we've got it here. OK, so now we can use these. Now, obviously, you can export this. However, I've actually found that when we use this now, it actually pulls it up and it picks up on it straight away. Um, so I think it's actually a new thing. So now I see I don't have to import. It actually knew that that was coming in. Pretty cool. OK, pretty cool. So in this case, we've got we're basically now saying that this is a post. So when I actually reference it, I will get all the correct TypeScript definitions. OK, so now what I can do is I can say post dot map. And what I do want you to do here is conditionally render in case for whatever reason it's it's uh, undefined, you should handle it gracefully. So for every single post, I want to render out the following. I'm going to render out a post component and we're going to create this post component now. Each post component should always have a key when you have maps. Right? We're going to use the ID to go ahead and provide that. Right? Then we're going to pass in a post object, which is going to be the rest of the post. All right, so let's go ahead and create this post object right now. Okay, so I'm going to create the component post.tsx RFCE into that. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pass in the props. So at this point, what we need to do, we're getting loads of new subscribers. I see them flying in. Thank you so much, guys. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to keep the content coming. All right. So we've got post, which is of type post. And as you can see, we don't need to import because I think it's typings.d.ts is naturally picked up by our compiler. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool that we don't have to do that. All right, so I can now pull in my post and we pass in the props like so. And then we can start designing it. So I'm going to go ahead and just do something quickly here. So I'm going to import my post like so. And where we've got our feed now on the, the page, you can see we've got four posts. Hey, now obviously that doesn't show anything, right? So I'm going to actually make this way more useful, but that's a good starting point. That's a very good starting point, right? So now we've got create a post binary tile, da da da. So at this point, we can go ahead and create the actual post itself. Okay, so going inside the post, what we're first going to do is go ahead and say, um, Josiah says, how are you? I'm doing good, dude. Thank you very much. Right. So here we've got the post. Now I'm going to go ahead and firstly, we've got the div and inside of that, we're going to have the left hand side section. So this is basically where I'm going to use my other one as reference. So we've got the here. 
Okay, so we're still yet to build this. <laughs> um, so we've got this left hand side, which is the votes. Okay, so this is going to be for the votes. So this is a div which will resemble the votes. Then we're going to have the um, a div, which is basically going to be for the rest of the body. So here, this is going to be the header. So think about how I'm going to break this up, right? It's going to essentially be something like this. It's going to be the header of the post the sort of title and all that kind of stuff or the body of the post the image of the post and then the footer of the post okay and then this section right here is basically going to be the um the whatever i just wrote here votes yeah okay so at this point we've got this so now i'm going to say this is going to be split up into header the body the image and footer okay so we've got header, body, image, and footer. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull in my div for the header. Okay. So actually, we can go ahead and we can kind of just do all of this in one go. So firstly, I'm going to import all of my actual icons so we can kind of short line this process for the votes. Firstly, okay. The votes I'm going to have on the left hand side of this. I'm basically going to go ahead and have an arrow up icon. I'm going to have a um, an arrow down icon, an arrow down icon, arrow down icon. I'm going to have a, and then in the middle of it, a P tag. So that P tag will have the number, something like zero in for now, right? In this case, you can see we've got the number there, right? So forth. So for both of these, I want to basically go ahead and say that these are going to have the custom button, uh, custom class vote buttons, which we'll do in a second. And when I hover over it, each one is going to be colored a bit different. So in this case, one's going to be red. One's going to be blue. Okay. Now the custom buttons don't exist, right? The colors were kicking in. That's fine. Oops, not blue, uh, but the vote buttons. We need to go to our globals and we need to go ahead and add in a vote buttons custom class. And here I'm going to go ahead and style these custom buttons like so. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do is add the following styles to vote buttons width on the height of six background gray padding a one rounded a one and so forth right now obviously these aren't aligned correctly so what i am now going to do is go ahead and sign these uh assign these with a flex box flex column to make them in the right thing so flex column there we go i need things to be in the center so the way i can do that is i can say items stay in the center there you go looking good justify in the start so that will be at the top of the file as it gets bigger space between the yx components of one rounded md oh no rounded on the let's see rounded on the left side medium and i'll show you why we do that afterwards background gray 50 padding of four and a text gray 400 okay 400 there we go oh my god we got so much retention i'm actually amazed wow okay so this is looking pretty good look at that oh -hoo. nice fresh all right looking sick all right now for the p tag here this one is gonna actually be text black font will be bold for that number and the text will be extra small okay there we go so that's starting to look a bit cleaner cool now uh, for the header, let's go ahead and get this bit down. So firstly, this div surrounding, I'm going to have this one as padding of three, padding bottom. So padding all around of three, and then I'm just changing the one at the bottom to uh, padding one. The surrounding container, I actually want to style this one up first a bit as well, right? So flex cursor pointer, J sort something out. Um, flex cursor pointer, rounded um md border okay so in this case we're starting to style it up the actual surrounding thing um border is going to be gray of 300 and then i'm going to say background should be white there we go uh shadow should be shadow shadow should be small hover when i hover over it i want the border and i want the border to also be a gray of 600 okay awesome stuff so there you go we've got this nice little effect going on All right now rounded md i messed up rounded there we go okay cool so at this point we pull it in awesome stuff okay now i want to basically go ahead and for the header this is where we're going to start populating things that are going to basically be inside of it, right? So for the header, I've got the avatar. Remember, we've got that beautiful avatar component. I told you it was going to come in clutch, right? And now for the seed, 
we're actually, we're actually going to go ahead and use the post subreddit topic. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we do that. We say seed equals, remember I had the type definition which you just created. So look at this, post.subreddit is an array and then we can go in and we can get the topic. So this is what's so sick about type, uh, TypeScript, right? We're going to condition render in case it's not there, but bow, look at that, it pulled it in. All right, so you can actually safely access your stuff because your type definitions are solid. Okay, so we've got a P tag and here I'm going to go ahead and have a, so this is basically where I have that funky sort of writing like this. Okay, so the way you kind of do it in um, inside of, um, inside of a uh, reddit is you have r forward slash which is regarding the subreddit and then we actually go ahead and have the post so in this case it'd be post dot subreddit subreddit and it's going to be zero which is the first result dot topic okay and as you can see it's from next.js react.js awesome awesome stuff looking amazing right now and then we've got the underneath we're going to go ahead and have uh this little kind of we're gonna have this little dot, right? So underneath there, I'm gonna have this dot posted by user forward slash post dot username. And then you can see it says posted by Elon Musk. Um, and I actually wanna have a space after that as well. So there you go. And then I'm gonna have this special sort of time ago component, okay? So I'm gonna actually install this component right now from React time ago. So there's an awesome little library which gives us this five hours ago based on the timestamp. It's called React time ago. So it's called time ago like so. I don't know why I did that, All right? We just have to install this, right? So basically what you want to do is go ahead and install this React Time Ago dependency. So I'll show you how we do that. We go over to our code, Command J, pull it in full screen. Yarn, add, React Time Ago, bam. Thank you, Ronil. I appreciate you, dude. Almost at 1.1K likes, smash the thumbs up button. You guys are awesome, right? So it looks good so far. We have the React Time Ago inside. Right. So let me go ahead and import that in right now from into our component. And you can see we get this error. Now you might get this every now and then, where it's basically saying you need to install type definitions. When this happens, you do the following. You say yarn add dash dash dev, and then you add in the types. What this does is it only adds the types for the developer dependency, which means in the production build, you don't include the unnecessary jargon. Okay. Thank you, Mohit. I appreciate you, dude. Almost at 1.1K likes. Let's go, guys. Sick. All right. So in this case, time ago, we've now got this. Okay. Heading back down to the component, we've got post.username. So at this point, what I'm going to do now is I've got posted by username and then I'm going to do time ago. And then I pass in the date and the date here is going to be post dot created at. Oops, created at. And then you've got the time ago. Okay. So now you see that two hours ago, 57 minutes ago, 37 minutes. Oh, nice. Okay, sick. Awesome stuff. All right. So this is looking good. And now we can go ahead and actually style that out a little bit better. So the header itself should be a flex box. It should be um, items that should be center. And we're going to say space between the X components of two. Okay. Looking better. The P tag itself is going to have text, which is extra small extra small and then we're going to go ahead and say the text should be gray 400 text gray 400 hit save bam okay looking good the span around the topic should be font bold it should be text black and when you hover over it, i want it to have a link effect so i want to say text should be blue 400 when you hover and i want to underline it when i hover over it and i'll show you what i mean by this bam so now when i hover over this bit you see how we get this beautiful looking effect okay looking sweet looking sweet all right so at this point body um headers done body let's add a div all right so the div this one is going to be a padding y so class name padding y of four um we've got h2 and we've got a p tag the h2 is basically going to have the following inside of it. it's going to say post.title underneath here it's going to say post Look how it just comes together, honestly, it's crazy. This is what I'm saying, this is when you got the back end set up, it's so cool, All right? Here we're gonna say text is extra large. I will have a water break in a sec, semi bold. And then P tag, class name is gonna say margin top of two to separate itself, text small, font should be light. All right, sick. Bam, just like that. 
All right, see how we're getting there? Pretty damn good progress right now. So let me see where I'm at. Yeah, okay. We're slowly getting there, guys. We are slowly, slowly getting there. This is looking awesome. Cracking a new bottle of water right now. Oh my God. What are you doing? Good progress. This is crazy. All right, hands are getting sweaty. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Smash the like button if you're enjoying this right now. Make sure you subscribe. We are literally absolutely dominating this session. Crazy, crazy stuff. Image next. The image here where it's going to be an image. This reason why this one is an image because I can't trust the domain that it essentially comes from because we're accepting dynamic. That's why I'm not doing the image tag here, by the way. So post or image. And then here we're going to just say width is four. So let's do class name is width of four. And right now, I don't think we're actually pulling in any images. I don't believe so. Yeah, so we don't actually have any images right now. So what I could do to force this to see if there is an image change is inside of, I could sign in with GitHub, that's fine. Or oh, I could tell you what, I could just add in. We'll do it afterwards. I'll add it in afterwards. Um, let's do Reddit clone. I'm gonna add an image in. I'm gonna force an image in. So let's go ahead and copy this image address. for testing. I'm going to go to my table editor. I'm going to go to my post. For example, is Next.js worth learning? Um, so post. Is Next.js worth learning? There we go here. Image. And I'm going to pop in an image like so. Okay. Saving. Done. Uh, for a refresh. Let's just double check that it came through. Okay. Oh, nice. There it is. Awesome stuff. All right. So, a hey, there we go. Okay, we are not actually ordering it right now, so we need to fix that afterwards. But the way, the image comes in, so that's a good way of testing. The final thing, the footer of this section, is basically going to go ahead, and we've just got a bunch of repeating um, sort of icons here. So I, what I want you to do is understand what I'm about to do, and I'm going to repeat it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and firstly set up the div. So it's going to be class name. It's going to be flex space x of four. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and say text should be gray of 400. Awesome stuff. All right, 400. Good stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and say div. And this is going to go ahead and have the chat icon with the comments. Okay. Chat comments. Boom. And this is going to say post.comments.length. Right, that's basically how we get the number zero. Now for this div, I'm going to say class name is flex. Actually, what we're going to do is create a custom one called post buttons. So I'm going to go ahead into globals, create this one. So globals. Uh, post buttons is going to be one I'm going to add here. So post buttons, uh, apply. And then what we're going to do here is say it's flex. Items should be in the center. Space between the X components of one. Text should be small. So text should be small. Font should be semi bold. There we go. Hit in the good stuff. P2. Make it a bit bigger. When I hover, the background should be gray of 100. The cursor, I want to be a pointer. And I want to be rounded on the edges of small. Okay. Awesome stuff. Hit save. There we go. Now, when you see I hover over it, I get these nice, beautiful rounded corners as well. Okay. And this next thing that we can do, guys, is go ahead and basically copy this, but replacing out the, essentially replacing out the um, icons. So I've got to copy it out with the exception of gift icon, share icon, bookmark, and dot horizontal. Okay. So this is looking pretty good now. Now, what I want to do is... For the award, share, and save, I want them to be pretty much, see what I've done here. I've said it's hidden on the phone, but only on the small screens should it come in. So the text. So on a big screen, you see how it says the full text? So only on, after you hit the small screen and above should it show the text. Before that, it's hidden. That allows us to keep the responsive nature. Okay. So looking pretty good at this point, right? Amazing, amazing stuff. Luke says, did you go on blockchain? No, dude, I just, I'm just building a hell of a lot of stuff. But uh, thank you would be nice. <laughs> there we go, all right, so we've got the body. Um, so now that's looking pretty good, all right? Pretty, pretty nice. All right, so at this point, we can now, I think what we just have to address is the spacing between the children. So that would tend to be inside of the feed where we would tend to be naturally rendering them out. So what you can do here is uh, go ahead and say the margin top should be five push it away from the top and then space between all the components underneath there should be four just like that wow incredible actually amazing look at that we've got the ui looking bomb everything's looking good great stuff okay 
really really good stuff okay so at this point what i want to do is when i actually create a post right what it's not doing is it's not going to refetch the information so if i did something like test test in the test subreddit and i created a post it will create that post but you see how nothing's updated here so there's a special thing you can do which will basically force a refresh okay so i'll show you how to we can do that right so if we go to our post box component what we can do is we can actually go ahead and make a refetch come in okay so at this point i'm now going to go ahead and say the following so where we do the add post here's where the magic happens you can pass in a special thing inside of the use mutation hook and what we basically do is we say refetch oops refetch queries and what this does guys is it passes in a array okay now what you can do here is basically remember how on the feed i'm doing get all posts so what i'm basically going to say is refetch the get all posts and because we're using this special hook right all you need to do as a second argument is post in the actual query name as well okay so query name as well so now you can see it's going to refetch get all posts uh, whenever we do an add post and basically because we're using hooks it knows that you're using it over here so it's going to trigger a refresh over there as well so let's give this a try okay so i'm going to go ahead and firstly so you see test is down there so let's go ahead and say firstly i want to change that as well so let's quickly make it so that it orders but what i want to do as well is when it does the fetch i need it to order as well i, I would like it to be ordering um so we did actually we've actually got get post list so what i'm gonna do here is inside a post rest sql where i've got get post get post list right now i'm just using the db query what i'm actually going to do guys i'm going to replace this with my own query All right so here i'm going to say i want to replace this with my own query i'm going to use a cool little kind of you know join here so joins are relational database stuff i'm going to say select all from so what i'm actually i'm going to pop, pop, pop it in and i'll show you guys what basically what i'm saying so I'm going to pop this in and you can see now it says select all and, and basically the post ID. So select every field and then the, make sure the post ID is retained as the ID from post ID. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically connecting in the subreddit, right? So you could do this or you could actually just order it to be fair. You can actually just order it because um, we actually got the, the additional connector already there. Okay, so we don't actually even need to do that. Yeah, we've got the materializers. So we can actually just do this, right? So what I can actually do now is go ahead and say select all as, uh, we can get into that. Select all from the post. Order by, order by post created app descending, okay? So now, if I do my refresh, let's see if it worked. Um, there we go. No, so I haven't got my order by, it hasn't refreshed, that's why. Dun, 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 dun okay there we go let's go ahead and do it and there you go see how the new ones come to the top now because we're doing order by so you see the order by post created at descending that's basically where we do it so now i'm going to show you how all of this works so i'm going to say this is a test boom it refreshed and i'm basically going to do it inside the test subreddit right so create post wait for it hey look at that sick that is so cool see how it refreshed because it did a force fetch on the other one so 1.1k likes just at the point of time when it was needed oh that is clutch that is sick all right this is amazing guys so we have this up and running the next thing i want to do is have it so that you can click into the the actual subreddit to go into the subreddit page so i'm going to go ahead and do that now so we've got this up and running and i will also even have this top community section over here as well so we're going to have this firstly all right and then we basically got this subreddit page and then we're also going to have the commenting page with the loader right so we've got lots of stuff and we've also got the incrementing and decrementing logic as well okay so lots of stuff to come but don't worry we got this okay so i'm going to go ahead and make it so when i click into this um it's going to basically go ahead and pull me into that page so firstly the thing that we need to understand is in next.js we have page routing based on this right so i'm going to basically create a structure here where we're going to have a page root called subreddit okay so inside of the page folder click index click new folder at this level we're going to click subreddit and here you can create something called a dynamic wildcard basically where you can basically have topic.tsx and this will mean that imagine you had a url like forward slash so www.blah blah blah forward slash subreddit 
forward slash next JS. This will basically support that. And then this is the topic. So you can use that variable in your code. Okay. RFCE. Let's go ahead and do that. And this is basically going to be known as the um, subreddit page. Okay. So this one is going to be known as subreddit page. Okay. So at this point in the subreddit page, I want to do a couple of cool things, right? So firstly, I need to get that query parameter out of the URL. So what I do is I basically go ahead and say, get me the query from uh, use router from next router. And what we can do here is we can actually pull out the params. Um, so I believe it, no, it's the topic, sorry. So the topic, whatever the name of that is. So in this case, topic, so in this case it's topic. Okay. So no, no, it's crazy, right? It's actually incredible how many likes we got. Someone said you should build this for a pub fam. I know, right? We can actually do this, right? So now at this point, I'm going to have a div inside here. And I'm going to start building it out. So first thing I'm going to have another div. I'm going to have an avatar inside of here. This avatar is basically going to go ahead and do this. The seed in this case will be, the seed for the avatar will be the post, okay? So it's going to be another topic, sorry. So a topic. And it's going to complain because seed is basically, the topic could be a, a one of three values. So we just say, cast it to a string. And then we're going to say, this is also a large image. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. What's going on? Large image. Yeah. Um, and now what I want to show you is if I go to forward slash subreddit, forward slash next, let's just do forward slash test because we already have something up there. Now you should see, bam, we're on this page. Okay. So pretty cool. Now over here, what we're going to do, uh, <laughs> then we're definitely going to use the proper platform then. So it's like, I know it would be cool, you know, I'm actually tempted to do it. Um, so we've got that div. Now we've got a div under here. So we're going to say we have a H1 inside of this one called welcome to the r forward slash topic subreddit. Hit save. Boom. And then we're going to go ahead and have a P tag under the H1, which is going to go ahead and say uh, our topic. This is basically like the UR, UI part. Okay. So something like this, our forward slash topic. This is how it's all rendered on the, on the Reddit side. Okay. Cool stuff. Looks good. So at this point, I mean, it doesn't look good. We need to make it look good. So the surrounding div, I'm going to go ahead and give this a class name. So div, um, I'm going to go ahead and say class name. And here we're going to go ahead and say that the JSX is going to be a height of 24. I don't know why I've done that. This one BG red of 400 and a padding of eight. Okay, cool. You see what we're doing here? We're basically making this screen. And then what I want to do is I'm doing a, I'm going to do a couple of tricks here to make it like look kind of cool. So I'm going to do ma minus margin X of eight, uh, margin top of 10 and background of white. Okay. So trust me, just bear with me. It will look good. I promise you. All right. So here we're going to say MX auto flex box max width is five XL items should be central space between the X components of four and padding on the bottom of three. Okay. And then that's actually not what I wanted to do. Um, I made a mistake. This is actually in the wrong div. So firstly, my avatar. So I've got the top one. I've got my next one. Um, and then I've got another one. I've got another one. Okay. So oops, I made a mistake. So this is, it should be wrapped in a div. This should be minus margin top five. There we go. Awesome stuff. That was it. No stress. Um, this H1 is going to have a padding on the Y axis of two. And we're going to go ahead and style out the H1s there. So we're going to go ahead and say this one is text three XL. Uh, font is semi bold. Genki says, I'm selling your skills course. Will be there more content in the future? Yes, bro. Hundred percent. I'm literally in the process of dropping more content. So text SM, text gray. Uh, as you can imagine, I'm trying to pump out content like no tomorrow. So I'm trying to do a lot, bro, for you. So at this point, we've got this looking kind of cool, but we need to actually put in the this is wrong. This should be around the entire div. There we go. Yeah. So I just shifted it around. So there we go. Oh, that's our structure. So if you got confused there, it should be that level, three levels in. Then you've got this div. Then you've got this div. There you go. Okay. And now it's that. That's a lot better. Yeah. That's a lot better. Okay. So welcome to the test subreddit. Awesome stuff. 
and then underneath all of this we're going to go ahead and have a div and this div is going to go ahead and have the post box post box and it's going to have the feed inside of it and we're going to customize these and i'll show you how we're going to customize these shortly so firstly i want to just prove a point that it will work in the way that we expected it to so you see it actually loads out quite nicely um the only thing that i have messed up here is i didn't actually put the styling over here so class name mx auto that's because we're going to apply a max width of 5xl uh, margin top of 5 and padding bottom of 10 so when you scroll down you've got some room but check this out yeah so right now this subreddit is actually pulling in everything it's pulling in all of the uh the posts right but already look i mean like it looks damn good right it actually looks very good already right so this is already looking kind of clean right so you see here looking very nice yeah uh, we just need to add a bit of spacing towards our post um margin top of this 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 max width padding bottom of 10 um there we go margin top 10 max 8 okay so i think what i've made a little mistake on here is also a case of this so margin top let's give it a bit more is it not? no that's fine all right we can mess around with this afterwards okay so at this point what i want to do is oh okay so it's actually just because of my icons a little bit bigger than i thought all right so i've made a mistake here somewhere on my top bit but that's fine we can fix it afterwards right, that's why it's slightly touching in there so that's that's why i don't i don't want i don't like the look of it it's bugging me i can fix that anyway so afterwards um it's still sticking it looks kind of cool right but i want it neater so if you start typing in you can still create a post okay anyway i'm getting off topic so this right now i needed to only show the subreddit stuff right but you see what's awesome here and i also want to have this subreddit field not appear if we're already in the subreddit so i'm going to show you how we can crack this problem now so first thing you want to do is we're going to basically upgrade our post box and upgrade our topic so we're going to upgrade the post box to pass in a subreddit prop this is going to be a topic as a string casted and then we're going to go ahead and upgrade it so our post box can take this prop so what we're essentially going to do now is we're going to go ahead and say that this accepts props subreddit we need to define what the props are so here i can go up and say type props equals uh like so subreddit string um, and it's also going to be an optional value. It doesn't have to be there. <laughs> Pabby just says, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, I yeah, say. It's not a bug, it's a feature. All right, so at this point, looking kind of cool. Um, now for the subreddit, we need to basically go through our code and basically essentially where I was checking previously for to check if the subreddit already existed. Instead, now I'm going to say, check if we passed the subreddit in already. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say the following. So I'm going to conditionally check on that. So it's going to prioritize my part prop that I pass in first over the other one. And then what I need to do is I need to go ahead and where I've got my placeholder, I'm going to update that. So this was actually Jay's idea. I'd, I'd done it last second and it was a very nice addition. So thank Jay for that. All right. So here we've got a session and then I'm going to say if you passed in a subreddit, then I'm also going to go ahead and say the following. I'm going to say it should be um create create a post in r dash subreddit subreddit there we go and then i'm also going to go ahead and hide this subreddit field if you passed it in so this one right here we're basically going to go ahead and say it should be hidden so only if there is no subreddit prop should you render in this all right, so this one here so cut up in bam okay so now what i've done is i've passed in the subreddit and that's literally going to be auto filling in some degree to this bit here so let's see if that actually worked i don't think it did for a second so okay so we broke something so subreddit's not being passed in so first debugging step is to go ahead and double check if i'm actually doing what i said i thought i was doing so console log subreddit see if we pass it in so this is a live debug right now so I'm going to go ahead and see undefined. Okay. So undefined means we're not passing in the subreddit, hence why it's not working. Okay. So that's our big problem here. So wherever we're rendering this in, so it's going to be inside of our topic page. Here I didn't save the file. That's the problem. Hit save. Now you can see it actually gets that value. So if we see here, test came in inside a post box. So we can see that that is now here. 
okay so now what we should be able to see is that if i post here it will be posting only to the subreddit that we're actually inside of okay so in this case if i go ahead and say this is a test papa farm and i hit create post now what you'll see is this is a test papa farm got posted in the subreddit for test awesome stuff right really really nice okay um amazing stuff Oh, Universe Code says, today the project is React Helm with TypeScript and for the first time, Tips and GraphQL Super and I say it's a developer and a YouTuber. It doesn't get, it doesn't exist channel of this. Thank you so much, brother. That's huge. Guys, we're almost breaking 1.2 thousand likes. Oh my God. All right, keep going, guys. We're getting there, okay? So at this point, we're doing this. We now need to upgrade the feed, okay? So we're moving at a very good speed. The feed now also has to accept something, okay? So at this point, if I go to my topic, um, this page and I'm going to go ahead and upgrade it so I can say pass in a topic okay now the topic will get casted as a string value awesome stuff now we obviously need to upgrade the feed so go into the feed and we now need to basically introduce props okay so the type props we're going to have a conditional topic this is going to have the topic which gets pulled in like so we cast it to props like this now what we do is I'm going to basically for my query here I'm going to say if there is no topic then I want you to use the query to get all the posts. Otherwise, I want you to use the query to go ahead and get all posts by topic, which I haven't actually created yet. So I need to go here. I'm going to do get all posts by topic. Now, do we have a Postgres SQL uh, command that does this? Let's have a look. Okay. So if I go ahead and check, I need to basically go ahead and create the following thing. So I don't think I have it right now. We haven't created it yet. Okay. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and create a post list by topic. So what we're doing is we're going to do a nice little kind of um, get post list by topic. Okay. And what we're doing here, guys, is I'm going to pass in a topic which returns type post. And this is actually going to be the following. Right. So I'll explain this as I pull it out on the screen now. So we're basically making a query and what we're doing is select all and prioritize the post ID as the ID from post. This is where magic happens. This is where essentially not magic, but this is where that relationship between foreign key and primary key happens. We're saying join the two tables where the primary key and foreign key match. So subreddit on subreddit ID is equal to the post dot subreddit. So this is basically saying join this primary key. So the subreddit dot ID to the post dot foreign key. So post dot subreddit ID where and then we're basically querying for where the subreddit topic is equal to the one that I passed in. Okay. So this is basically going to say like, it's going to query for all the next JS or forward slash test and that, and then order those things accordingly. So now we've done this and created this. We now need to create a uh, query to correspond with it. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and do very similar to what we did for get all posts. But essentially the same call, except we're calling a slightly different thing here. So if you pause here, you'll see it's get all posts by topic. And then we're basically doing the same thing, passing in, but this time we're passing in a topic. So very similar, but we're passing in a topic. And then we call that special function that we just kind of went ahead and created. And we're basically requesting the same information. I'm going to make it more neater though. I like how I returned it here, All right? So basically returning the same information. Okay, so in this case now, we've got this get all post by topic, which we can now actually go ahead and do some cool stuff from. So let's see this. We can go ahead and pull this in, import the GraphQL query. And then if I go back into my feed, what's really cool now, guys, is I need to go ahead and pass in the variable here as well. Remember, don't forget that the variables in this case is the topic, right? So topic is actually going to be the topic that we passed in. Okay, so why is this freaking out? Um, it's because we've got use query. Um, okay, use query. Let's see, variables, topic. It just wasn't fast enough with us. Okay, so we do that. And now you can see basically it's saying if you didn't pass in a topic, just get all the posts. If you passed in a topic, use that in the special query. Now, the only different thing that we have to do here is prepare our posts. So basically, remember the data comes back based on the query that you done. Hence why the original one was get all posts or get post list. So here what we do is we say, if there is no topic, then I want you to get data from the object, um, which is basically going to say 
uh, get all get post this so it should be getting this one otherwise the data will not be located there it'll be located in the other query which is called get post list by topic now with that said we are literally already done with that bit so i swear to god this will work right look at look how incredible this is look at that now inside of this subreddit it's only showing the test stuff and if i do next js it's only showing next js stuff and if i do react js it's only showing react js awesome nice okay really good stuff now i'm gonna make this even better guys so what i want to do now is firstly that is bugging me so much that header all right so i want to go ahead and fix that quickly so um where is it going um i can fix that in a second let's go to the header uh where i have my image right now where the heck is that thing where is that uh sticky top flex items center yeah there you go that's nicer fresh okay that's looking clean okay so now what i want to do is i want to add some um some links around the rest of the app okay so basically i want to add a few links so you can essentially click through to a subreddit and so forth right so the first one should be if you click on the top left it takes you back home okay so let's go ahead and fix that bit so i'm going to introduce the next link component from next now this will introduce an issue about forward ref i'm not going to teach you how to fix that one today but it's actually very easy you just introduce the forward ref to any component underneath the link uh, and that will actually fix it so in case you see that error that's why um but we, we, it's very easy to do okay so around this image now i want to basically introduce the link and i'm basically wrapping and what's really good about the next.js link guys is if it's seen on the page next.js will prefetch that page if it sees it so essentially it's prefetched that page so it's actually really fast at loading it so notice how it took me back to the page the home page so that's really cool next thing i want to do is wrap this one so it'll take me to the subreddit okay so at this point oh nice awesome stuff jade screenshot that i think um Oh no, it's just it basically it's saying it's awesome. Right, so I'm gonna basically, when I click on this, it's gonna go ahead and take me to the subreddit, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna go to my post and you see how everything's like componentized, it's so much cleaner, right? So I go to post and what I do now is I want the whole post to essentially be a clickable a link. I kid you not, I want the whole post, right? So I wanna basically make this whole post a link. So what we do here is I basically, I'm gonna be wrapping the entire thing right so i'm going to say link oops link and then i cut this out i go right to the end i'm going to wrap it in the closing div and then here i'll say href equals and i want this be to be a ref towards or backslash post forward slash post id so actually that's actually if you click on the post itself so we haven't actually built that yet but i'm going to introduce that link at the moment anyway um, but I actually want a nested link inside further. So underneath the avatar, if you clicked on, remember that span here where it shows the topic in bold? I'm basically going to introduce a link here. So I'm going to say link. And then this one is going to have this, right? So basically, if you were to click that link, then it will go ahead and take you into forward slash subreddit. So subreddit forward slash uh, and it's going to be post dot subreddit zero because remember it came back as an array dot topic and now this will take you to through to the subreddit and obviously we're doing the hover underline so it looks like a link okay so we messed up um okay multiple children will pass the link with href subreddit test but only one child is supported okay so where did we screw up um let's have a look so um da -da -da more than one child so let's have a look it's not this one it's actually going to be this one i believe yeah so it's actually this one so what i did wrong here was that is actually not supposed to be there yeah believe it or not that counted as a second child so be very careful guys so what you want to do is if you're on that space you can throw it in there if you really want it yeah, but do not include that because it will confuse it will be very hard bug to spot i just know that based on experience right so now if i was to click into these look react js boom welcome to the react js thing click this oh nice and we haven't actually got the post seven page to complete yet but now if i was to go ahead and click on like on next js boom we get the subreddit for next js amazing stuff right 
amazing 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 stuff isabella said you're giving me massive nostalgia so much of a software engineer all of this paperwork about bugs missing stuff oh no don't worry about it you can jump back into it any point all right so this is looking amazing right now we've got subreddits implemented awesome awesome stuff quick water break right now thank you jay for reminding me all right guys almost at 1.2k likes killing it let's go same tea looking beautiful thank you dude <laughs> i don't know what to say to that but thank you um okay so posted at this point looking good we've got this looks quite nice and now what i want to do is that's all good i mean it's frustrating me what the heck is is what is bulking that out a little bit i mean let's just go fix it right because i'm not gonna sleep if i don't fix that uh, so the header is basically being bulked out by something um and i don't know what it is and it's bugging me um it's only on the larger page that it does it so um, i think i've got something incorrect with my I, mean, I don't want to spend too long on that it's a very small little buggy thing oh you know it's great it's going to be in the code in the repo so it's fine basically that header is just sticking out a little bit which is causing that little overlap but it's fine i can live with it if you really want to fix it quickly you can go to your sticky component down here and just change this to be sticky like 20 if you want there you go that's actually fixed it nicely it just kind of reduces the drop down but that's all right we can do that all right got our test there we go nice stuff okay good stuff all right so the subreddit's done now we're going to do the actual page itself so post you see how it's 404 page not going to be found but that's fine um we're going to go ahead and actually do that and then we've got the upvote logic we've got the comment logic um we have a few disabled logic things for example if i sign out if i sign out right now you see how it's signing into post still works in that same way amazing right so everything is still working in the way that we wanted it to so let's quickly log in will you add time to the video yes we will okay okay so at this point smash the thumbs up button guys still 300 people are watching what the hell crazy that is amazing guys thank you all right so at this point let's go ahead and keep the momentum up so I want to have it so when i click into a post right we're going to load that page up and then we can go ahead and proceed to do the rest of it so if i go ahead and click into a post we're going to have the folder structure like so go to index add in the forward slash post page which is a folder then it's going to essentially be um post id so post id dot tsx okay now inside of here what we're going to do is basically have our rfce so rfce and we're going to call this one the post page okay post page oops post page okay awesome stuff and then inside of here now we're going to need a few things i'm going to need the router so we might as well get it now we're going to say use router okay cool pull it in so forth um we are going to be using form data in here as well um and we are going to be having an add comment functions as well right so i'm going to go ahead and firstly do the demonstration so um at this point we do get a post from we're gonna to have to do the following so i need to basically get a post by post id at this point so you could even implement service side rendering here but i'm going to just show you the first way there's enough builds on my channel that show you how to do that um so we're going to firstly do get post by id so i'm going to basically make a query here called get post by post id and it's going to look something like this get post by post id and we're going to basically need to go ahead and do this so this essentially is the same body that we're basically fetching in except i just need to make a request in our back end for this get post list by post id okay and this is going to take a post id and then we're going to export it okay so i need to create this in our postgres sql graphql docs and we don't have that at the moment okay so over here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and find so basically this is a very simple thing we're going to do here we're just going to go ahead and make a post by get post by post id query and this is basically going to take a post id which is of type id and it's non-nullable it's going to return a single post okay and what i want to do here is i'm basically going to say select all from where the following okay the db query select all and prioritize the post id all right so we don't actually need that as well we don't actually need that we can get rid of that we can say select all from post where the post id is equal to one okay 
So this way, what we're doing is essentially passing in a post ID and it's just filtering out based on whatever one that we want. Okay. So at this point, we've got this access to our GraphQL schema. We can now use this on the front end to make the call. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Somebody said, are you going to add testing? Dude, like it's such a big build as it is. <laughs> I'm moving at the speed of light to get this done. Um, post ID down here. But it's a good suggestion, but not today. No. Um, so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say const um, use mute. No, it's not yet. Use query. So use query. Um, no, sorry. Const object equals use query. And then we're going to pass in get post by post ID. And we're going to import our, um, there we go. Get rid of this. What the heck is that? And basically I pass in variable here. So I pass in the following. I say variables. Uh, and the variable here is going to be post underscore ID. And it's going to be router dot query dot uh, post ID dot post underscore. Oh, there we go. Dot post ID. Okay, cool. Hit save. Now for this bit, it's going to go ahead and say the following. It's going to say data. Now this does give you three things back. So it gives you loading, error, and data. So feel free to use them, but I'm not going to use those today. I'm just going to use the data. Okay. And what I'm going to be focusing on guys is essentially getting the post out of this. So here, before we do the return, I'm going to say const post, cast it to a type of post equals the data optional chain in case it's not there. And remember the query name is because it's going to be inside of there. So here post, that's how I get access to the post object. Okay. Now I'm going to render out a post on the screen and I'm going to pass in the post like so. Okay. And here I can simply go ahead, import in and it takes that and handles it. So if I was to click into this now, let's see what happens. If I go into this test, there we go. Cannot read property and undefined reading post ID. Okay. So post.tsx failed us post.tsx post.id. Okay. So where is this happening? Link post. Firstly, interesting. Let's see post.id. So it should have been in there. Um, but let's actually do a optional chaining. There we go, because it may not be. Oh, okay, so we're not actually protecting ourselves. Oh, no. Okay, so this is the reason why this happens. So right now, the fetch is happening on that page. So you can either A, server-side render here, or you can introduce a loader. Now, I want to introduce a loader just to show you the fact that you can do that. So basically, the way you can do this is I'm going to introduce this nice loading library from UI ball loaders. So Jay introduced me to this very cool library. So we're going to go ahead and install this right now. So loaders UI ball and all you need to do to get this up and running is a yarn add. So let's go ahead and say yarn add UI ball loaders. So let's go ahead and do this and chuck it in here. So let's go ahead and log this in. This is a song and a half yarn add. Um, oops. Let's change this to yarn add UI ball loaders. Cool. And that's going to install that. And then we need to import the actual thing. So I'm going to use this one called jelly. I like that one. And essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say, if there is no post yet, which is going to be loading, right? So I'm going to say, if there is no post, so it's defensive programming, you can actually get rid of this with a server side render. That's literally the point of Next.js. Um, so you can get rid of that if you want. I'm just going to give you options here. So div, and I'm going to basically say, render out the jelly. Right, so this jelly component, quite cool. And I'm gonna say the size should be 50, 50 color should be the Reddit color. And I've already got the Reddit color here. Okay, awesome stuff. The Reddit color looks good like this. All right. So this div right now, I'm gonna quickly style it. I'm gonna say the class name is flex with the full, so it centers across the screen. Item center, justify center as well, padding of 10, and the text should be extra large, okay? Cool. Now let's go ahead and have a look what's going on. So you can see it no longer freaks out. Okay, so let's have a look at what actually happens. So if I was to click on a new post, see how it loads, and then it, the image popped in. So that's because what's actually happening here is if we go to the topic now, it's doing this prefetch before, no, sorry, not topic. If it goes to the post ID, this one, it's doing this prefetch. And while it's doing the prefetch, post is undefined. So basically we're saying, while you're undefined, load up a loader and then it will pop in. Okay, so you can go ahead and do, um, 
what's it called the rest of it a lot of you asking for testing guys i think i don't think you realize how much coding is happening right now right like to have to make this happen in this amount of time is incredible <laughs> so i'm just saying that in my own sense right it's, I'm, I'm impressed with myself for keeping going this long um but yeah okay we will introduce this at some point all right so post page i always listen to you guys so don't worry i got to you guys all right so the div that surrounds this now we need to introduce the max width constraint because it looks strange we're going to say mx auto my7 to push it away from the top and max width of 5xl hit save now you can see we've got our nice little thing here if i go into the react you see we've got this awesome navigation between all our things loads up the individual now i want this to essentially be the actual thing now so if i click into this we're going to have a comment feature with these nice beautiful comments all right and then we've got to do the upvotes and then we are gucci all right so let's go in. rohan makes says hey so let's keep the girl going let's go thank you dude all right so post um here let's go ahead and build out the rest now so we've got div so quite a bit to do here so we've got div um and we've got a p tag and i'm going to basically say comment as so let's just go ahead and start building it out i'm going to say comment as span I'm gonna basically span the user. So we need the user's logged in state. So I need the session. To get the user's logged in state, we basically go ahead and say data and rename it to session because that's more easier to nice or nicer to work with. Use session. Go ahead and import this in. Comment as JSX session dot user dot name. Cool. And then I'm basically gonna go ahead and see. There we go. Now you can see it's starting to pop in. Um, okay now i'm gonna do a little trick here i'm gonna show you what i did it's kind of a cool little trick it's a little bit hacky but okay yes uh i think it's pretty cool um so text should be small here i'm gonna make this one be actually margin top of minus one i'll do that trick after i'll do rounded rounded bottom medium border border on the top of zero border gray of 300 and the background white so essentially what i'm doing is i'm going to go into the existing container and i'm basically going to start it up as i as i need to padding left of 16. so you see how i've done here right i've essentially kind of going into that one and i've basically rounded off the corners and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to say minus margin top of a one so i'm basically going to push it up into that old one and then you kind of get this kind of effect well, I know it's gonna, the hover isn't, is, isn't perfect. You can always even get that bit right if you really wanna go that far. But I'm basically gonna do this kind of effect. So that's what I've basically done here. So you can reuse it and it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of nice, right? Obviously you can make it even better if you want, but time's limit, right? So at this point, we've got the P tag. That's looking good. I'm gonna say comment as class name text red 500 is a nice little UI that they have. Comment as this person. And then underneath we've got a form okay now this form is going to have some text area we are going to be using react hook form here um so we've got a big text area and then um i can go ahead and get rid of this i don't need this right now okay text area self-enclosed component um we're going to do some styling around it height of 24 rounded md border border should be gray of 200 uh, padding to 200, not 299, padding to um, padding left of four. Outline should be none. I don't like the outlines. And then disabled, if I have it disabled, for example, if you're not logged in, I'm going to gray it out with a value of 50. Awesome. All right, placeholder. James Steps is great. What's up, dude? Thank you for tuning in. All right, so at this point, the placeholder should say we're going to do some jsx and i'm going to say if there is a session then it's going to say what are your thoughts All right we're going to get philosophical on this yeah otherwise it's going to say please sign in please sign in to comment don't okay so what are your thoughts and if i signed out it would say please sign in to comment you can trust me on that All right and then we're going to disable this build if there is no session so that way we're preventing someone from actually and like accidentally or you know they shouldn't be submitting where they shouldn't be doing it All right we're going to hook up react hook form after i'm going to do a button underneath saying comment this button is going to be type submit so type submit type submit and class name do you know what i'm thinking about right now it's literally sushi crazy <laughs> all right bg red i just thought i'd share that uh i can't wait to have some sushi p3 uh font semi bold if you're ever wondering where my brain's at there you go text white 
disabled, I'm gonna disable this button if the user hasn't entered any input and I'll show you how to do it. Hit save. There you go. And what you do is, uh, I'm going to use the watch thing on the React hooks, right? So it's going to make it super cool. Oh, Maya's in the house. Hey, hello. Yeah. Um, so at this point, we've got the comments looking ugly. It needs to sort out. So the form, we have the class name, flex, flex column. And I'm going to do max width of 5XL. Bam. And you see, it looks way better that way. All right now the button should not be touching the top so i need to fix that as well i don't think i've got space in between them. yeah I, that's what i forgot um actually i've messed that right up it shouldn't be flex column it should be uh, it should be flex column but we should do space between the y-axis of i like this song space y of two there we go uh oh yeah <laughs> jay's <laughs> jay's met my uh, all right, so at this point you can see, look, pretty nice, right? That's looking pretty good. Let's hook up the React hook form to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in React hook form, like so. And I've got a second example here of how we can pull in our type. So remember, you need to actually cast it with a type. So in this case, that is gonna be known as the comment field. That's what I'm gonna recognize it as. And then this little snippet is our helpful snippet that we get from the docs over at use form as in at react hook form so in this case we get the red same thing we did before in the previous example except now we're passing over oh god now we're passing over form data okay good stuff and um okay nice so we've got this i need to now connect my form up so handle submit we're going to create a little helper function in a second so i will do that in a minute um but yeah so i'm going to show you another way you can do it as well so form here you can actually say on submit equals handle submit and then create a function called on submit okay so over here if i create a function called on submit so i showed you another way earlier but this is another way you could do it as well and then you can create an on submit function with a special type called submit handler and that will take your form data so this is just two ways of doing it you can pick whichever way you prefer i prefer this i prefer the actually the first way but there you go you can do it this way right um uh, someone is hungry yeah i know right i swear to god I'm right now my stomach is thinking about sushi right now sushi sushi wow okay um on submit right so at this point we've got the i'm gonna basically have this where we'll post a comment out and all that kind of stuff so leave that as post comment here post comment here all right uh, we've connected that up i need to register my input field so in this case bam register and the comment pops up because the TypeScript, beautiful. Uh, we've got type submit, so it should be submitting right now. So if I was to go into my on submit and console log the data, uh, that's actually the form data, right? So just remember that. So if I was to go ahead and do a 12 and I was to go ahead and say, hello world, comment, there we go. Okay, so you get the nice input there. <coughs> Rose is suit. All right. <laughs> So we got this happening now at this point we need to basically create a inserted comment mutation right so i need to basically go ahead or insert comment mutation so i need to create an add comment mutation so i'm going to go into my mutations oops mutations and we basically need to create a way to add a comment okay so i'll do it the reverse way so we've done it in loads of different orders this way i'll do it here so add a post id username text id similar principle we've keep we've done like over and over again okay um so at this point all right so we've got this jay we're pretty good so add comment um let's go and say add comment we've got gql my mutation again the name is not that important okay so name is not that important we will take a post id username text we take this username text we pass it down and we get these values back okay so Alex Camus, what's up, dude? It was great jumping into that. The retention today. And guys, bam, we just hit 1,200 likes. What is happening? Oh, my God. Jay, you seeing this? All right, we need to create insert comment over here. Oh, my Lord. Postgres SQL. This is big. Why is it a big stream? All right, Postgres SQL. At this point, um, I need to go to my... I need to create an insert comment. Um, function. This one's actually easy because the guys are of steps and made it awesome for this. So basically, you can use their DB query. You basically just have to pass in the, the params. So in this case, insert comment. You pass in post ID, username, text, like we have previously been doing. 
Um, <laughs> Fabricio, like, smash something. <laughs> I know. I need something, right? I mean, I could just blast the music up a little bit. All right, so in this case, we've got uh, insert into the comment table the values that you pass and created that ID will automatically be generated. So that's fine. Um, insert. Okay, cool. So at this point, now we can use the mutation. So I've got the add comment over here. I can get rid of this. Uh, we can go back to our code over here and let's add in the mutation. So, um, okay. So, what's really cool here as well is remember we're doing a fetch here for the actual post rendering. So, I'm going to show you how we can refetch after we add the comments. So, that way it'll refetch all of the comments. So, very cool way of doing it. So, add comment comes back from our use mutation handler or hook, sorry. Add comment we pull in. Then we're going to go ahead and do a refetch query. So basically, after I've done it all, the way that I'm getting the comments at the moment or any other data for that matter is through this get post. So if I ever do any mutation, I need to basically refetch the new stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and refetch get post by post ID. I need to then pass in the query name as well. So bam here like so. OK, so now I can use add comment. OK, so at this point, um, it got dark, but Sunny's still delivering. Thank you so much, Lucas. I appreciate you being here, man. All right, so at this point, on submit. Um, on submit, we've got the notification. Okay, so I'm actually going to do a nice little toast notification here, right? I'm going to have some, uh, so I'm going to say toast dot loading equals, I'm going to say posting your comment, posting your comment dot dot dot. And I'm going to wrap, uh, basically assign this to a notification. There we go. And then I'm going to say con. So basically, I'm going to say await add comment. Remember, this is the query. We passed in the variables. And the variables in this case are coming from a bunch of different places. We've got the post ID. That's going to come from the router. So remember, we're in the root. So post ID comes from up here. So router.query. Um, topic. No, is it um, post ID? Yeah. So it's basically whatever we named it here. And then we've got username. Um, which is going to be session.user.name and remember we optional change protect ourselves and we've got the text which is basically the data that came in dot comment okay awesome stuff um no atf uh, let's keep going <laughs> let's go um we don't want that chipmunk name yeah exactly universe has been here before when we've run through that so that's a painful process okay so the best part about this is add comment returned a bunch of data remember so we actually got that data come back now i'm not actually doing anything with that data so i'm not actually going to use it right now um but you can definitely do something with it afterwards right remember it'll come back as insert comment data um so at this point set value i'm going to set the value of my fields to blank afterwards so i'm going to set the value of comment to be back to blank and then i'm basically going to say toast dot success um oh shit toast sorry oops toast dot success equals comment successfully set up <laughs> successfully posted uh, and then I can dismiss the other one by passing in the ID, which is in this case, the notification. Bam. Oh, that was a, that was a big one. All right. So at this point, now what I want to show you is if I make this full screen and I do this and I go ahead and actually refresh. All right. So if I go ahead and show you guys what is inside of the data, so inside of here, you should be able to see. So data dot, let's go ahead and see data console log data dot am i casting it no i'm not okay at this point you should see that we get this right so inside of here we get you know comments are zero at the moment so let's have a look what's going on so in this point i say hello world comment okay so you see a comment was posted a bunch of stuff happened refetching and then we got a comment saying hello world bam comments in awesome awesome stuff all right so yeah, no cussing there. My bad, guys. <laughs> All right, so at this point, we've got the one comment. And notice how it also refreshed on the UI. So we, the way we did this is really great. Okay, so now what I can do is render out the posts, uh, the comments on our screen. Okay, so let's keep going. So we've got the um, post. Now I need to go ahead and cast my post to what we have up here. So before the return block, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say cast my post to... And this is freaking out because cannot redeclare. What have, where have I done that? Oh, I've already done it up here. Okay, my bad. So I've already got the post. All right. So in this case, I can go down underneath the form, um, underneath the div. I'm gonna have another div. 
with a horizontal row div with a horizontal row bam and underneath the horizontal row i am gonna have the post comments so post comments conditional render in case i oh condition optional chaining sorry in case i break something or in case it's undefined so comment for every single comment i want to do parentheses return um div and inside that div remember always provide a key when you're mapping through anything comment.id and then under here i've got a hr i'm gonna have another horizontal row and basically I'm, I'm gonna do some cool stuff here underneath right so i'll just do the avatar for now the seed will be the comment username so comment dot username hit save and i've got Okay, so you can see one comment was made. That is me that we got made from. So it's, it's actually working in the way I expect. So let's do a little class name, PYF2. Okay, and then let's actually start this out so we can start seeing things. So I'm gonna do the same trick here, minus margin five, rounded bottom MD. Uh, Dirk says, just dropping in to say you're a GOAT, Sonny. I'm back when the stream is over, watch it all in one go. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you so much. Right, rounded MD. So we've got border, border dot top zero, and I'm gonna say border gray is 300 BG white and padding Y of five, padding X of 10. All right, sweet. Now look at that. So I mean, I've got two horizontal lines. Um, where have I screwed up? Uh, oh yeah, so this horizontal line, I need to basically style that in a slightly different way. So firstly, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a class name. Oh yeah, that's uh, leave that one for a second. I'll come in and get that one afterwards. So underneath this div, I'm going to have the actual bit where the comment is shown. So div, um, p tag, span, inside there, I'm going to have the comment or username. Underneath the span tag, I'm going to have the time ago component with the created that. So as this person said this, this time ago, right? Import it from React time ago. Uh, you can rename that to time ago if you want. Right, so it's easier. It's a default import, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so you can see Sunny three minutes ago. And then underneath the P tag, we can have comment.text. Comment.text. Um, hello world. Hey, look at that. Sick. All right. So flex, flex, column. Uh, okay, so we've got this looking okay right now. The overall surrounding div should have a key which we've already done it should be relative because i'm gonna have some uh, absolute positioning stuff inside items should be center space x between the two i love this song this is six space y uh a five okay and for the avatar div we're gonna have z of 50 because there's gonna be a, a horizontal line which i'm gonna basically be slicing through it so i want that to be at the top um the p tag over here on top of this is going to be padding y of two text should be extra small james steph says four hours of coding you're dope thank you dude i appreciate you man four hours for you watching me so i appreciate that text gray of 400 i'm not joking when i said yesterday i was coding for literally like a ridiculous amount of time like 14 hours jay will vouch for me on that one jay tell them dude one semi bold text gray i do it for the pop fam i love to see you guys grow and learn honestly Watching from Cameroon, what is up, Division? Thank you so much, dude. Um, Papicha, compare it with YouTube tutorial, it's completely free, it's a normal one, save time, spend money, save money, and spend time, time. Exactly. That's it. That's how we move. Okay, so we've got the P tag over with the comment. I'm gonna have this one. That's actually gonna be a basic thing over there. Now, this comment right here, I think that's how I've done it. Yeah, so I've literally kept it pretty relatively minimal. The HR, now this is the icing on the cake here, right? So this one is gonna be a absolutely positioned line. And what I do here, top 10, I'm going to give it a height of 16. And look where this line is just going to be flying around somewhere, right? So I'll give it a border and look, there's a random line there, right? Now look what I've done. I've done a little kind of hacky trick here, but it's kind of cool. Z of zeros put out behind the Z50. And bam, look at that. Oh. And now if I say, yo, what's up, Papa fam? Comment. Posting your comment, comment successfully posted. Yo, what's up, Bob Fam? Nice. 
you could literally go ahead and uh, change this up if you want and basically order it if you want it. I'm not going to go to that level of detail, but basically you see two comments, amazing stuff. Comments are actually done on that note. So I can go ahead and show you guys what we've done so far. We've got this looking bloody amazing right now. You can go ahead and click into one. It loads it up. Click into subreddit, loads that up. The only thing that we haven't done right now is, as far as I'm aware, is upvotes and downvotes, which we will do right now. But otherwise, Jay, I think we are looking amazing, guys. Uh, coding with Mandy. Thank you so much, fan from yoblogger.com. Uh, appreciate it, dude. <laughs> A little plug in it. All right, thank you, though. <clears throat> okay, you guys are incredible. 1.3k likes. I wonder if we can hit it. But otherwise, we're now going to go ahead. I need to increase the ISO. It's super dark in here. We're now going to go ahead and um, we're now going to go ahead. Let me quickly just update my uh, my camera one second so it's a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the upvote, downvote. Then we're going to deploy. That's it. Gucci as that. Right? Um, okay, look at that. You can see me a little bit lighter now. Look at that magic. Wow. Look at that. Look it changes everything. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Okay, nice. Okay, so at this vote, now you should be able to see my face a little bit easier. Okay, so we've got this looking pretty nice. Um, smash the thumbs up button if you think it looks damn good right now, all right? Um, hide the comment box when the post is, the page is loaded. Oh yes, you're right, dude. You're actually right. That's, that's a very good point. Um, I don't think I did that here, did I? Um, I didn't do that here. Where? Let's click into a random one. Oh no, so I didn't actually hide it at the moment, but yeah, you can, it's very simple to do that, right? You could literally make it so if it's loading, you can do that and so forth. Um, it's your call, it's your call. You can do that if you want. Um, at this point, I'm gonna probably leave it, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's all right, to be fair. But you can, you can definitely add in. I, I see your point, I see your point. You could definitely add in that kind of, I kind of like the way it snaps in, but yeah, you do what you want, that's fine. Okay, so at this point, um, we're gonna now do the upvote downvote. Okay, so upvote downvote is inside of the post component. So let's keep the momentum strong. Post. Okay, so at this point, when we click on arrow up icon, arrow down icon, I want to go ahead and create. Thank you, dude. Someone said I'm proud to be a member of the Papa Fam. I appreciate that. So we're gonna go ahead and create a. Um, if there is no post, da da da. Okay, so we're now gonna have the uh, a function called upvote. Right, now upvote is going to be a pretty you got to bear with me on this one upvote is going to be an asynchronous function it's going to take an is upvote now the way i've basically planned this one is essentially we're going to assume that it's going to be kind of like is upvote is going to be true which means you voted up if it's undefined it means you haven't voted if it's false it means it's down Okay, so that's how we're gonna basically do this one. And then we're gonna do a bunch of cool stuff to figure out how, if, uh, if you voted or not. So data, I need to get the session for the users logged in. So use a session, awesome stuff. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do the following. I'm gonna say, if there is no session, firstly, I wanna say to the user, whoa, 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 you need to log in before you can vote. Okay, so we need to we'll do some defensive programming here. So I'm gonna basically like kick the user out and say, no, 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 you cannot vote unless you're signed in, okay? So if they try and click this and they're not signed in, it's gonna go ahead and just say like, the toaster's gonna pop up, okay? Now we're gonna attach the upvote to the buttons. So here, arrow up, we're gonna say on click of this one, it's gonna be an arrow which says, oops, arrow which says on click, oh no, upvote, sorry, upvote. I'm gonna pass in true. So you imagine you vote it up and then here I'm gonna have on click, um, upvote, uh, false, which is basically gonna be as if you voted down, okay? Um, yes, Tube says you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Um, I really like the animation loading looks lively. Yeah, I know, same, right? Um, Vision says also, when are we going for the next React Native app? Soon, soon. Uh, I'm just kind of working on a, cool, a few cool things. So we got this looking pretty nice. Now, um, oh, this is a good tune. Yeah. So now we've got, okay, if there's no, so, okay, so cool. So at this point, I'm going to keep a piece of state as well, okay? Now this piece of state is going to be used in a few different ways. I'm going to show you as we kind of progress, okay? So what I now need to do is we need to create a, so I'm going to import that. So we've got a, 
basically a minimal piece of state which in the beginning is undefined okay so this is literally going to be undefined in the beginning and we're going to use that as an example right so if i don't sort of give this a value vote is now boolean or undefined so that's fine um so at this point i want to essentially go ahead and do the following so i'm trying to think about how we can tackle this one so we need to have the add vote we need basically yeah we need a mutation for adding a vote so basically we need the ability to add a vote so i'm going to go ahead and add the mutation first for adding a vote so essentially it's going to look something like this we've done it a few times now so i'm not going to run through it all the time so we've got this is our syntax for the mutation insert vote is what we need to create inside of postgres so in our, in our schema sorry so at this point i'm going to go ahead and this is using the nice very easy syntax of uh, the the db query from the guys over at steps end so insert vote post id username upvote awesome stuff so now i can pass this in it will basically just do a simple uh simple insight into the vote table okay um you could also update it so that if you already voted it would update your existing vote but i've just done it in a sort of sequential list okay so in this case we've got that now i'm also while i'm here i'm going to do a query to, to go ahead and actually get the votes by post id okay so that's going to help me out a little bit so um get a vote by post id so queries i'm going to go to my queries i'm going to add another one for that as well so i'm going to just add it to the top get votes by post id we need to create this endpoint get votes by post id so post let's go ahead and do that now this one is essentially gonna look something like we actually created this one earlier if you remember we used it in the materializer um so we can actually i mean we could actually just fetch the other thing but we're gonna use it anyway um get votes by post id um so at this point i'm gonna i've already got this created so we can already start consuming the two things okay so we've got our post we've got the mutation we've got everything done so now what i'm going to do is start preparing things so firstly we're going to do get all votes by post id so we're going to use a query so const data loading equals use query and i'm going to pass in get all oops get get all votes by post id we pass in the variables and in this case the post id so post underscore id is post underscore id and we're gonna i'm um, sorry optional chaining to make sure things don't go wrong ricardo what is up dude thank you so much um this is looking good and then we're gonna go ahead and say um Const add vote. I need to prepare my mutation as well for adding a vote. So this one is going to be add vote equals use mutation. Uh, add vote. We're going to basically use the thing that we just prepared. Add vote. And this one is going to have a refetch command. So it's basically going to cause the above one to, to refetch. All right. So get. We need to basically pass in get all votes by post ID. So when we do a mutation, it will refetch this. We also need to pass in the query name. There we go. So now we can basically make a, a vote. We can actually go ahead and get the vote. And I need to also check now. So I'm going to make a really handy little use effect. Use effect is going to run every time that the votes change. And this is basically going to update our piece of state, right? So this use effect, if you don't know what a use effect is, we have an awesome video on the channel. Jay's going to link it somewhere around here afterwards. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and do data, which is our dependency. And that will explain how you use a use effect. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say const votes, cast it to the vote type equals data. And we're going to go ahead and essentially get it out of this fetch. So where is it gone? Data dot get votes by post ID. This is how it will come back from here. So now what we're doing is we're getting the votes and then we're going to go ahead and say we need to basically make a sort. OK, so you can do this in a few ways. That's why I've added a little kind of note here. But what we're going to do is we're essentially going to do a find function, which is an ESX find function. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and say votes dot find. And basically what I'm doing is I'm looping through all the votes and I'm setting the precedent of a vote dot username is equivalent to the person who is signed in dot user dot name. OK, so if you, if your name is found, then I want to go ahead and access your vote. OK, so it's a safe way of accessing the vote. That's why I have optional chaining. And if we found a vote, yeah, this will either be 
basically true false and the reason why we can rely on this one is because we actually set it to query based on the latest value inside of here so when we did this we did order by descending so your latest vote would have been the first to return back otherwise you couldn't do it right you'd have to do, you'd have to do another bit so then we're going to set the vote to the vote that came back okay which is going to be the upvote so there's a boolean so it'll be true false or undefined okay so at this point now we can see if that person has voted or not okay so the next thing we just need to do is basically an issue issue a vote okay so at this point upvote if you have already so i'm going to do a little a few things here yeah we're going to have some defensive programming if you've already voted okay if you've already voted and oops and sorry and you're about to try and do an upvote so it is upvote then we're going to basically stop you we're going to return okay if you've already vote so if your vote was false not false c false will check if I just did if not false, this will count undefined. I don't want that. I want to explicitly say if it's false, right? It doesn't count if it's not that, yeah? So that's what we do. Three equivalents. And if it's if you're about to try and upvote down. So basically, you shouldn't be able to vote down like three times, vote up. You should do it, do it once. So we're going to block you there as well. So you see, we're blocking you from entering at this point. And then otherwise, it's basically going to say, yeah, you are voting. So we're going to console log. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually perform the vote, okay? So here I'll say await, add a vote. And what I'm doing here is I'm passing in the variables and the new vote variables would be post ID. So post underscore ID would be post dot ID. Then we've got the username, which is session dot user dot name. And then we've got the upvote is gonna be is upvote, okay. So at this point, what is happening, right? So crazy, crazy stuff. What is about to happen now is this vote will happen, which means that the mutation goes through. The refetch queries will happen as it's included here, which means it will refetch this query, which means that data will change. And as the data is a dependency inside of a user effect, this code will retrigger and it will set the vote in our local state to be of true or false. That means we can conditionally use that vote to render what we see on the UI. Okay, I know it sounds crazy, but it is, it is what it is. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have some logic to show you the actual number here. Insane, all right? So at this point, what we're now gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, okay, that's cool. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna say this right here. So should be firstly, um, JSX. So let's do the following. So I'm going to make this into JSX, but that flow was incre incredible, right? So what, what I just explained there, that's how, like, if you know your fundamentals well, then you can see what I just did there and how we applied use effects in the correct way, right? Um, now here, thank you so much, Sanjay. Awesome stuff. Um, uh, Alex says, the dude is spending his hours here with us teaching us incredible no break like a rocket sky through spread. Well, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate the support. Smash the thumbs up button is all I ask, guys, and subscribe if you haven't already. All right. So let's see. Coding with Mandy. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, nice. Um, text red is going to be 400. So if you've already uh, done it, text 400. And then here, I'm also going to do the same thing. Um, here, back ticks, back ticks. Remind me, guys, I also need to do the. Um, What's it called? The uh, front screen, right? So here, and remember here, I'm not doing false. I'm doing vote is false because there's a difference between that and if you haven't voted, right? Text blue is going to be 400. Okay. So at this point, oh, I did upvote red. Okay. I mean, it's fine. We can keep it as that. It's all right. I just realized now I don't upvote red and downvote blue. Okay. I mean, you probably want to change that to the opposite, but it's all right. It is what it is. All right. So at this point, at least you know mine different from Reddit. So if I click this now, um, it should say, okay, so, oh, okay. SQL scan error, converting driver value from Boolean. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nasty. Okay. Let's see what happens here now. So we need to debug a bit, I think. Is upvote. So let's have a look what's going on here. Okay. So my database is being a bit weird. So let's go ahead and save my Postgres. Postgres SQL DB. So it's deploying. Uh, 
okay so at this point we've got a little bit of an error going on so i'm just going to go ahead and cut my server steps and start and let's see what's happening i just want to double check as well my database all right so looks like my either my internet is being slow or i've got a weird connection going on with steps and let's have a look okay so connecting to reddit clone let's see our table let's see what is going on GraphQL. so it's deployed at this okay so it is deployed we do have our comments we do have this we have our vote okay and let's just maybe do a refresh and see what's happening so right now we've got a bit of a funky error it says on cannot destructure eligible url patterns or something something post box is freaking out feeds freaking out so we just changed our post right so something is going wrong here so what we can do is let's debug let's check out the error here firstly now let's see what's happening so console log error is there an error here it's coming in i hope there is because i don't know what's going on okay so that's fine that one we can leave that for now okay so feed let's see um cons posts okay so console log posts okay undefined posts hmm interesting all right so let's have a look what's happening post posts okay so let's see we've got this we've got subreddit forward slash react okay so it's fetching it there seems to be an issue with my my get all posts or it's maybe to do with my url so let's actually go ahead and digest this a little bit so get post list is this pulling in my data that's the first thing yes it is pulling in my data so we know it's not that okay so that's live right now so what we can do is we can kind of break it down step by step so going back over here we can see that i'm getting literally zero posts come back in my undefined undefined post box and feed okay so why are we getting that is the question so error let's have a look console log error okay here it is scan name upvote scan error on column three index name upvote containing blah, blah, blah type boolean true to an integer of 32 invalid syntax all right so we've got an issue here so firstly i think we have some dodgy data right now inside of here so let's go ahead and get rid of this one and let's go ahead and reload okay so it was basically i'm pushing in a dodgy boolean value so that's a way of debugging it by the way All right so let's keep that in there for a second and let's go to our you guys are even seeing live debugging here so it's actually really cool um let's go to our upvote functionality and where i've got my voting going on this is where we have to be a bit careful so upvote true upvote false is upvote comes through here is upvote is upvote is upvote okay and then let's just make sure that when we vote so voting is true converting upvote name upvote converting drive value billion true to an inch of 32 so we've got an issue here where i'm trying to essentially go ahead and change a value here upvote so that's not correct so i have screwed up somewhere upvote variable okay let's go to the add vote next so this is a mutation so mutation insert vote upvote 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 postgres insert vote okay um interesting all right let's have a look 
So we've got our insert vote, insert vote. Um, um, smash the thumbs up button if you like debugging, by the way. All right. Um, especially when you're live. Whew. Tense. All right. So we've got Boolean, insert vote. Scan error on column index three, name upvote. Okay. Convert and drive value, type Boolean, true. Two and in 32 and valid syntax, right? So in 32, that's the problem that I'm thinking because us right now, and here it's gonna freak out, okay. So, scan it around country, feed 22. So feed 22, it's this fetch. Let's get in a bit freaked out. Get all posts, get all posts is being called here. Get post list. Now I did make a change to my post list. So I'm wondering if it's because I haven't joined. I don't think it is, but Let's just assume that it could be. So I'll get post list. I'm gonna change this back and I'll explain what happens here. I don't think that's that's gonna be reason for it. No, it's not, I thought so. All right, so it's definitely not that. Okay, so just ruling out things here. So insert vote, insert vote. Okay, let me just see now. So insert vote. That is the same thing. My mutations are the same thing. Yes. So then it's literally to do with my, this, when I'm adding the vote, this is basically some booky weird behavior. So my post, Lucas, thank you, dude. He goes, uh, Japan, a thousand yen. I goes, I gotta go, but I watch replay. Let me buy at least buy your beer. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that so much. All right, so we need to clean the database up to get out of this weird state. So let's refresh. And let's see, by the way, let's see what's going on. So we've got index ID two upvote true. So this value right now is strange because I mean it doesn't seem to be it's only that value that's going a bit dead. Okay, so Let's see, we still got loads of retention. This is insane. You guys are loving the debugging process, All right? Um, <laughs> it's always a, do you work on the front end team? I love that. Uh, that's so cool. Okay, so we've got this, we're getting it. All right, so add vote. Okay. So post, display votes, add vote, is upvote, is upvote. Um, voting. Okay, so I'm gonna do a double check here of something that I want to just make sure. That's no different from what I'm doing, except we return a value. This is no different to what I'm doing. Add vote, use mutation, get all votes by post ID, get votes by post ID, loading data, data comes in, error, variable, post ID, post ID, okay. Okay, and then I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's actually get back the information here. So console log data, we can say, you placed vote. And let's do data. Thank you, Giancarlo. I appreciate you, dude. All right, so let's try this now. So if we refresh, we will get the feed now because we've got rid of the dead data, okay? Now let's go ahead and try something. Let's go down here and let's do something like increment and we got the same thing there. Okay, so, so voting true. Forty nine. We never made it past our ad vote.
All right, so. Okay. Oh, da 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 da. Okay, so I think voting true. Name okay. Scan error on column index three, right? Name upvote. Converting driver value type boolean of true to an integer thirty two. Why would you be converting it to a value of thirty two? I have no idea. Um, upvote boolean. Boolean 32 in. Yes, I see that. Um, there's a difference in username, session username. You don't have a question mark after a session. Yes, session username. No, that's okay. Post ID. Only difference I do have here is my use effect is placed before, but JavaScript does hoisting, so it shouldn't affect that. Okay, so I have a feeling it's to do with. So the, the thing is, it's in this table that it's broken. So this table may not be configured, right? Let's see column type. Yep. Allow nullable. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't do that. Maybe I did that differently in my one. If I look at mine, vote, edit column. Upvote, William. Create a post ID, Boolean, username, Vaka, Vaka, post ID, timestamp ID. Such a strange issue. All right, convert and drive value type in and true to him. Okay, so let's try and do another step just to roll out. We can do type of, type of is up vote. Oh, post ID username up vote. 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 Okay. Mm. ID created that post ID upvote. I think it's because, of, yeah, so I see what you're saying is because of this true, but that's why they shouldn't be. It is a Boolean true, so that's correct. Type of as upvote. So let's do this one more time. Upvote. Okay. Yes, type boolean, which is fine. Oh wait, add vote. Okay, so is that vote? Let's try and do. If I literally set it to true, I want to see if it's if it's me or if it's the input I'm doing or if it's something else. Let's have a look. So. Do insert vote. Okay, so let's do this now. Reddit. To an invalid syntax. To in 32. But this is strange because I haven't gotten in 32. So I'm not sure what's my graph cure, my mutation. Yeah, I know, no, guys, I know it's trying to convert into an int, but where is the question? Maybe somewhere in your Polo configs to connect to GraphQL, you define upvote state. Yeah, so that's what I'm, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Int 32. Oh my God, I think I might have actually. 
Where is it gone? Hey, there we go! Let's go! I think, yes! That is so sick! Oh my god! Upvote! Here it is, guys! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! We made it! There it is! Yes, yes, yes! That is damn amazing! All right, let's check this out now. Oh, that was a big one. Yes, boy. All right, smash the thumbs up button. That was so sick. All right, we made it. See, pair programming. That's what community is about. Nice. I was wondering, I was like, my, the logic is sound. Like, what is going on? All right, let's try this again. And this needs to now be, don't make this mistake, is upvote. All right, so you guys even got a live debugging session in this one. Wow, it's been pretty cool. <laughs> okay, that is a relief. Okay, nice. So let's go ahead and hit up. Oh, there we go. And if I hit down. Oh, nice. Okay, so it's working. All right, so the votes are being pulled in. So if I refresh this, it would have had a couple of votes in there now. Yes. And it will pull the latest one as the value. If I refresh now, it will say I voted up. Yes. Okay, so now at this point, we can do the display logic. Well done, guys. Smash the like button. We don't quit. Even when it doesn't go our way, we literally got... You guys see everything. I put myself in that position so you guys see it all. Constant display votes. I'm going to create a helper function called display votes. This takes data. For now, I'm just going to cast it as any. Just trust me. It'll be all right for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass the, I, the data that I get back over here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say const display number. So what I'm doing now is essentially I'm looping through the votes that come back. I'm reducing. So this is a reduce function for every single. So basically, if you haven't used a reduce before, the way it works is you have some kind of like accumulator function, right? So I'm going to start with a number of zero in our case. And each time I get this thing called total and I get the individual vote. So I basically loop through it. Now, what I'm doing here is essentially I'm saying if the vote dot upvote, okay? So if it was true, then I'm going to say the total, total is plus equal one. Otherwise, total is minus equal one. Okay, sick. Nice. Uh, Jay, I think we're good. So total plus equal one, save. Okay, so now my display number is there. And then what we need to do is check a few things. So if nobody's voted, votes.length is zero. So if the votes.length is zero, then we have to basically return zero because no one's voted. So you need to edge case. If the display number is equal to zero, and yes, you can do this many ways. This is just one of the ways, right? There's so many ways. You can probably make this way more efficient if you wanted to in SQL, you could definitely do it. Um, but I was quite tight on time. So <laughs> return votes zero <coughs> dot upvote. So basically this is saying if the last vote that you made was um, as, wait, so one second, we'll just say if number is zero. Yeah, so if, it, if the number's on zero between the votes, so imagine if it was a, um, like loads of people had voted, you never actually get a zero value on um, Reddit. You just get a plus minus based on how many people are voting. So if the last, if the value is zero, then check the last val the vote. And if it was positive, make it one. And if it's negative, make it minus one. Otherwise, trust me, it doesn't look right at all for the UI. So in this case, display votes. Now I can render. And what I'm actually going to do here is return display number. Display number. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so display number so at this point on around where have i got my display number yeah so what i'm going to do now is say display votes and pass in my data so that's actually my posts i believe so data we actually casted data out okay nice of that so you can cast it if you want provide the value i'm just trying to do it quickly here so now minus one boom there we go nice and that actually works that actually works right so i'm not joking i've tried it out before i've tried it with loads of things but now what's really cool as well is you kind of click into it okay so this is interesting if votes is length pstss votes oh yeah here we go protect yourselves right so because <clears throat> while it's loading it could be a thing so in this case there is already a vote here so i'm gonna vote plus so there you go see there was already a vote there which we when we tested it out all right so if i do a minus now you know, it's, it's, it will know that I did a minus vote, but somebody else already voted on it before. When I was testing, I added a vote there. 
So look, look at that. And if I refresh, boom. Nice. And you can even sort based on all that if you really wanted to go that far. But what's sick is honestly, look, if I just do a couple of votes here, see, look, two minus one, and it knows what I voted on based on my user state. Oh, sick. Oh my God. This is live reaction right now. <laughs> so cool. All right, so we've got this working. Jay, this is going sick. Okay, literally, we're, we're four likes away from 1.3. We're about to implement the, the, the icing on the cake now, okay? Uh, guys, say, because you know, I graduated this year, I was an IT student, I had a project to internship recently. Right, thanks for you, I was able to do it. Thanks, man. Jay, screenshot that. Mokim Gizlan, thank you, dude. I appreciate you telling me that. That is awesome, man. All right, at this point, the final piece of the puzzle, this bit, the communities, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and implement that. Um, and then we're done. Then we're done. I'm going to deploy. All right, sick. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go to the home page. So, uh, index. And inside of the index, we're basically going to go ahead and change it up a little bit. So, index. So, inside of here, where we have the feed right now, I'm going to essentially have underneath the feed, I'm going to have a div. And I'm going to have P tag saying top communities, top communities and this is more of a gimmicky thing but it looks cool i'm gonna have a div under here and then i'm basically gonna make a fetch for subreddits right so all the subreddits are going to be listed out here so list subreddits and we're going to limit basically for a number of 10 for example now here what i want to do is i'm going to update our ui in a way that it will look pretty quirky so um, i'm going to pull that on the side so you can see it a bit so here we've got flex now here for this div i'm going to go ahead and say class name so sticky, it's going to be sticky because it's going to have this nice little parallax effect. Top 36, MX5, we're going to say margin top of five. Uh, hidden on phones, um, height is going to be fitted to whatever the contents is. Width is going to be maximum 300 pixels. Um, so it's going to basically always take up 300 pixels of space. Rounded, corners, border, Border, oops, border is going to be gray. Uh, 300, background should be white and large. We're going to inline it. Okay, there you go. So, boom, there you go. So, basically, at this point, it, only on the large screen will it pop in, but on the small screens, it's going to be hidden. Okay, so basically, I'm going to keep that there so you can see it now. And basically, what I want to do is turn that into this top communities. Okay. So, um, Ricio, we chat to popperette.com. Yeah, there you go. Reach out, Jay, I answered you. Um, we've been in Manstat tutorials. I'm trying my best, dude, to do everything in my power. And dude, 1.3K likes. What is happening? Oh my God. Jay, Manoj Pamwa, screenshot that. You got a job as a Manstat developer because it's the best video you've ever uploaded on the channel. Thanks from bottom of my heart. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much. Wow, the retention is next level, man. Oh my God. Okay. So at this point, we've got this happening. Top communities, let's get this done. So text, MD, at margin bottom one, padding four, padding bottom of three, font bold. Hit save, okay, looks good. And now let's do a very nice subreddits with limits. So I need to basically fetch. So I'm gonna add in a mutation, a query, sorry. No more mutations, queries. And I'm gonna basically go ahead and create this query. So. The query looks something like this. Get subreddits with limits. We need to create a get subreddit list with limits. Basically, I'm passing in a limit number, so it could be 10. It will go ahead and fetch 10 of the latest subreddits. So let's go ahead into my Postgres SQL. And here, what I'm gonna do is, I haven't actually created that already, so I'm gonna go ahead and create that right now. And <clears throat> what I've done here is essentially go ahead, let's go to our queries down here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. So you guys can see here, get subreddit list takes a limit, returns a list of subreddits. Okay. Now all we're doing is we're running queries to select all from subreddits, order by created at. So you'll see the latest ones and just limit the number of responses. That's literally all this is doing, right? That's an efficient SQL query. So it's going to go ahead and do that. So now we can use this on the front end to go ahead and pull in our information. So um, as you can see now, what we're going to do is go over to index. And I'm basically gonna go ahead and say const data equals use. Thank you, man. I says congratulations for 100,000, 140,000 subscribers. Amazing stuff. I'm so happy, honestly. Get subreddits 
with limit and um, we're going to pass in the variables in this case my variable here the limit is actually going to be 10 i'm just going to pass in the number of 10 okay now the data will come back right so i'm going to cast this to our value so remember just how we've been doing it previously i'm going to cast it to our value this is the query name so that's the reason why it comes back that way now we've got the subreddits here so yes right says how is he going after four hours mad lad thank you dude it's just stamina dude it builds up slowly um we're gonna say subreddits dot map okay and we're not gonna protect ourselves because it's gonna be asynchronous um, we're gonna say subreddit okay and i'm gonna render out uh, parentheses and we still got one more and what i do want to do is I actually want to get the index as well that's like the number at which it comes out and we're going to create a component another one what subreddit row and i'm basically going to go and say subreddit row and i'm going to create this component over here create subreddit row dot tsx boom rfce um and subreddit row is going to take the following things it's going to take a index so props are going to come through it's going to take index it's going to take topic and it's going to have um props so at this point it's going to be we're going to have our type at the top like this they're going to be mandatory fields because we're going to be rendering based off of those um i will be using a chevron up icon here so i'm going to just pull that in while we're here uh, go back to your index and what I want to do is pass in firstly the key the key is going to be the subreddit ID so subreddit uh, dot ID the um, rest of it is going to be topic and index so import it so we can say topic is equal to subreddit dot topic and index is equal to the index in which you render it out as so that looks clean um index is i sorry okay cool subreddit rows are coming out which is a good sign now we just need to render it out as we need so at this point looking pretty decent the div on the outside is going to have a flex box items are going to be centered we're going to have space between the x-axis of two border along the top of each we're going to have a background for white of each of them padding x of four on each side padding y of two on the top and bottom and then on the last one we're going to round the corners off so rounded bottom cool and then probably wondering what the hell was that it didn't even do anything but it does it trust me we're gonna say index plus one now you should see a list awesome stuff then we've got the chevron up icon this is going to be a height and width of four and then we're going to have a shrink zero so i'm basically going to say you not allowed to shrink um flex shrink of zero is that even a thing is that flex shrink yeah there we go and i'm gonna say text should be green 400 this reminds me of peter mckinnon this one uh, avatar um there we go the seed in this case is gonna be uh backslash forward slash subreddit topic bam hit save and I will have a water break in a sec. We're almost there. Um, P tag is going to be R forward slash topic. Okay. Hey, look at that. Nice. And that looks good. And if it gets too long, we need to protect ourselves. So we're going to say flex one. You should be using up the majority of the space, but we want to truncate as well. So truncate, we add dot, dot, dot if it runs out of space. And then I'm going to have a button, which is going to be a link component on Next.js. And this button is basically going to be a div. And it's just gonna save you. Oh, in fact, it's actually it even need to be a div. Um, all right, we'll fix that in a sec. That's fine. Hey, Trev, you can make that whatever you want at this point. I'm gonna say forward slash subreddit forward slash topic. So it's taking it'll take you to that page. And then here, I'm gonna give a class name cursor pointer, and it's gonna be rounded or bg blue bg blue of 500 padding on the x-axis of three text white so we should get a nice kind of finish at this text white bam boom look at that oh just as the song finished nice so if i go to react.js now bam we're in react.js i can navigate through i can click into a post i can go back here boom i want to go into the test subreddit boom works over here next.js bam 
Look at this, so smooth and so works so nicely. And you could obviously put server side rendering, ISR, whatever the hell you want in here, and it will just work. Right, you can even do downvotes, upvotes, all that kind of good stuff. We'll go to T test and look, it's still there. This is what I love about this build, right? Because essentially every component is being reused so well that it's really, really just efficient, right? So really, really nice. Fact trends, what we suggest going along with these videos, or firstly watch a whole video and then try to code it myself. A bit of both. A bit of both, I'd say. Right? A bit of both, I'd say. Try and see what works for you. I can't recommend for everyone because it's always gonna be different for you. Um, but I would give it, you know, give it a try both ways. Now, guys, look at this. On a phone, looks amazing. Over here, looks amazing. Over here, it looks incredible. If I log out, we can now see sign in to post. I can't comment, so please sign in to comment. The button should be disabled. That's the only thing I'm not doing. Um, so let's do post. Um, I am, see what I mean? I like, I get proper crazy about this. Post ID button should be disabled. So, whoa, okay. This one is to be disabled if there is no session. Um, there we go, disabled there. And then sign in now. If I sign in with Reddit, it should take me back to my page afterwards. Hey, saying I feel good vibes from you. Thank you, dude. I feel good vibes from you guys. Hence why Pop Fam is an awesome community. And I love you guys. Look at that. Bam! Takes me back to the page. I can sign in. Yo, this is amazing. Comment. Boom look at that awesome awesome stuff and it also goes ahead and updates right so this one doesn't have a comment so if i say test and if i say wow it's amazing look at and watch this watch this wow it's amazing hit comment two boom and if i go over here two comments upvoted oh it's just so clean so clean i'm so happy with that I simply fly to everyone a gangster until Sunny goes live. Four hours of live, you're killing it, man. Start watching video. Thank you so much. Happy to the fully functional, absolutely awesome. Thank you so, so much, guys. Amazing stuff. I think all that's left now is a deployment. So I'm going to show you guys right now how to do a deployment. So I'm going to go over to my GitHub. And right now, if you have, if you want the code for this and you don't want to put the work in, I recommend you do put the work in. Literally, I'm saying don't buy it because I want you to put work in. But feel free. The Papa GitHub repo is in the description down below. The code will be uploaded to there very shortly. So feel free to go ahead and jump in. Now, over on your GitHub, create a new repo. Go ahead. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say something like um, Reddit to YouTube clone private and create repo okay and then get remote add origin i'm going to go to my code come on j deployments right so as you can see 23 things to commit so i'm going to basically paste in get remote add origin and at this point we're going to say git add all git uh, status and you can see everything should be green git commit you can do this a few ways. You can do it this way or you can do it over here. It's completely up to you. I'm going to say build complete. Let's go. Git push. And we'll get this nice little command. Push to that branch. This will go ahead and push out the thing, the the the, uh, the code up to my GitHub. So if you refresh now, bam, it will be there. Then you want to go to vassell.com. And over on Vassell, you will see the, uh, if I click on new project, import git repository and you should see the new one that i just did look read it to your youtube clone and just now boom let's go ahead and do this and you've got environment variables now this is the bit where i want you to pay very close attention okay so i'm going to go ahead and try and run you through this as best as i can so without exposing stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead into my environment file i'm going to hide my file for a second so i'm going to go ahead and actually sort of cut out the keys for a second but in your file right now, you should have the following, okay? You should have this, right? You should have Reddit client ID. So I want you to go ahead and put Reddit client ID. Um, put this in as well. Put that in, bam. You click add. You do the same thing for next door secret. Next door secret, if you see the, you can just put anything in there, it's a secret. Um, and then next auth URL for, the, for okay. So for in the beginning, I want you to put just like this as, as a tester. Then when you get your deployment URL, you can come in and switch it. Okay. So that's just going to be a beginning. Your next public step Zen key is the next one. So this one over here, I'm going to hide as I put this in. So this one I'm adding in. And then the final one I'm saying it out is Reddit client secret is going to be the final piece of the puzzle. 
And that one is actually going to be... Let me just double check. So I need to get it back because I think I've lost it. Right, that one is here. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've added in all of my stuff. Okay. So at this point, if we check this out, boom. Jay, block it, man. Sort that out, please. All right. So environment variables. So now we've got this, right? Um, awesome stuff. Um, you might as well make Papicha a mod as well, to be fair. There you go. Papicha, now you're a mod. Awesome stuff. Um, so now you can see Reddit client secret. If I click deploy, that's a cool multitask. <laughs> um, there you go. I'm going to click deploy. So now you click deploy and then watch what happens. It will literally go ahead, use our environment variables. Now it will not work. I'm telling you that before it already happens, right? It's not going to work. It's going to hit a barrier and I'll show you how we overcome that barrier. The first thing you want to do is inside of your Reddit app, right? So if you go to reddit.preferences.app, so this URL right here, this is where you're going to basically be seeing your um, your app and its keys and so forth, right? So if we go here, I've got this right here, right? So you've got the web, web app. If I click edit right now, I'm gonna I'm not going to show that just yet. Let's kind of get through this bit first. So it says building field, React Talk Tools, what happened there? Failed to combine component coming up with use JSX component app. And okay. So this is a little bug that's happening right now. Um, it's over in app. So TSX, this is literally here. <laughs> so just change this to any at the moment, right? That will get you past this just for now. And then you can change that afterwards. I wouldn't recommend that in production, but it's quite a long fix to explain otherwise. You say bug fix, get push push that bit of code up, bam. And now this will re-trigger the deployment. We can see bug fix should get popped up in a second. So if I go ahead and say over here, let's redeploy. Um, okay, back. Oh no, I'm not doing that again. Is it there? Reddit clone, Reddit clone YouTube, there you go. Bug fix, there we go. So building, okay, so now it's building it out. Let's see. I'll get you past that issue. All right. Hey, look at that. So there is this thing here that broke to us. I think Sunny can use a water break after five hours live. Yeah, you know what? That's actually so true. Thank you, dude. I forget. Okay, so it's building it out. Awesome stuff. We built our endpoints. Okay, so at this point, you can see it deployed there. So what I want you to do now is notice that we have this. So firstly, there's actually two errors that I haven't addressed. Okay. The first thing is, no, no, that's fine, actually. I have addressed them. Yeah, I have addressed them. Um, okay, so this is live right now. So this is working. The only thing that won't work right now is if we try and sign in and that's because we haven't whitelisted the url and the authentication endpoint hasn't been set up correctly so at this point this is going to be our deployment url so what i want you to do is go over to your reddit clone go over to settings go over to environment variables go to your next auth url go to edit and basically what i like to do is i paste it in and i'll basically just copy this and then that way it gives me the correct one i paste this in here so what i want you to do is basically copy this URL here, okay? Hit save. Now what I want you to do, go over to your Reddit preferences, click on edit, and I'm gonna hide this for a second. Click on edit, and I want you to do basically the following. I want you to paste this in like so, right? So only where it says localhost 3000, should you be replacing it. So I'm just gonna explain it. So I've added the HTTPS, and I'll, I'll, basic, I'll show you this without, I'll blur something out, all right? Okay, so check this out. Caitlin Berryman, thank you so much. She goes, what you're doing is great. I thank you so much. Honestly, it means a lot. Yeah, here, so what I've done is I changed this. So I changed the HTTP to be HTTPS, and then I changed this to be localhost to my URL. And you can see the same API auth callback Reddit is still there, okay? So do that and then click on update app, okay? So do that and then what you wanna do is click on update app. And then go back and basically check that your app redeployed. So because you changed the environment variables, what you're going to want to do is go over to your branch and click redeploy. And then make sure it's redeploying without cache. Do one final build, a run through. 
and wait for it and it will be up in a second so this is going to build out and then it's going to happen and then if that all went well then you know that was one hell of a build i think that's literally got to be one of the best builds on this channel by far if we pull this deployment off then it's literally going to be like the ultimate creme de la creme finish and then oh god it's amazing all right let's see remember if you want to you know enjoy this kind of you enjoy the coding vibe the community spirit this is literally what zero to full stack girls is all about this is what our community literally is it's coding together building together succeeding together that's literally what we do inside and out we have coaching calls every week loads of course content so join us at paparreact.com forward slash course if you're interested in it the link is in the description to join zero to full stack hero do not miss out it's the best community by far period all right let's go over here to this james says it's five hours i'll teach you the way my friend honestly don't worry about it all right so look at this right so super base super base okay i think that's me i don't know oh someone's here oh my god sign in with reddit okay so i'm gonna click allow so i'm gonna hide it because i don't trust people but okay i'm in there now so somebody else is in there as well so they're actually in there but um i don't want to kind of refresh it because you know but the point is is that this works if i click on hello you can say whoa it works and i'm just going to make sure if i comment let's go ahead and you know see what's going on is that gonna post right now or is it getting overwhelmed okay so maybe we've got a little bit of usage going on right now so that's why it's happening but the point is, is that i'm going to show everyone here look you can see that hello everyone hey this is awesome nice upvote hey that is amazing dude hey look at that oh sick someone else voted at the same time as me oh my god this is amazing all right i'm gonna make sure every time i go back i just i just don't it's not that i don't trust you it's that i don't trust you all right but look at this look people are actually on here right now pump fam marcus youtube that is amazing guys literally proof in the pudding it works you know how we do it this is literally like the realest use case proof I could have ever wanted to show you guys. I'm so happy that you guys have done this. Look, honestly, how are you by Joanna Publox? I'm doing amazing, dude. In fact, I can see you guys here. Absolutely incredible stuff. Please, please, please comment down below after you've seen this video help push this video out right if you smash the like button it helps this go out if you comment it helps this video go out help support the channel that's all i'm asking for because i just want to help more developers succeed and crush it and if you want to go ahead and excel in your career as a developer then obviously i'm always going to be delivering content on youtube for free but you can join us over at zero to full stack hero where we have our inner community absolute game changer we do this stuff every single week this is why we elevate to this level this is how we do what we do right so thank you so much for tuning in the guys over at steps and absolutely killed it with this one i swear to god that there is like an incredible amount of of just good tech coming out from their side so as you as always if you enjoyed this <laughs> someone's saying harry potter if you enjoyed this make sure you use the link in the description go ahead set up your step zen um <clears throat> Septum service and basically benefit from the offer that we got going on right now first thing in the description is the steps and affiliate link so if you do go through that link you're going to support the channel and guys yeah let me know what your best bit was already right so james steph ashwin we have a pat Picha, we have lucas this is amazing sunny love these live streams what situation would you sql instead of no sql databases all depends on how you need to structure your data so you saw this situation especially paired with the graphql endpoint incredible especially materializer that was mind-blowing right so super super cool stuff comments do work yes um why random profile picture every time yeah we're using the seeding the dice best but on that note guys i'm gonna wrap up this build i'm gonna end it the way i know how to end this stuff and i'm gonna go ahead and run through one more time what we did in this video and i'm gonna go ahead and share it on my other build so that way no one else spams it with something else but yeah guys this is what we built in today's video absolutely massive stuff the guys over steps in came through clutch provided the tech i just taught it right so if you enjoyed this again 
smash the thumbs up seven masters the tool step you chose are really amazing thank you so much dude we had full functionality in this app we had the ability to upvote downvote all that good stuff we had the ability to write comments we had dynamic routing which we're going ahead and played in here you can pull in your comments we had amazing use of reusable components so we're actually using the same components several times out throughout it's fully responsive reddit api uh, for authentication all this stuff powered up and it is literally a functional app that you can go ahead run with do your thing with on that note guys i hope this inspired you i hope this was fun and it was an absolute pleasure coming through today me and jay are both gonna literally catch up after this i love you all thank you for 140,000 subscribers talizas just dropped a 50 dollar donation hey let's go hey sunny love your tutorials cool to see you making a reddit clone i learned a lot from your earlier vids and also made a bit of your reddit clone myself would love to get your feedback it's trodit.com jay screenshot that we're gonna get him the feedback he deserves dude please email us at paparreact.team at gmail.com i'd love to give you some proper feedback so thank you so much jay screenshot that save it as always guys it's your boy papa react i will see you in the next one peace